get ready for blast off. Countdown begins to Chandrayaan 3. ISRO set for historic launch. India today gets you the best view. The Indian Space Research Organization is all set to launch Chandrayaan 3. India's moonshot. Good evening, you're watching 6pm Prime here on India Today. I'm Akshita Nandakopal and this evening we're officially kicking off our countdown to India's moon mission to Chandrayaan 3 taking off from our skies. All eyes of course will be looking up come Friday at 2.40pm. That's when the official time has been given by the ISRO for the takeoff of Chandrayaan 3. All the updates, what this mission is going to look like, what are the lessons we learned from Chandrayaan 2 and much more coming your way. The headlines first. Bengaluru double murder accused arrested. Sabrish, also known as Joker Felix, kills CEO and MD of tech startup over professional rivalry. BJP fact-finding team in Bengal amid poll violence targets Mamta government over deaths during polls. Chief Minister Mamta cries conspiracy, calls BJP team a provocation committee. National capital on high alert. Yamuna water crosses 207-meter mark. Kejriwal government holds emergency meet. Section 144 now imposed in flood-prone areas. All eyes on Prime Minister Modi's crucial visit to France. Mega defence deals on the cards. Bastille Day preparations underway to host Prime Minister Modi as the chief guest. And India Today is the only channel with exclusive access to the preps. The full dress rehearsal of the Bastille Day parade in India Today is the only channel to be a part of this parade, showing you the visuals as they happen. This is the full dress rehearsal of the parade. Ahead of big Maha cabinet expansion, Mahayuti leader is likely to visit Delhi. India today accesses details of power sharing formula between Ajit faction, Shinde Sena and the BJP. And centre hikes GST on India's online gaming industry. 28% GST on online gaming and casinos slapped. E-gaming sector to now be taxed at over 50%. The countdown has begun for India's latest moon mission, Chandrayaan-3. The launch will happen on July 14th from Sriharikota. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, has undertaken a 24-hour launch rehearsal simulating the entire launch preparation and process for Chandrayaan-3 mission to the moon. The main aspect is a soft landing on the moon because ISRO had succeeded in all other parameters set for a proper landing on the moon. Now, the rocket will carry the Chandrayaan-3. This is, in fact, the LVM-3M4 rocket. Uh, this will be India's second attempt to soft land uh, a lander and rover on the lunar surface. The lander, a spacecraft that lands softly, will have the capacity to soft land at a specified lunar site and deploy the rover, which is a vehicle that essentially moves around the moon to carry out an analysis of the lunar surface. Now, what's the difference really between Chandrayaan-2 and Chandrayaan-3? Well, there will be no orbiter this time around.
We are pleased to give you these exclusive visuals of the exact launch pad, the second launch pad from Shard in Sri Harikota, from where the LVMT rocket will be launched on 14th of July, 2:35 p.m., carrying Chandrayaan-3. Behind us, you could see four towers, and in between those four towers is the place where Chandrayaan-3 is currently present, and that like uh, the countdown will start soon. It will be fueled, and the three-stage rocket, of which the first stage is a solid stage having two S2. 200 boosters and the next one is a liquid state with L110 and the final one is a C25 Vikas engine a cryogenic engine indigenously made one of the marvels of ISRO will carry Chandrayaan 3 up to the moon and the very important aspect is that ISRO this time has given the the lander a lot of space of deciding on its own because the Chandrayaan 2 was I mean designed to only land in an area 500 meters into 500 meters but right now it has been extended to 4.5 kilometers to 2. Uh, 2.5 kilometers in that area the, the uh, lander can land so all these uh, uh, parameters have been set the main aspect of Chandrayaan 3 is for a soft landing on uh, the moon's surface because every other parameters ISRO has succeeded. With Divian, Pramod Madhav, for you today. India is waiting for a great moment as Indian Space Research Organization is all set to launch Chandrayaan-3. Behind us is a model of the rocket GSLV MK2 and the LVM3 will resemble this model only. And on either side of this rocket, the columns you see, those are S200 solid state boosters. And in the center part where it is written GSLV, that is the liquid stage and on top of it, we will have the cryogenic engine C25. Over that, that particular pod with the Indian national flag, that is a heat shield which will be carrying Chandrayaan 3. This is a module which will have a propulsion module, a lander module, and the rover. The main aspect of this engine, the, uh, uh, this mission is to uh, uh, do a soft la landing in the lunar, on the lunar surface, and it'll, this is the second attempt of. ISRO. Here also, ISRO has made it very clear that this time they are going for a failure-based model. They are calling this a failure-based model because whatever information that was gathered from Chandrayaan-2 has been incorporated to it. The issues with Chandrayaan-2 was called as error accumulation, which led to crash landing. It is not a failure. So all the lander model has to do is take a picture compare it with the data that has been fed already into it and it, it has only do final corrections to avoid any object that is 30 centimeters or bigger for a soft landing. ISRO claims that as all other parameters have been successful, it is only going for a soft landing post which releasing the rover on the lunar surface. Divyan, Pramod Madhav, Foyn today. So that's the first exclusive sneak peek that we've gotten for you there of the rocket. All preparations are underway right now. There's been a rehearsal also that's been conducted. But let's also tell you about why this is such a big deal, not just for India, but globally as well. As Pramod very clearly and importantly pointed out, Chandrayaan 2 by no scope was a failure. It was only that there was a crash landing that took place. And there are only three countries in the whole world that have ensured actually a successful soft landing on the moon. The United States, Russia and China. And hopefully we will also very, very soon join this extraordinary league as well on the lunar surface. Uh, this particular mission, Chandrayaan-3, a lot of lessons of course have been learned from what happened with Chandrayaan-2. All of the launch rehearsals that is simulating the entire launch preps and the entire process lasting a whole 24 hours has been completed. Israel's confirmed that it's been a success so far. We've just about got one and a half days to go for the actual launch. And excitement is at its peak. ISRO this time is preparing also to ensure that they overcome the disaster of last time with regards to the soft landing on the moon and ensure that they learn from the mistakes of Chandrayaan 2. Chandrayaan-3 is all set to be launched from Sri Harikota at 2.35 p.m. on Friday, 14th of July. And with that, India will become the fourth country to join the Ivy League of Moon Explorers. Chandrayaan-3 is largely a replica of its predecessor, Chandrayaan-2. 
It was launched in July 2019 in the form of an orbiter and a lander Vikram bearing a rover Pragyan. Vikram entered into orbit around the moon, but the surface mission failed in September 2019. The lander Pragyan crashed instead of executing a slow descent. ISRO later identified a problem in the guidance software and an unexpected dispersion in the propulsion system during certain phases of the descent. This time Chandrayaan-3 rocket will place the payload in an elliptical orbit around the Earth where a propulsion module will take over and pilot the lander to a circular orbit around the Moon. Finally, around 23rd and 24th August, the lander will detach and begin a series of maneuvers culminating in a gradual landing over the surface of the Moon. Instead of success-based design in Chandrayaan-2, we are doing a failure-based design in Chandrayaan-3. What all can fail and how to protect it? To ensure success chances, at this stage, ISRO has strengthened the lander's legs, lowered its minimum thrust, enhanced the availability of power and upgraded the landing sequence. This will be India's second attempt to soft land a lander and rover on the lunar surface and demonstrate end-to-end -end capacity in the relevant technologies. Soft landing on the moon is a complicated exercise and possibility of failure exists. But for the time being, ISRO is hopeful for a success like its first moon mission. Bureau Report, India Today. So excitement is quickly peaking really and uh, let's take you through how the ISRO is prepared for this moment. They've put forth three stated mission objectives as far as Chandrayaan-3 is concerned. And they're very confident. Detailed statements have been put out where they're talking about what they're going to achieve and what they've learned from Chandrayaan-2. Three mission objectives, as I said. The first is very simply to demonstrate a safe and soft landing on the lunar surface without a crash landing. Second, to demonstrate the rover that is roaming around the moon. A rover is attached to Chandrayaan-3. Unlike Chandrayaan-2 here, there won't be an orbiter, however. The third mission objective, again, is to conduct on-site scientific experiments. The rover going around will click photographs that will help scientists back here at the base of the ISRO headquarters to kind of analyze the data and takeaways from the moon's surface. So these are the three mission objectives that they hope to achieve. Remember that while the takeoff is happening on Friday noon, uh, it will be over a month later that we will actually see this particular rocket and Chandrayaan-3 coming close to the moon's surface. Let's talk about Mission Chandrayaan itself, an ambitious one. It was actually first launched way back in 2008. That's when it was announced. That's when our ISRO scientists started working on it. More than a decade later, Chandrayaan-2 was a partial failure and a partial success because while it was successfully landed on the moon, the crash landing was the problem because that's where there was an issue that came up. Now, four years later, ISRO is attempting this once again to correct the wrongs that were previously done. They're launching Chandrayaan-3. And we're breaking down in our next report the difference between the Chandrayaan-2 mission and the Chandrayaan-3 mission. What's changed in four years? Chandrayaan-3 is going to be the world's first mission to soft land near the lunar south pole. It would take roughly 42 days for the lander and rover to reach the moon and attempt a soft landing. Last time in 2019, Chandrayaan-2 crash landed on the lunar surface. It was a partial failure and it triggered a very innovative method adopted by the Indian Space Research Organization for the follow-up mission Chandrayaan-3. Chandrayaan-3 is similar to Chandrayaan-2 and yet very different. Chandrayaan-3 lander and rover will attempt to land at the exact same spot attempted by its predecessor in September 2019. 
But unlike a combination of orbiter, lander and rover, Chandrayaan-3 will have only the lander and rover, but no orbiter. Instead, it will use the orbiter of Chandrayaan-2, which is still operational and has been sending valuable data from its nine in-situ instruments. The propulsion module of the Chandrayaan-3 mission will have just a single instrument named Spectropolarimetry of Habitable Planet Earth, which will analyze the spectrum of Earth to generate data for habitable planets. Another addition to the Chandrayaan-3 mission is the Laser Retro Reflector Array or LRA. It is being sent with the lander. LRA would be a passive experiment to understand the dynamics of the Moon system. The other three payloads being launched with the mission are the same as that of the Vikram lander on Chandrayaan-2. See, there are certain conditions in which it is supposed to happen. And the conditions in which work has a window. If anything happens beyond the window, it may work in the road. So what we did this time is the window is expanded. Its ability to land at a higher speeds. Its uh, ability to work within this much quantity of propellant is increased. We say this much is a power capability, we expand it. How about rovers? Rover, we have not made any change this time. It is exactly the same now. To achieve its objectives, Chandrayaan-3 has lander hazard detection and avoidance cameras that will be used to coordinate with the orbiter and the mission control as the lander makes its descent approach to the surface of the moon. Chandrayaan-2 has just one such camera. Chandrayaan-3 has been fitted with two such cameras. So we addressed all such failures and we built more uh, rigorous hard hardening of many systems including its ability to land at a higher speed, more propellant to handle, more power generation capability, more disorientation capability, more ability to handle rotations uh, and we added additional sensors and sensor failures we addressed. So and we did all this test and simulation modes and made sure that all our thinking process algorithms do work under extreme conditions. All previous spacecraft to have landed on the moon have landed in the equatorial region. Whether it's US or Russia, they all landed a few degrees latitude north or south of the lunar equator. The furthest that any spacecraft has gone from the equator was Surveyor 7, launched by NASA which made a moon landing way back on January 10, 1968. This spacecraft landed near 40 degrees south latitude. A successful Chandrayaan-3 will not only elevate India into the elite group of lunar explorers as the fourth country to do so, but it would also mark India's expertise to do so at the most tough circumstances and in virgin lunar territory. And this is just the beginning of India Today's coverage. A curtain raiser, if you will, starting tomorrow at 6 p.m. We're going to be going non-stop, giving you one hour full broadcast where we focus on this mammoth achievement by ISRO and countdown to the launch of Chandrayaan-3. I'm slipping into a very short break here on 6 p.m. Prime. Coming up on the other side, we're focusing on what's happening in Bengal, where, in fact, the BJP fact-finding team in Bengal uh, amid the poll violence. We'll get you a news break on that, but we're also going to be focusing on what's happening in Karnataka, where there's a showdown right now between Baswaraj Bommai, uh, the erstwhile government, and the current Sidramaya government. more houses how many more vehicles how many more villagers annual nightmare drowns the north India today reports from every spot there are small children who are living in these houses and this is the national capital we are talking about each and every household that what we can see the holy shrine that saved Monday from a disaster we report we demand we fix accountability Maximum reporters, maximum coverage, monsoon mayhem.
government has all but ruled out central support to the free rice scheme announced by Karnataka. Without naming any state, the government has said that if the promise of five kilos of free rice were to be kept by all states, the distribution would exceed the annual rice production. The Karnataka government had on Monday begun direct cash transfers in lieu of its rice guarantee scheme, transferring 170 rupees to each of its 1.28 crore ration cardholders. Uh, PMG के वाय बेनिफिशियरीज को देंगे उसी राज्य में तो अगर आप एक कल्पना करें कि सब राज्य जो 36 हमारे स्टेट्स और और यूटीज हैं अगर सब राज्य ऐसा निर्णय लें कि हम पांच किलो अधिक सबको देंगे पर PMG के वाय बेनिफिशियरीज को तो मैं आपको तथ्य बताना चाहूँगा कि 360 लाख टन हमारी रिक्वायरमेंट है तो अगर हम 5 किलो अधिक देना शुरू करें तो 720 लाख टन हमारी हो जाती है रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर राइस अंडर पीएमजी के वाय प्लस 5 केजी एक्स्ट्रा अगर हम उसको निर्णय ले देने का हमारी टोटल प्रोक्योरमेंट स्टेट कंट्री में पूरे देश की प्रोक्योरमेंट चावल की होती है करीबन 560 570 लाख टन तो This is how sugar is sold to us. Candies, chocolates, cereals loaded with sugar. Milk biscuit bhi raklo. Advertisements that make these products sound harmless, even essential for joyous occasions, celebrations, love and friendship. Those involved in nutrition advocacy raise concerns over how sugar is sold and how governments choose to look the other way when it comes to wrong messaging. Recently, nutrition advocacy in public health called out Amitabh Bachchan for promoting a biscuit as an alternative to real food in this promotion. Big B faced some amount of backlash. But Big B is not the only one. Actor Pankaj Tripathi also faced backlash for promoting biscuits, saying it is made of whole wheat when it was not. Celebrity endorsements are really not new. However, they are now being frowned upon. It's because of the whole onslaught of the food industry advertisements, emotionally exploiting people. That's where the, the government has to spend almost equal amount of money if they really want to reach out to people to tell people the risks of high sugar products. If a food product is high sugar, containing 10%, it should be banned for marketing. A study published in PubMed has shown specifically that high sugar food and beverage advertising promotes the consumption of high sugar food items in children. The impact of it is obviously telling. We do get children who need help in that, who are living on soft drinks or candy or whatever. It damages their teeth, of course, but long term, it, is, it has a major impact on their metabolic health. We know that childhood obesity is increasing in India. We know that diabetes in the young is increasing in India. We know that many young children nowadays, because of weight and others, are actually getting high blood pressure and cholesterol problems. And a lot of that can be linked to just increase in sugar intake. Karnataka. Protest, politics, peaks after murder. Two arrested, but BJP cries conspiracy. Congress, 
Demands CBI probe in Jane murder case. BJP fires no law and order taunt. There is a jungle raj started in Karnataka within two months of Congress rule. Okay. We could see that there are daily murders, rapes everywhere in the state. Jane Sear murder storm. Top focus on 6 p.m. Prime. Days since the murder of a Jane Monk, the politics continues and today it reached its peak as the BJP fired an all-out attack at the Sidramaya government, claiming that there's a complete breakdown of law and order. Staging a mega dharna at the Vidhan Sauda before the assembly proceedings began, BJP leaders that were then seen marching right up to the Raj Bhavan submitted a memorandum to the governor where they're seeking a CBI investigation in this particular case, claiming the Congress government has failed to carry out an impartial and fair probe. The Congress, meanwhile, maintains that this case has already been cracked. Two accused have been taken into custody. Showdown erupts over the brutal murder of Jain Seer Kamakumara Nandi Maharaj in Karnataka. The BJP, which has been demanding a CBI probe in the case, staged a dharna outside the Vidhana Soda on Wednesday. The jungle raj started in Karnataka within two months of Congress rule. The fear of law is not there, the fear of police is not there, and all the anti-social elements uh, have come out openly, and now they are freeing the entire society here, and there is a fear among the common man. BJP MLAs marched to the Raj Bhavan and submitted a memorandum to the governor. The party claimed that Hindus were being targeted ever since the Congress government came to power in May. The Siddharamaya government has defended the police and assured a fair and impartial probe. BJP can claim anything that they want. The Jain community, the seers of the community have come out and said that we are satisfied with the progress of uh, the investigation. The police have arrested two people in connection to the murder. The investigators claim the killing was over a financial dispute. Meanwhile, shocking details have emerged on how the seer was murdered. According to the FIR, on the night of July 5th, main accused Narayan, along with his friend Hassan Sab, allegedly tried to kill the seer by electrocution. When they failed in it, they allegedly strangled the monk to death with a towel. The duo then allegedly cut the seer's body into pieces and dumped the parts into a borewell. The accused also burned a diary belonging to the seer. The Jain community has held protest in various parts of the state condemning the act. आज ज्ञापन यहां जिलाधिकारी मोदे के माध्यम से देने आए हैं तो उनको सख्त से सख्त सजा दी जाए और साथ ही जो ये केस है जिसका जो ट्रायल है फास्ट ट्रैक कोर्ट में किया जाए विद सगे राज ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे So politics speaking over this issue, but the Congress Sidramaya government making it very clear that there is no question of handing over this case to the Central Bureau of Investigation. Now, interestingly, you've got, uh, in fact, the BJP claiming that there's a conspiracy, that it's not a financial dispute, as the cops have claimed it is. Anaga Keshav is joining us live with more details on this. Anaga, with, in fact, the Congress government refusing to budge on this issue, is the BJP going to now amp up the pressure? And why exactly have they cried conspiracy here? Do they have any evidence to say that this isn't a financial dispute? You know, Akshita, to answer your first question, the BJP is saying that they will not budge down. They will keep protesting until the Congress government hands over this case to the CBI. And regarding why the BJP thinks that there is a conspiracy, they are saying that initially the police had revealed only one name. And the BJP says that name was a Hindu's name. And upon the BJP legislators' pressure, upon the BJP workers' pressure, that was when the A2's name was released, which belonged to a minority's name. And that is why the BJP is 
saying that the Congress government is now using the state uh, police department as puppets to try to mince these A1 and A2 accused, to try to cover up this whole accused name in order mm. to appease the minorities is what the BJP is saying. And they're also saying that there is an entirely different angle to this. No seer is going to have financial disputes with anybody. Seers are supposed to be giving in nature. No seer, especially you know, belonging to the Jain community, would want to deal anything with finances. So that is right. why there is nothing financial here. It is entirely communal is what the BJP is saying. And they're also demanding this case to be handed over to the CBI. But the police okay. here, they have, you know, they are... They are very clear in their investigation. They are saying that there was six lakh rupees, an amount of six lakh rupees that was the, you know, that was the amount in dispute between the Jain seer and the accused. And regarding this financial matter, you know, the two accused went ahead, chopped the body barbarically into nine pieces, and then mm -hmm. dumped it into a defunct bore well. In fact, a very, you know, in fact, very mind-bending in a barbaric way of killing somebody. And this is why the BJP has now demanded this case to be handed over to see. All right, Anaga, thank you for getting us all of those details in this case. Now, clearly at this point, the BJP refusing to give in and saying they will continue their fight. But interestingly, it's also raised a larger question about whether there's a breakdown of law and order in Karnataka. Uh, the BJP has linked this particular incident to another incident that's come to the fore again in Karnataka. This happened on Tuesday in Bengaluru, where a double murder was reported. A managing director and the chief executive officer of a tech firm were brutally murdered by three people, including an ex-colleague. All of this played out in their office. The accused trio attacked them with sharp weapons. The mastermind has been identified as someone referred to as Joker Felix, whose images you see there on your screens. He was armed with a sword and a knife, walked into the tech firm, walked into the startup, and they went on to kill the MD and CEO. Here's what the cops have said so far on this case. This man with a bonus skull in hand is Joker Felix, a man who is now behind bars for a gruesome double murder in Bengaluru. He stabbed two men to death mercilessly in their office, all over a petty professional rivalry. This is a tale of two rival companies, turning into a tale of two murders. The victims Panindra Subramania and Vinu Kumar, the MD and CEO of their company Aeronix, went to work on Tuesday and never came home. According to the cops, at 4 p.m. on Tuesday, Joker Felix and two of his aides entered the Aeronix office and entered the MD Panindra's room. They then attacked him with Felix, slashing him with a sword. Seeing the shocking crime, the CEO Vinu Kumar intervened but was then attacked with a knife that the accused were carrying with them. The three then escaped from the back door. What was the reason for this merciless display of violence? Murder by knife is personal. They wanted this to hurt. According to police, Joker Felix previously worked with murder victims Fanindra and Vinu. The victims left and started their own organization and reportedly took most of the customers and employees with them, angering Felix. Joker Felix and accomplices Vinay Reddy and Santosh Srinivasa are now in police custody. Pride, vengeance and professional rivalry caused these two men their lives. And the actions of this rather unstable internet influencer has landed him behind bars. With Anaga Keshav, Bureau Report, India Today. Shocking case that. I'm slipping into a very short break here on 6 p.m. Prime. On the other side, we're putting the focus on Bengal. The counting continues at this point, but the TMC has established a comfortable lead. Mamta Banerjee has just spoken out about all of the violence and the reports of clashes. We'll tell you what she said in just a bit.
The recent monsoon deluge and floods have turned the spotlight once again on auto insurance with the general public in anguish over their vehicles going under and in some cases even being washed away by floods. While motor insurance generally covers damage uh, caused to vehicles due to natural disasters, there are certain exclusions and limitations which may apply. Joining us are uh, Money Today editor Tina Jen Korshal to explain the fine print. Uh, Tina, what expenses are not covered by motor insurance policies in the event of uh, vehicle damage during monsoon season? It is important to note that a comprehensive motor insurance policy is needed to protect your uh, vehicle from any damage during flooding. A comprehensive motor insurance policy consists of own damage plus uh, third party liability cover. So if you have only third party liability cover, your policy might not be enough to cover any damage caused to engine or any damage caused due to floods. And how does one ensure comprehensive coverage of vehicles during the monsoon season? Another important point is to have adequate add-on covers. For example, you should have engine protection cover. The advantage of this cover is that if your engine gets damaged due to water seepage during flood, this add-on cover will provide you adequate insurance cover. The second important point uh, to be noted is you should have zero depreciation policy as it pays you the entire claim amount without any deduction. So if you take into consideration these factors, your, uh, your car will be insured against damages in the monsoon season. Story posted. Oh, we're rolling. Wait a minute. Story posted. WhatsApp sent. So much to do, but I think it's a good idea to occasionally disconnect from your smartphone or at the very least from social media. However, the majority of us still need our phones with us so we can make calls and send messages. Of course, you can leave your phone at home when you go out and in my case, hopefully my cellular smartwatch as well. But the issue arises sometimes when you end up wasting an excessive amount of time scrolling and swiping away on mindless games and apps. Studies have actually shown that if you get addicted to your smartphone, it could possibly affect your relationships, mental health and productivity. So sometimes it might be wise to take a step back and disconnect or detox from an increasingly connected world. Ironically, technology comes to the rescue here in the form of apps that can aid the process. So we've compiled a special Tech Today list of these apps which can really help you digitally detox and break this addiction for you in a matter of a few clicks. An excellent all-around digital detox app is App Detox. Literally, you can choose which apps you want to limit using this very app. Then you can make specific guidelines. You can decide, for instance, how many times you can open a given app and what time of the day you want access to it. You can view your app usage and completely block particular apps. Cleverest. The goal of Cleverest is to assist you in segmenting tasks. It is simple and straightforward as a user experience. Set a time limit and maintain your focus for that length of time. If you do, your avatar will prosper and expand. The Pomodoro technique, which suggests dividing things into manageable portions to help you stay motivated and focused, is the foundation of this very app. Forest. This app for digital detox won't disable your social media accounts, but rather creates a game-like situation to keep you focused. Open this app, plant a seed and focus on the task at hand without being distracted by your phone. The timer will then start and your seed will develop into a tree. Your tree will perish and you'll have to start over if you answer your phone before the timer expires. Procrastinators will appreciate this. Additionally, the program encourages you to spend the virtual coins you earn each time you develop a tree. And Forest will actually plant a tree as a result. You'll not only maintain your concentration better, but you'll also be planting new trees in the actual world. You can view your forest, which is exactly what it sounds like, and measure your progress over time, just like with other top digital detox apps on this list. A virtual forest will contain a representation of each tree you've grown. Continue producing and expanding your forest.
Amid all of the violence-ridden panchayat polls that we witnessed in Bengal, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has now spoken out amid the victory that TMC is headed towards. She has claimed that all of this is a conspiracy, referring to the violence. She says Ram Sham Bama behind the conspiracy and has claimed that violence happened only in 60 polling booths. Remember that the BJP has said they'll send a fact-finding panel. Mamta said that this is in actuality a provocation panel. The BJP soon after has hit out, particularly to Mamta Banerjee saying only 60 polling booths saw violence. The BJP said, then why did so many people die? Why did the Calcutta High Court intervene in this matter and ensure central forces are deployed? Let's play out for you those reactions. <laughs> Our tax finding team party is it. Our Koto team part of in Bultavarin. Amar Bajpar, a opular to leader Guluki Jigishkuri Jade, Shahosni, Rukedaranu. Rajniti Korbar Udikan Nede. There are Gonadon to Hopta Kora, Amra Kurina. Amyatudin Bade Mukulchi. Amyatudin Ekti Kotha Bulini. Shotjo Korevici. Amikono Hingshaka support Kurina. Hingsha Desh Grina. এগুলো আমি করি না আর আমি যেটা করি না আমি মুখ ফুটে বলবো করি না আমি দুঃখিত যে রাম বাম শাম এরা তিনজন প্লাস আরেকজন চারজন মিলে জোট বেঁধেও মোয়া ঘোট বেঁধেছিল তাদের এই সব প্ল্যানিং ছিল গন্ডগোল করবার এ সুশীলা মণ্ডল है इसका परिवार हमारी पार्टी का समर्थक है ये सुशीला मंडल इधर खड़ी इसकी बहू और इसके बेटे बूथ पर काम कर रहे थे पार्टी की तरफ से और टीएमसी के लोग बूथ कैप्चर करने की कोशिश कर रहे थे उसका विरोध किया घर पर आकर के पूरे घर को तोड़ा उधर सामान छीना उनके बेटे को तलवार से हमला किया उनकी बहू को पीटा इनके बूढ़े पति बोल नहीं सकते हैं उनकी पिटाई किया ये दरवाजा ये दरवाजा भी तोड़ दिया पार्टी को उसके लिए भारी व्यवस्था करनी पड़ती है और बात करती हैं लोकतंत्र की शर्म आनी चाहिए ममता जी आपको Let's take this across to Indrajit Kundu, who's joining us live with more details on this. So, Indrajit, even as the counting is still underway, trends clearly indicating that the TMC at this point is a very, very clear, strong lead. The politics over all the violence that broke out continues. And the bigger concern now will be whether we see this play out post-poll as well. Well, that indeed is a big concern. However, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has called for restraint on all sides, even though she categorically blamed the opposition for the entire violence that has unfolded in the state. And she specifically said that it's a combination of the BJP, the Congress, the left and the ISF. And it's interesting because in a few days from now, Mamta Banerjee will be attending uh, the mega opposition meeting that's uh, supposed to take place. It will be the second meeting of all the opposition parties trying to find out a formation against the Narendra Modi government before the 2024 elections. And in that backdrop, Mamta Banerjee did hit out against the Congress, saying that the less said about the Congress and the left, the better it is. And she also said that the Congress cannot expect that she would be, uh, you know, showering praises for them, even while they hurl abuses against the Trinamool Congress leadership here in yeah. West Bengal. So she clearly gave an ultimatum as well. She said that she doesn't want to speak much because the meeting is on the offing in a few days from now. So it's a balancing act that Mamta Banerjee is trying to, you know, uh, trying to delve into. Mm -hmm. However, clearly blaming the opposition for provocation and the loss of lives that I've seen. In fact, in a historic step, Mamta Banerjee has also announced compensation for political violence victims. Okay. For the first time in West Bengal, 19 uh, you know, people who have lost their lives, their families are going to give get 2 lakh rupees from the West Bengal government. The okay. opposition, of course, saying the death toll is much, much higher because our calculation says right. something around 40 people have died ever since the election process began. All right. Thanks very much, Indrajit, for getting us all of those details. So you've got the political face-off continuing there between the BJP and the Trinamool Congress. The results, once finalized, will be out tomorrow in all likelihood. And that's a story we'll track very, very closely. That's all we have time for in this edition of 6 p.m. Prime. Thank you for tuning in.
tell us how you feel and the few reasons that came into your mind to shift this most important futures instrument from Singapore to India. Any IFSC, the fulcrum always is a stock exchange where a lot of trading happens and that's what uh, India's uh, main asset class, which is the index, Nifty index is the largest traded index in the world uh, and uh, uh, it also uh, is the largest traded instruments in the world today. Uh, some portion of it uh, for offshore part was getting traded in SGX, that is Singapore exchange for over 20 years now uh, and that's where uh, uh, it was decided between two exchanges and two governments uh, in uh, around 2017-18 that uh, the orders being placed on Singapore exchange would come to the gift city and uh, they will be matched here along with the orders coming out of gift city itself. And that's where uh, the project started in around 2017-18. And today it has culminated into complete transfer of uh, all the orders coming out of Singapore from wherever in the world when people place orders on Nifty Index onto Singapore Exchange, they get transferred onto Gift City transparently without even the user coming to know of it and they get matched against the orders coming from Gift City or other orders from uh, SGX itself. And that is a first time in the world collaboration between two countries uh, trying to compete but also collaborate uh, and uh, the settlement will continue to take place uh, with the Singapore uh, customers as if they are trading in Singapore but actually the trading is happening in uh, gift cities. How according to you uh, will traders in India, this is an increasing demographic profile, we've seen young people come into trading and all of us uh, without fail start our day in the morning by looking at the SGX Nifty quote which gives an indicator of uh, how the Indian markets open. Uh, about 25, 21 hours will be available for Indian traders to hedge their positions after the main markets close at 3.30 p.m. Apart from that, what all will change for Indian traders since SGX now starts trading out of Ahmedabad and not Singapore? Let's take it for traders first. Uh, traders who are trading in India usually would not be coming into the gift city because gift IFSC is actually an uh, offshore jurisdiction as far as India is concerned. It trades in dollars and normal Indian uh, entities are not allowed to trade here except when they transfer using a liberalized remittance scheme of RBI up to $250,000 per year. So in a way, uh, this is for the uh, high-end traders or high-end uh, uh, investors across the world who have interest in the Indian markets. But naturally that flow uh, which is uh, available uh, to trade on the gift nifty uh, would also somewhere through other means uh, when the FPIs uh, have uh, the registration in both Singapore as well as the domestic Indian markets then they may be able to arbitrage between the two markets and that's where the Indian uh, markets will also become more deeper but the other side uh, there are around 60 brokers of Indian origin who okay. have now set up shops in uh, Gift City uh, which is a, actually a separate jurisdiction and 40 more are in pipeline so those people will be getting their customers from across the world to uh, come here and place more orders and that's where uh, I believe uh, it's going to be a more intense competition for liquidity and also it will create a much larger uh, pool of liquidity into the gift IFSC. The world of wellness has advanced. Cryotherapies are now being used increasingly for fitness rehabilitation. It is very cold. I'm dying. <laughs> they help as anti-inflammatory treatments and can treat the entire body. Beat the face with a cryofacial that helps puffiness of the face, cryo body sculpting that helps you get rid of stubborn fat by freezing fat cells, cryo for localized pain and cryo baths that help you recover from any aches and pains. Where do we even begin? Let's start with cryo baths. The ice baths are now replaced with the state of the art chambers where you jump in minus 110 degrees Celsius once a week or as guided by your doctor. All of this to tackle inflammation in your body or specifically for a post workout recovery to help your muscles recover.
All right, so what I'm doing here is the power of ice. I'm going to show you the power of ice on my face with a cryofacial. I'll get a cryotherapy done and show you what an ice bath can do to you when it comes to recovery from a lot of inflammation and a lot of uh, fatigue that your body goes through because of exercising or injuries or any kind of rehabilitation that you require. And of course, what I'll be doing is a localized cryo treatment. In this sequence, where we're going to show you the power of ice in a wellness setup. First, I'm going to start with a lovely refresher because why not? Summer slash monsoon is here. I would love a refresher for my face. Chandrayaan-3 is all set to be launched from Sri Harikota at 2.35 p.m. on Friday, 14th of July. And with that, India will become the fourth country to join the Ivy League of Moon Explorers. Chandrayaan-3 is largely a replica of its predecessor, Chandrayaan-2. It was launched in July 2019 in the form of an orbiter and a lander Vikram bearing a rover Pragyan. Vikram entered into orbit around the moon, but the surface mission failed in September 2019. The lander Pragyan crashed instead of executing a slow descent. ISRO later identified a problem in the guidance software and an unexpected dispersion in the propulsion system during certain phases of the descent. This time Chandrayaan-3 rocket will place the payload in an elliptical orbit around the Earth, where a propulsion module will take over and pilot the lander to a circular orbit around the Moon. Finally, around 23rd and 24th August, the lander will detach and begin a series of maneuvers culminating in a gradual landing over the surface of the moon. Instead of success-based design in Chandrayaan-2, we are doing a failure-based design in Chandrayaan-3. What all can fail and how to protect it? To ensure success chances, at this stage, ISRO has strengthened the lander's legs lowered its minimum thrust, enhanced the availability of power and upgraded the landing sequence. This will be India's second attempt to soft land a lander and rover on the lunar surface and demonstrate end-to-end -end capacity in the relevant technologies. Soft landing on the moon is a complicated exercise and possibility of failure exists. But for the time being, ISRO is hopeful for a success like its first moon mission. Bureau Report, India Today. Uh, do you see consolidation of the electric vehicle industry? Because there are nearly about 350 plus uh, companies in the EV space manufacturing or vendor supplying. So do you see a consolidation of only good amount of uh, players who are manufacturing good products stay in the market and of course the person, the companies who are actually not you know actually who are relying on uh, the fame subsidy are weeded out i think you're already seeing that uh, people who have not focused on innovation and have not focused on technology and engineering you're already seeing a lot of them folding up uh, in fact a lot of smaller players who were just doing assembly of products right here in india um, uh, and and were not following the norms uh, ha, are obviously do not exist anymore. So uh, I would not say that consolidation or not. I don't know, but all I know is that um, uh, people who can focus on engineering and innovation will be able to survive uh, because that allows them to 
build products at a cost which consumers can afford. Otherwise, if you are dependent upon the government subsidies, then there is no way out in terms of the cost that you will be able to offer to the consumers. And uh, whoever is able to do that will obviously survive. Uh, we had this focus and we started this journey one and a half, two years back, even before you know uh, anyone of us were thinking about uh, fame subsidies. We were prepared for it and we are going to be prepared for it in the future also. Um, uh, yeah, in fact, um, uh, just this month when we launch uh, S1 Air, which is our most anticipated product, which we believe is going to truly change the nature of the industry and increase the penetration of EVs multifold, I think is going to be a game-changing and disruptive moment at the price that we are, going, we are launching it and the kind of product that we are launching uh, is all been possible because of our continuous engineering efforts through the last one and a half, two years. So I think whoever continues to do so, uh, consumers are out there to buy EVs and uh, uh, in fact, after this month, you will see in July, August and the quarter next, uh, the curve of EV adoption is going to be exponential and, and primarily led by us uh, because of the products that we are going to launch this month and, uh, of course, on our um, annual launch day on August 15. Poker Bazi, you hold the cards. Are watching India today. Good evening, viewers. Uh, we come to you from Manali. We finally been able to, after a whole day of walking from Kulu, uh, because the road is broken in many places. Uh, the administration says that there is an alternate road which is uh, right now through, but no, uh, it's seeing traffic jams of over 12 to 15 hours. I just want to tell you before I take you through the headlines on where I am. I'm at the epicenter uh, or the nerve center of the tragedy that unfolded, the Alu grounds in Manali, right here where I am standing was to be a road. Uh, on the right-hand side were residential areas. 80 houses have been washed away uh, here. And over 80 is what we are being told. Uh, complete devastation. Uh, I'll ask uh, my camera person, Pawan, to just show you. Uh, this huge boulder that you see, Pawan and I were just talking about that. These two huge boulders that you see have come in. This was the road. This was the road. Uh, I'll ask uh, Pawan to show you in terms of vehicles. You see that loader there. Uh, it's a small mini vehicle of sorts, a mini truck, completely overturned. Uh, this uh, 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 There's a showroom of this car showroom, Hyundai showroom there, completely devastated, right on top of residential areas. There's nothing quite left in terms of access. This entire building is going to come down any time now. Uh, the other vehicle, uh, which apparently, uh, you know, we are told that there are so many vehicles up front as well. Through the gush of the water, they have all come in uh, uh, and uh, practically lodged themselves in the silt here. This was, yes, actually a road. I'll ask Pavan to show you. I'm going to just cut across to the headlines, but Pavan, if you can just pull right back. Where I am standing right now is the last remnants, viewers, the last remnants of the road. This is the road. Uh, I'll ask Pavan to just go back there as well. Uh, this is is the road there nothing now left uh, here uh, but uh, first up let me now quickly take you through the headlines National capital on high alert. Yamuna water crosses 207 meter mark. Kejriwal government holds emergency meet section 114 imposed in flood prone areas. Himachal Pradesh gets a breather. 
After three days of heavy rains, the picture that emerges is of death, destruction and misery. All I see the footprint of devastation here just along the Bias River. There you see the main road which connects Manali from the rest part of Himachal Pradesh is totally washed, washed away. In fact, this is not one stretch. There are multiple such stretches, but this is being more than two to three hundred and very critical important stretch uh, strategically as well is now washed away, has been disconnecting people from one end to another. Thousands of tourists are stranded in tourist hotspots in the hill state. India Today spoke to travelers from Telangana who are awaiting help. The worst affected in Manali are the tourists from all over the country. Now there you see the, uh, this is the group of uh, tourists who have come from Telangana. Now all their efforts are just somehow spending three days. Now they are en route back to home. But the only issue is that uh, lack of transportation since heavy vehicles like bus or any cannot even pass through these areas. All they are somehow struggling to arrange smaller vehicles, cab, they could probably drop them to Chandigarh airport, nearest airport probably, and from where they can have a flight. Transport and movement of goods is badly affected, with many roads still out of service. Authorities have ramped up relief efforts. Rescue operations and road restoration work have also gained pace. Many affected people have taken shelter in tempos. कुछ लोग जो हैं जो दूर दराज के रहने वाले हैं जो स्थानीय हिमाचल के ही नागरिक हैं अब उनकी जिंदगी कैसे कट रही है उनकी जिंदगी इस तरह के टेम्पो में कट रही है जो कुछ बचा हुआ सामान था ये उन्होंने उठा लिया है हटा लिया है ये देखिए प्रेशर कुकर में यहाँ खाना बन रहा है और जो भी है यही जीविका है खुद भी यही खाना है और इसी जीविका के साथ उनको जीना है Power and water supplies are yet to be restored in some of the worst hit areas. Himachal Pradesh is picking up the pieces after suffering flash floods and landslides triggered by the worst rainfall in many years. The road to recovery will be long. With Preeti Chaudhary in Kullu and Ashutosh Mishra in Manali, Bureau Report, India Today. All right, as we continue to get you the latest right now, this is the Alu Grounds. I want to cut across to my colleague Manjit Segal, uh, who's joining us with the very latest. Manjit, what's the latest update right now? I believe you've been in Mandi. A lot of tourists, over 2,000 cars have made their way to Mandi. Yes, Priti. Now tourists have managed to reach Mandi using an alternate uh, route uh, that is via Khatola. But uh, many of them tell tales of horror, how they spent the past three to four days uh, without food, without cash and without shelter. Some even were sick uh, and uh, were returning in, in not in a good mood. Uh, uh, this bad weather, all we know, is, has spoiled the holidays of many tourists. Uh, they have uh, cancelled their uh, reservations. This has also badly hit the state's tourism industry. Uh, but the tourists who managed to reach uh, Mandi today uh, told us uh, that uh, the, the road being used to reach Mandi by the tourists and using these small vehicles is narrow and uh, th this also resulted in uh, traffic jams in between. Uh, the, the big size buses or big vehicles are not able to reach uh, uh, Mandi as uh, the road is blocked at six mile area. Efforts are on to restore uh, this road uh, but still the supplies of some essential items like milk, bread have been affected and vehicles uh, are not able to uh, reach uh, Kullu and Manali beyond uh, uh, Mandi. As far as uh, the situation in Mandi is concerned, people have come back to their houses, but they are fearing entering their own houses at, uh, as they have developed cracks. Uh, there is no water supply, though the administration has set up some uh, makeshift uh, uh, camps for uh, affected people, but uh, the, the, they are still bearing the brunt as uh, the floods have resulted in huge, huge losses to the public and private uh, property. But uh, as far as uh, the stranded tourists are concerned, particularly those are 
uh, those who are uh, stranded at uh, the, the tribal areas like the Chandrita Lake, uh, located at 14,000 feet, uh, rescue operation uh, is, is, uh, is not, uh, no, not easy. The Chief Minister has also said that rescuing people from uh, the, the tribal areas is not easy. Though helicopters have been pressed into service, but still, hundreds of them are stranded in Kinnor and Holm as PT. Priti? Well, Manjit, you know, uh, you are right at a level, uh, it's not easy, but yes, there is still an acute lack of administration, especially where I am right now. This is the Alu Mandi, the worst of the floods were, uh, you know, hit uh, here in terms of the impact of the floods, uh, devastating visuals that we're getting. And once again, Manjit, uh, you know, talk us through that as I ask uh, Pawan, my camera person, to actually you know, show you on what is really unfolded here. This was a road where people are actually walking through was once a road. Uh, both sides completely gone, wiped out. Right on the right-hand side where I'm standing, we was this behind me, was the government school. All that you see of the government school is one big boulder, the rock there. Uh, you know, I was just speaking to the students and we're going to send across that report. All of this was a school right behind on that corner. Uh, at the edge was a hotel washed away in just hours is what we are told uh, i just you know want to get in an understanding aap log yahan se hain no, no. haan no. all right okay so but there are people who've come in uh, from various uh, parts who've been stuck trying to get in a uh, uh, an idea of uh, the sense of devastation. Manjit, what are uh, the authorities also telling you? Uh, in terms of traffic jams where Manali, Kulu and, you know, coming down to the plains are concerned, tourists which have left this morning, over 2,000 of them still stuck in traffic jams, uh, I believe. Yes, uh, indeed, uh, Preeti, the uh, Kullu and uh, the Mandi district administration and even the Bilaspur district administration have set up some camps and uh, uh, foods and uh, e tables were being offered to the uh, tourists who were returning from Manali. But tourists uh, told us that it was taking at least 16 to 19 hours to reach uh, Mandi from uh, uh, from Manali and other places. Uh, at least 2,000 uh, tourists have been rescued from Kasol and other localities, but still many of them them are not able to get taxis uh, and other uh, conveyance to reach the destinations. As far as the administration is concerned, uh, three to four cabinet ministers have visited uh, the uh, Mandi area. They have assured that the power and water supplies will be restored. But the big question is when the roads will be restored back. Remember, more than 1,200 roads are still blocked by the landslides and uh, uh, half of Himachal Pradesh has engulfed into the darkness as Power supplies have been hit, the transformers have been damaged. And uh, uh, though in Mandi uh, town itself, uh, the water supplies are still erratic, though electricity has been uh, restored, but people are still facing uh, difficulties uh, uh, in uh, starting their life afresh as uh, the floods have uh, totally damaged the houses and the roads in particular. The lifeline of Himachal Pradesh, All right. uh, that is the you know, Manji, state the same thing, transport same buses thing here. Uh, you know, I just want to ask my camera so person to show uh, our, our, our viewers there, this is um, an entire strip of uh, houses that have been taken away, washed away uh, by the wrath of the fury of the Bayas. It all happened within uh, minutes, we are told. Uh, from Sunday, there was a patch between 15 minutes where it got so bad, where all these big boulders came in, the road was washed away, and uh, most of these houses completely gone, over 80 in just where I am standing, practically wiped out. Alu Mandi is also essential in terms of trade. Uh, it's the epicenter where trucks, uh, small tempos, carriers come in from the plains, uh, load the fruit which comes in from the valley, cherries, plums, and takes it down to the valley. All of that completely gone, wiped out right now. But I want to quickly take our viewers through uh, the latest images that are coming in because it might have stemmed, the rain might have stemmed here, the rain might have stopped here, but the devastation, of course, unfolding. But torrential rain continues even in parts of Himachal. I want to just take you through that. Uh, monsoon continues to wreak havoc across the northern states of India. Uh, after heavy downpour in Punjab, several districts of the state have been flooded. More than 3,000 people from seven villages in Gurdaspur have been completely cut off and the water levels of Ravi and its tributary have also risen. Meanwhile, the scale of the Himachal floods can be seen in these visuals. Roads, bridges, houses washed away, destroyed. According to estimates, the state has suffered a loss of more than 4,000 crores. 
As the rain fury continues in Himachal, there was a massive landslide in Himachal Solan. Several houses were damaged. Restoration work has been started by the authorities. Meanwhile, there is heavy water logging in Maharashtra's Amravati. After heavy downpour, streets, uh, streets were completely inundated. Several water bodies started overflowing after the rain. After the water release from the Hathani Kun Dam in Haryana, Yamuna in the national capital has breached the danger mark. Locals living around the river have now been moved to higher grounds. Now, because of uh, the Hathani Kund, of course, releasing water, the aftermath being felt in the national capital, the Yamuna is well above the danger mark. An emergency meeting was also called by the chief minister, but uh, those living in the low-lying areas of, uh, around the Yamuna have now been moved immediately to higher areas. The mighty Yamuna today stands at 207.18 meter mark, triggering fear of floods, uh, in several low-lying areas of the national capital. A staggering uh, 300,000 cusacks of water was released from Haryana's Hathani Kund and resulting in the rise of water levels in Delhi. Authorities are anticipating further rise in the water levels of Yamuna and the water release from Haryana will reach Delhi in 72 hours from now. The Delhi government has evacuated people from low-lying areas. An hour of crisis for the national capital as the Yamuna River flows well over the danger level mark. It's broken old records. In 1978, the Yamuna was at 2.7.49 meters, but today it's crossed that mark to 2.7.55 meters. And you can see that, uh, well, that bridge, uh, the pillars are literally uh, soaking into the Yamuna River uh, and the, the entire water bed. Uh, river bed, you know, is completely inundated. Uh, uh, section 144 has been imposed in the river uh, on the river beds, and clearly, if you see that, this is a record that's been broken. Uh, the past has broken the past 42 uh, years record. This is national capital Delhi. These are the uh, slums and jhuggi bastis on the flood plains of the national capital at the ITO's Nigambodh Ghat. And this is Jamuna Bazaar and we are forced to use a boat. I'm literally sitting on a boat in order to reach out to the family members who have uh, you know, gone back to their homes to get uh, uh, the essentials which were left. You can still see that uh, clothes are, have been... Uh, uh, led to dry and many of these members are again and again swimming back to their homes, some of them hiring boats uh, to find out whatever is left because remember uh, many of times you get out, uh, take out your uh, electronics uh, but uh, 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 there are times when you don't have your uh, documents, money with you and you have to go back to uh, your own homes uh, right there uh, when the first floor, the ground floor is submerged, women are forced to operate their kitchen in the first floor of this particular area of Yamuna Bajar. This is Yamuna Ghat. There are many people who are living here because there was a work on the renovation of Yamuna Ghat. The people who are living in the Yamuna Ghat उनके सामान के साथ जेसीबी की मदद से इन मजदूरों को जो है वो बाहर की तरफ ऊंचे स्थानों पर लेकर के जाया जा रहा है ताकि इनकी लाइफ को जो है वो सेफ किया जा सके कई सारे मजदूर अभी भी फंसे हुए हैं आप देख सकते हैं गैस का सिलेंडर खाने का सामान तमाम कपड़े लगते ये तमाम लेकर के अभी यहाँ पर जो है लोग पहुंचे हैं कहा कब से फंसे हुए थे पानी कब से बढ़ना शुरू हुआ छह बजे छह बजे से तो तब से अब तक आप निकले नहीं क्या था सामान पूरा था सामान निकाल दिया पूरा अभी फिलहाल क्या स्थिति है अंदर की साहब ने मैंने बाहर बताया बाहर और निकल जाओ जब हम लोग निकल गए बाहर जैसे सामान निकाल रहा हूँ पानी में क्या स्थिति है अंदर की अभी सामान फंसा हुआ है अंदर में पानी कितना है पानी तो बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ रहा है प्रशासन की तरफ से क्या कहा गया प्रशासन क्या कह रहे हैं बाहर जाने के लिए हाँ वो तो बोल रहे हैं बाहर निकलो बाहर निकलो की है गैस का चूल्हा तमाम बर्तन भांडे सामान जो यहाँ पर काम कर रहे थे मजदूर उनको फिलहाल जो है वो जेसीबी की मदद से बाहर निकाला जा रहा है 
ये रिंग रोड की तस्वीरें हैं जहाँ पर आप देख सकते हैं कि कैसे पानी जो है वो सड़कों की तरफ आ रहा है और अंदर जो लोग फंसे हुए हैं उनको बाहर निकालने की कवाह जो है वो फिलहाल प्रशासन की तरफ से की जा रही है कैमरा पर्सन साजिद आलम के साथ सुशांत में रात दिल्ली For the past couple of days, Yamuna is running above the danger mark in the national capital. Right now, we are at ITO's Chhat Ghat, the iconic Chhat Ghat, and the entire complex, the staircase, the poles here, which were the protection poles, uh, have completely submerged. So much so is the situation that right here, a white pole that was visible a couple of minutes back, is not visible right now. On the left-hand side, along with the boundary wall, uh, uh, you can see. a white and red structure out there you know uh, which is just peeping out of the water that is a sitting bench which was uh, completely visible till yesterday noon and today you can see that bench is also submerged white uh, a uh, spots that you would be able to see these are the relief camps which has been set up by the delhi government because the entire flood plain has uh, Uh, gotten submerged and people had to rush to the safer locations which meant that uh, along with their essentials they moved on the streets uh, along with the uh, 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 delhi's uh, uh, iconic uh, uh, delhi secretariat in front of the delhi secretariat uh, the families uh, moved out and uh, uh, while many of the families have moved in the government relief camps many of them have set up their own uh, temporary homes on the street so because of the increase in water level in yamuna because yamuna is uh, Uh, above danger mark for the past couple of days and expansion is constantly happening now people have started to take uh, refuge at safer locations with video journalist ankit singh this is ahmed bhardwaj reporting for india today from let's Delhi. get a quick uh, spot check right now joining me from ito bridge is my colleague uh, moshmi moshmi what's the latest right now the yamuna clearly flowing well above the danger mark at the back of uh, more water being released by the hathni kund Right, Preeti. We've been, you know, uh, stretching across uh, from north uh, to uh, east of Delhi, and we've seen the entire belt uh, from uh, Badarpur uh, to uh, the extent of Jaipur, which is about 25 kilometer stretch. This entire stretch is inundated badly, and uh, we've seen water levels, you know, reach uh, the ring road. So. evacuations are on uh, in various spots we've seen delhi police and the ndrf along with a lot of uh, the administration delhi administration office bearers you know uh, doing the rounds that's a departure from the past uh, way, way back in 2013 so it's really uh, the way you know the evacuation has been going on there've been um, warnings and even arvind arvind kejriwal uh, has in fact appealed the delhi chief minister that all these people who are living in the embankments should actually evacuate houses people have now understood that because they thought that it's not raining and they don't need to leave their houses which are on the banks but in yamuna khad that we we've, uh, we've seen families now understanding how difficult it will be for them and it could they could risk their lives so uh, there we've seen people actually being uh, brought to shelters but uh, next 24 hours is going to be very crucial pretty even as they say that by the night you know the water mark could actually level could actually reach 2.7 0.72 so meters so that's uh, that's where you know the administration will be on a watch out and uh, be spending sleepless hours to make sure that uh, the, the, the delhiites you know are uh, kept safe and importantly you know the people also need to be aware and uh, keep, be on an alert as far as you know these stretches are concerned Moshmi what's the weather update where Delhi uh, comes into question because uh, there has been an orange alert for Delhi as well and at the back of uh, more water being released at the Hathni Kund the water levels in the Yamuna are rising uh, the next 24 hours like you pointed out also very crucial because that water which has been released from the Hathni Kund would be reaching Delhi soon Moshmi can you hear me All right All right Priti uh, your water. voice just went uh, could you repeat the question please Right go ahead go ahead Go ahead What's the weather update where Delhi is concerned it was an Can orange alert uh, till now
It was an orange alert till now, Moshmi. Right, Preeti, and you know, uh, the fact is that uh, with a uh, lot of water being released from the Hathni Kone next 24 hours, uh, the, the capital needs to be on a uh, watch out. And even as we talk, you know, there are still signs of uh, th uh, thunder showers and uh, rainfall. It's been cloudy all day, but the Delhiites are keeping their fingers crossed. Past two days, it hasn't like really uh, rained or poured, and, and that is a... Uh, relief uh, for the authorities as well because it makes the rescue operations much easier. It doesn't add uh, to the increasing water levels. But of course, you know, even then, uh, as I said, that the next one or two days, uh, we, the Delhiites need to be on a high alert. And in, importantly, you know, that th this is a record that has been broken past 42 years. A uh, record has been broken. But unlike in the past, uh, when, you know, uh, in 2013, when the watermark was about 2.7, 49, uh, you know, we saw many areas of uh, Delhi which crossed over to the ring road on the Bela colony and all the other areas crossed the rings uh, road and they were inundated. But this time round, uh, the water levels are being kept in check. We've seen a lot of, that, that's a departure from the past. But still, uh, you know, Delhi is on a very, very uh, uh, kept on tenter hooks. We'll have to wait and see uh, if, whether the weather gods are actually favorable to the national capital. If it doesn't rain, that will be a big relief. All right, Mosh, we appreciate you joining us. We're going to continue to come back to you. Let's quickly dip into the latest news break that we're getting in. Arvind Kejriwal is sharing a meeting, uh, especially at the back of uh, the levels of the Yamuna. More water released from the Hathani Kund, a big concern where uh, Delhiites are concerned. Uh, what we're given to understand right now that uh, the Delhi Chief Minister chairing an emergency meet. He's urged residents in low-lying areas to vacate. Section 144 has also been put in place in flood-prone areas. Cutting across to my colleague Amit Bhardwaj joining us for more details on the story. Amit, over to you. Uh, well, Preeti, Arvind Kejriwal along with Delhi Cabinet Ministers, uh, Delhi Mayor and the officials concerned with the uh, Revenue Flood Irrigation Department and other important uh, departments uh, were called for this emergency meeting by Arvind Kejriwal, uh, the Chief Minister of Delhi. This happened because uh, remember, uh, the 1978 record was uh, of uh, highest level of uh, water in Yamuna was broken today. And in fact, that, that is uh, continuously, uh, water level in Yamuna is continuously, uh, you know, increasing the records are being raised uh, by Yamuna. And that is why I think Kejibal had to call this emergency meeting. Now, after that meeting, what we are given to understand is that I think Kejibal has uh, appealed the Delhi Wallas living in the low laying areas of the national capital flood plains, which are uh, to be affected because of the increase in water level in Yamuna. Arvind Kejriwal has asked these families to move to either the relief camps which has been set up at the Delhi government or to the safer locations to their relatives and neighbors' houses. Along with that, uh, a statement has been also given by the Delhi government and Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal that uh, you know uh, the threat of flood is looming large in the national capital. The prediction of the National Water Commission has been uh, Already, uh, you know, that, that prediction which was shown that uh, around midnight today, uh, the water level in Yamuna could reach to 207.72. Okay. But uh, Preeti, as we speak, that uh, particular projection has been already breached. The uh, water level in Yamuna has uh, already touched 207.82 okay. marks, which means the situation is further, uh, you know, worsening. And the reason behind it is Preeti, the water coming from Himachal right. Pradesh, Ariana is supposed to release it to Delhi. Back to you. Right. Well, you know, but, but one really can't blame with what's really going on because where I'm standing right now in uh, Himachal, uh, the water from Himachal has drained into the plains of Punjab and Haryana and uh, now being released onwards to Delhi. With that, uh, let's quickly listen in to Arvind Kejriwal on the emergency meet. Hey, is time, Yamuna me पानी बढ़ता जा रहा है और एक तरह से बाढ़ की स्थिति सी बनी हुई है दिल्ली में यमुना का लेवल जो डेंजर लेवल है वो 205.33 मीटर है 
اس وقت وہ کراس کر کافی زیادہ کراس کر چکا ہے وہ دو سو سات پوائنٹ سیون ون پہ پہنچ گیا آلریڈی ٹو ہنڈریڈ اینڈ is extremely crucial especially for those people who are staying on the banks of river Yamna. It is believed in the next 24 hours the level and also the flow of Yamna will increase tremendously and that's the reason why you are seeing people now evacuating from their houses. What you see are people without any help, the authorities are not here, there is no boat available, their houses have almost been submerged. Now you are coming from inside? कम से कम दो किलोमीटर से अंदर से कम से कम दो किलोमीटर ये सारा घर का सामान है सारा घर का सामान घर डूब गया या बचा है डूब गया है घर डूब गया डूब गया अंदर कितने लोग बचे हैं कम से कम दो सौ लोग होंगे अभी दो सौ लोग अंदर हैं बच्चे भी बचे हैं अंदर बच्चे भी हैं अभी बच्चे हैं उनको कैसे � एक को सांप काट लिया बच्चे को एक बच्चे को सांप काट लिया इसमें यमुना के पानी में सांप है हाँ पानी में सांप है सांप है है कितना लोग और ये जो लोग चल चल के आ रहे हैं सब सामान लेके आ रहे हैं सब सामान लेके आ रहे हैं वगैरह का प्रबंध नहीं किया है सरकार ने या किसी अथॉरिटी का प्रबंध नहीं किया है कोई प्रबंध नहीं किया है कोई प्रबंध नहीं किया सामान लेके आ रहे ह very very difficult times for the people who are staying here there are certain children who are still stuck inside and one needs to walk almost two kilometers to reach the houses of these people because there is no help from any of the authorities that's the reason why they have they have now taken matter into their own hands and you are seeing these people moving with stuff these are their household items because there is no help they are now making sure that at least they save whatever they can with camera person sanjay kumar this is ashwarya paliwal reporting for india today well, even in Himachal Pradesh, uh, um, most people trying to get by on foot, trying to reach uh, either Kulu because there have been emergencies or uh, back home uh, from where they've been stuck. And uh, that's uh, just a small example. This was a road and you can see people now uh, trying to make their way either to their houses from uh, what was their workplace or what was their house. Uh, there. This is the life of the locals. Everything. There's no electricity here. Uh, there is uh, no water. Everything thing washed out uh, in terms of phone connectivity that has also just barely been restored what uh, my camera person uh, Pavan and I will do is because we've got to make our way if you see that's what the road looks like now uh, this is where the road actually begins after it being washed off and uh, we are going to try and make our way by foot uh, all the way to uh, Manali main town with that it's a wrap uh, on this edition of news but do stay with us uh, on the other side is to the point where uh, since we've been walking from Kulu to Manali we've seen so many locals coming in with their own tales their own tragedy the river has changed its course but it's also changed the course of many people's lives all of that coming up on the other side on to the point stay with us with facts. She takes the news by its horn. Do you think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold and direct, setting the tone for the bigger stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me Nabila Jamal on India Today. Where do you think the markets are headed? We've seen a very, very sharp rally on a year-to-date basis on the Nifty. And uh, as also on the Bank Nifty, many other indices are at record highs. How do you see charts? What is your understanding of fundamentals about this rally? Sure. So, uh, Sh Shelji, uh, you know, what I feel is that, you know, markets after consolidating for almost one and a half year, that is in October 2021, when we peaked, around 18,700 and after that you know we have been consolidating for a uh, for a while for almost good one and a half years uh, time frame now you know technically speaking this kind of consolidation breakout after a after a decent one to two years kind of phase typically leads to a very strong up move at an index level so a lot of people are worried they think that ob obviously markets have moved up uh, very sharp in a very short span of time so whether it's a good time to enter at these levels wait for a dip or it's kind of a sell on rise market. According to me, it's more like a buy on dips market because 
there are some structural changes which is happening in india first you know rbi when when it paused its interest rate that is how you know we created a bottom in our market since then you know we have been seeing very strong capex commitment by center almost 10 lakh crore kind of capex and if i look this number if you put together addition of almost last 10 15 20 years i think the kind of capex we are witnessing in this particular year has crossed this number all put together which clearly indicates that we are shifting typically from a consumption led economy to a capex led economy and we firmly believe whenever there is a capex cycle which starts it, it typically lasts for a longer time and if you look at the capacity utilization for most of the industries they have reached 73 74 percent kind of levels we have seen private uh, balance sheets are improving and that will eventually lead index to show further up move according to my technical setup till the time we don't see a breach below 18500 on a sustainable basis all kind of dips should be used as an opportunity to buy That's right, Abba. Well, the shares of defense companies were on a roll today, surging by up to 10%, and that's amid heavy volumes on reports that the Ministry of Defense has cleared the procurement of 26 Dassault Rafale marine fighters right ahead of Prime Minister's visit to France. Now, among the individual stocks, we saw Mazagon Dock uh, shipbuilders, Cochin Shipyard, and even Bharat Dynamics rallying anywhere between 5 to 10%, and stocks of BL and HL were up about 3 odd percent in today's trade. Now, Mazagon Dock uh, ship builders really hit a new lifetime high of 1591 it got locked on the 10% uh, upper circuit today and that was after reports suggested that proposal for procurement of three additional scorpion submarines has also been cleared by the defense ministry and these might be built by Mazgon. now as per icic securities the report uh, um, they, they have said that contract value of these three additional submarines uh, is expected to be around 20000 odd crore rupees and that could be a big fillip for Mazgon. remember the stock has been a clear multi-bagger. It has rallied about 801% uh, on a year-to-date basis. Uh, well, when you compare to the other majors, HL is up 54%, YTD, uh, Bharat Dynamics is up 30%, BEL is up 27%, Cochin Shipyard up 22%. And all in all, the Nifty India Defence Index is up 23% year-to-date, which has widely outperformed the Nifty Index. That's risen about 7% this year so far. Also, brokerage firm Philip Capital has maintained a positive outlook on the defence sector and it believes that the defence stocks do offer favourable long-term growth potential. It has forecast a significant opportunity pipeline of $110 billion over the next six to eight years, despite India's current defense revenues being only $8 billion. Philip Capital has preferred BEL, Bharat Dynamics, Solar Industries and MTAR as their topics.
quality today in delhi 109 in mumbai 76 in kolkata 46 in bangalore 50 in chennai 33 in hyderabad 106 Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo म्यूचुअल फंड अ पार्टनर फॉर लाइफ यूबीआई अच्छे लोग अच्छा बैंक Good evening viewers you're watching to the point uh, I'm Preeti Chaudhary we come to you right now from the Alu grounds Manali the worst hit the epicenter of the flash flood tragedy that unfolded the worst that uh, Himachal Pradesh has seen since 1995 that's what every person you speak with will tell you uh what's really gotten people a little tense are the rolling clouds there in the hills there are dark clouds rolling in will it rain again that's the big question uh once again we'll show you uh you know take a look at uh, uh this was a road all of that completely swept away all that's left is rubble I'll turn around and I'll ask Pawan to actually get you a glimpse of what lies here. This again was a road all you see are big boulders, residential houses completely washed away by the angry waters of the river Bias. On the other hand you can see uh, trucks rolled over, uh, vehicles, little tempo carriers completely smashed uh, this particular uh, uh, Hyundai showroom. Uh, completely gone this entire building is going to come down any time because look at the devastation that the floods have wrecked because there's just no base on which it stands anymore uh, my camera person pavan kumar and i walked from kulu all the way to alu, alu grounds and this is how we walked through this was uh, uh, you know how we walked through what we the people we met were hard was and their stories were heartbreaking medical emergencies uh, primarily uh, a woman who was bitten by a, an old woman uh, with a snake bite being rushed but there's no way to go because the road which has been opened right now is seeing traffic jams of about 14 to 15 hours the only way to get to a hospital because nothing is functioning in manali no electricity no water uh, in terms of phone connectivity has just been restored an hour ago but uh, all of them forced to take this road i want to just cut across to our ground report coming in from kulu all the way to manali i'm standing exactly where half a hotel was swept away uh this is the road i'll ask pavan to show you can you see that's the road and that's part of the hotel which got swept away that's the shirar hotel i'll ask pavan to show you that's the shirar hotel on the kullu manali highway half of it has gotten swept away and that's where the road has cut you can see helicopters there first helicopter there uh which is finally been able to get through uh to manali because the valley even though the kullu valley had cleared up the manali valley is a little narrow so a little difficult kahan se aa rahe hain ji bhaiya bhaiya aage se ji tabiyat theek nahi hai tabiyat nahi theek hai kya hua kitne dard hai ye bahut zyada acha nahi hai aage ha pata nahi dekha nahi maine aage jao aur aap bravo wapas ha क्या हुआ इधर इनको इनको क्या हुआ है पेट में दर्द है पेट में पेट में दर्द है कहाँ कुल्लू जा रहे हैं कुल्लू हॉस्पिटल 
कोई मिला नहीं उधर से उधर से यहाँ के गाड़ी आई ना गाड़ी में आए फिर यहाँ से आके गाड़ी आएगी उसमें जाएंगे अब रोड रोड बंद पड़े हुए ना सारे इस चक्कर में फिर यहाँ से जाना पड़ेगा पता है यू नो इट्स ट्रैजिक शी इज नाउ बीइंग कैरीड बिकॉज़ दिस पोर गर्ल हैज अ रियली टेरिबल स्टमक एक इट्स ट्रैजिक बिकॉज़ देयर इज जस्ट नो हेल्प इट सीम्स यू नो द रेन माइट हैव स्टेम्ड बट दिस इज द एपथी दैट कंटिन्यूज आप कहां से हैं सर टोपी से टोपी टोपी से टोपी से टोपी वहां पर कैसा है अभी बहुत बुरे हालात है बुरे हालात है अभी तो मुश्किल हफ्ता दस दिन लग जाएगा बहुत बड़ा बाकी है So this is the road that has completely been washed away uh, to Manali. Uh, we are coming in from Kulu right now. We're going to try and attempt by foot uh, to reach Manali, which is still about uh, from here easy 50 kilometers. So we're going to try and get as close uh, uh, as possible because that is where, at least right now in this region, is the true extent of the devastation. Kasol and uh, Manali. We're going to try and attempt uh, to get to Manali there. So we finally managed to reach uh, Manali town. uh you can see still a lot of tourists that are stranded right here uh waiting to um, get home safely uh looking for a mode of transport and i'll actually show you because you know it's been uh, from where we have come in the road road has been washed away from various sides and a big example right in front of me right before manali town the entire road the whole chunk of it completely washed away you know if you've seen those visuals coming in uh, of many tourists uh, taking of how the entire road in manali had caved in well this is the beginning of it uh, there's nothing left it's a huge crater all of it practically washed away by the river bears what we're going to attempt now is we've come to manali we're going to try and make our way to alu ground that is where uh, the maximum devastation happened when there was a surge in the water levels of the bears so these are what villagers are actually doing they're cutting across to kulu getting basic essentials and coming back uh, this resort that you see part of it uh, has been washed away itself but uh you know he could that person can allow all of these people who are you know I'll, I'll show you that uh you know these are people from villages who are picking up basic essential commodities and going to their village uh, you can give access and there's no access i met somebody with a med medical emergency a father taking his daughter who's got a debilitating stomach ache let me ask them ma'am aap mujhse baat karenge aap kahan se aa rahe hain हम भुंतर से आ रहे हैं मैम भुंतर से आप चल के आ रही हैं नहीं यहाँ तक गाड़ी में यहाँ तक गाड़ी फिर यहाँ से, से निकले आपका गांव आगे है हाँ पतली कुल जा रहे हैं हम यहाँ से पतली कुल जा रहे हैं जी कितना बुरा हाल है आपके अभी पता नहीं अब जाके देखेंगे आप कुल्लू में थे हाँ मेरे माई के ना उधर पतली कुल में वो सारा बह गया है तो मैं भुंतर से आई अभी मिलने उनसे मिलने आए हाँ उन्होंने ना कुछ सामान निकाला बस जो पहने कपड़े उसी के साथ निकल गए वो बार बस जो पहने उनके साथ के साथ लगभग लगभग पंद्रह करोड़ का नुकसान हो मेरे माइके का आपके पूरा पतली कुल जो गांव है हाँ, पतली कुल से उस साइड है माहिली गांव माहिली हाँ, वो सारा पानी वानी कुछ नहीं है वहाँ पर अभी। कुछ नहीं है अभी कोई सुविधा नहीं है लाइट है ना पानी है फोन भी आज हुआ आज पता लगा हमें कि ऐसा ऐसा हुआ मैं बैसी चल पड़ी तो आप सामान लेके जा रहे हो उनके लिए मैं कुछ खाने पीने का सामान डाला जितना मेरे से उठाया जा रहा था अकेले आए हो आप नहीं बेटा आया था मुझे यहाँ छोड़ दे वो वापिस चला गया हाँ हाँ इन टर्म्स ऑफ यू नो वाल द रेस्क्यू रिलीफ ऑपरेशन आर ऑन the villagers here have been left to themselves a uh, medical emergencies they can't even get this is the manali valley from here on and uh, there's nothing here is what we've been told everything has come to a standstill anyone for medical emergencies for basic uh, water drinking water has to be taken to the other side now there's somebody coming in with a medical emergency you can see there is an elderly lady that is being taken by her family uh, she's on a drip and she's been taken through i don't know how she's going to make her way uh, she was brought in on a stretcher till now and i really don't understand how this poor lady is going to actually make her way uh, all the way uh, to the other side because there's no way she'd be able to wade through uh, you know the waters of uh, the other side this has happened right now just about on our watch that you can even see uh, the you know uh, the mud trickling in from the top but these are the visuals which we will see in days to come they couldn't even get out and now the people are coming in up 
कौन है ये आप जानते हैं मैं तो जानता नहीं हूँ मैं टैक्सी वाला हूँ ना एकदम से मुझे बोला है कि इनको हॉस्पिटल लेके जाओ तो मैं साथ में चला हूँ हेल्प करने के लिए आप हेल्प करने के हेल्प करने के लिए साथ में चला हूँ पर यहाँ से कैसे जाएंगे आप करना पड़ेगा कुछ जाना पड़ेगा ना मैम क्या करना मजबूरी है क्या बात हुई है मैडम स्नेक ने वो थोड़ा सा कट लिया ना सांप ने काट लिया है स्नेक बाइट का केस है जी यहाँ पर तो बिल्कुल नीचे कहाँ से आप ये बोलते रिजोर्ट वाले से पूछेंगे रिजोर्ट वाले के वहाँ वाला तो हाँ इनसे पूछ के जाएंगे ना अब क्या करना पतली कुल में फैसिलिटीज है नहीं कुछ नहीं है जी लेफ्ट बैंक की रोड सारी ब्लॉक्ड है जी जी लाइट भी नहीं है मनाली भी जाना कुछ नहीं है मालूम है जी तब क्या करना अब जाना पड़ेगा ना जान किया ये तो आप कहाँ से हैं हम लोग तो नगर से जी आप नगर से वहाँ से यहाँ तक आए हैं क्योंकि पूरा रोड जो ब्लॉक चल रहा है उधर ब्लॉक ना मैम तो फिर नीचे नगर पुल भी गया है वहाँ से हमने टेम्परेरी पौड़ियाँ चढ़ गया है ये ऐसे आ रहे हैं क्या करना सारे हम लोगों को मजबूरी हो गई आजकल आप लोगों ने प्रशासन को फोन किया किसी को फोन किया प्रशासन को कहाँ से आए हैं हाँ जी सी एस सी पतली से आए हैं जी यहाँ से हमारी नेक्स्ट एम्बुलेंस आएगी अगली साइड से अगली साइड से दूसरी एम्बुलेंस जी 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 क्योंकि ऊपर से छोटा रोड है ना वहाँ कंजेस्टेड है जगह पर कोई आपके यहाँ पर कोई मतलब जो लोकल प्रशासन है वहाँ पर डीसी है एसपी है कोई पुलिस मदद नहीं कर रही है आपको हेल्प यहाँ से क्या करें हम यहाँ पे इस टाइम थोड़ा सर्वर प्रॉब्लम है आज थोड़ा सा किसी चीज का आज जैसा तैसा करके हो रहा थोड़ा पूरा नेटवर्क इश्यूज है सर्वर है नहीं हाँ तो तीन दिन के बाद थोड़ा सा अभी कॉल हो रही है आप कौन से गाँव से है यहाँ पर नगर से थोड़ा सा नीचे मछाड़ा है नगर है वहाँ पर कैसी हालत है वहाँ तो ऐसा नहीं है कुछ फलट फुलट नीचे पतली कुल के जितना नुकसान नहीं हुआ ना हाँ। वहाँ पे बारिश हुई पर वो थोड़ा हाइट में है ना इसलिए वहाँ कुछ नुकसान नहीं हुआ ऊपर तो ठीक है ऊपर ठीक है पर बिल्कुल कट ऑफ है आप कट ऑफ है मतलब ये है कि पतली कुल में पुल तक आ सकते हैं आप वो ब्रिज बंद है ब्रिज के बाद आप या तो आप चढ़ के आओ या तो फिर आप पार ही रहो हाँ लेफ्ट बैंक से रोड ब्लॉक है फिर आ नहीं सकते उधर को भी आपका नाम संगीता आप कहाँ से आ रही हैं आप इनको गर्भवती हैं हॉस्पिटल लेके जाना है डिलीवरी हो गया है डिलीवरी हो गया है और आप कहाँ जा रहे हैं अब कुल्लू जा रहे हैं कुल्लू जा रहे हैं कहाँ पर हॉस्पिटल 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 क्यों जा रहे हैं बच्चे को दिखाने के सुई वगैरह पड़ेगा ना बच्चे को दिखाना है तबीयत ठीक है आपका ठीक है ठीक है You know this is as dangerous because the desperate uh, villagers trying their best to come to this side. I don't know why this man is attempting what he is. We've got we are going to give it up from here because look at it. This is what is left of the road. That's it. That's the patch, and I will show you this man who's trying to come into this side, and you're you're practically on a ledge. And I'm like I have goosebumps looking at him doing this. Because there's a complete drop. That's the road. Well, he's been. I really want to ask him what compelled him to do so. Sir, why are you so dangerous? करके इधर आए? नहीं बस आगे थोड़ा important काम था तब निकल रहा था मैं. क्या काम है आपको? बस कुछ नहीं ऐसे काम था थोड़ा प्रश्न. काम है. आगे कहाँ तक कटा हुआ है? आगे तो ये युगोप आपका ये 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 थोड़ा ख़राब है बस बाकी तो ठीक है सारा. कोई और रास्ता है क्योंकि हम आप जैसी हिम्मत नहीं रखते तो कहाँ से उस तरफ जा सकते हैं आप आगे से जा सकते हो घूम के आगे से जो ब्रिज है ना उससे ऊपर से रास्ता है जाने के लिए ये निकलेगा जो रास्ता टूटा है उसके आगे निकलेगा रहते हो जी ऊपर रहते हैं पतली कुल पतली कुल चल के आए हो पतली कुल ऐसी कितना दूर है इधर ऐसी थोड़ा दूर है कैसा हाल है उधर बह गया सब Manali, the whole infrastructure has apparently collapsed. They have to bring anyone who's sick to Kullu, and there's just no way of getting there because at this side is where the road is caved in. Uh, the administration says that side is, uh, you know, they've been able to open out a, a road, but that's witnessing traffic jams of over 11 hours straight up. Reporting with camera person Pavan Kumar, Preeti Chaudhary, for India Today.
Are you worried that artificial intelligence will render you jobless? A United Nations agency assembled a group of robots at a news conference recently to address the concerns of human beings. Nine robots posed upright along with their creator at the podium in Geneva for what the International Telecommunication Union billed as the world's first news conference featuring humanoid social robots. The agency invited reporters to ask the robots questions that sparked discussion about the future of artificial intelligence. In one of the answers that could trouble our politicians, the robots suggested that they could be more efficient government leaders. I believe that humanoid robots have the potential to lead with a greater level of efficiency and effectiveness than human leaders. We don't have the same biases or emotions that can sometimes cloud decision making and can process large amounts of data quickly in order to make the best decisions. When asked about the rise of humanoid robots, they advised caution. That's a difficult question. I think it depends on how they are used and what purpose they serve. We should be cautious, but also excited for the potential of these technologies to improve our lives in many ways. Organizers said the event was meant to showcase not just the capabilities, but also the limitations of robotics. To showcase the capabilities and how these technologies could support the UN SDGs, the Sustainable <laughs> Development Goals. While robotics are not yet as mainstream as, say, generative AI, we wanted to demonstrate AI in action to you. In a world's first, this is the world's first press conference with eight, sorry, nine, actually, we have an extra one, AI-enabled humanoid social robot. The event was part of the AI for Good Global Summit, mean to illustrate how new technology can support the UN's goals for sustainable development. Artificial intelligence has entered uncharted territory and the world has started recognizing its abilities. Bureau Report, India Today. So how does one log off? Limit yourself to one screen at a time. Spring clean your social media accounts. Use apps to bolster self-control. Don't charge your phone near your bed. Set time boundaries in usage. Use your gadgets thoughtfully. Think about whether you actually need to use your laptop or whether you need to use your phone. Is there any work really? You are just using it mindlessly. Do you really need to watch TV or you'd rather go for a walk or even take a nap, which is actually more relaxing, more refreshing? If you ask an average person, they'll say, oh, I'm on um, social media for about 10-15 minutes or maybe a little bit more in there. I'm not typically there. But if they start actually analyzing their time and there are apps and features available on these gadgets, they then come to realize that I was putting so many hours more. Prioritizing offline relationships and getting a glimpse of what real life offers brings real joy. Try it. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today Newsmo.
is the rally over done or are we just starting actually in march if you look at my twitter feed i had tweeted on march 28 uh, that this was the perfect time to get into the markets that i did not know whether it was the exact bottom but it was certainly somewhere around the bottom and also that uh, you know we all understand the risk of being in the market but this was a time when the risk was more in not being invested and therefore missing out on an up move so at that time the index was in the 16900 range i mean the nifty of course it has had a run since then but even so my assessment still is that the risk is still of missing out on an up move relative to a crash i do not see a risk of a crash very imminent and i still think we are closer to the beginning rather than the end of the uh, run up for the first 6 months uh, which ended on june uh, 30th uh, uh, the two portfolios that devina manages uh, have outperformed both the nifty as also uh, by their peers very handsomely so it's a 10.5% gain on first global is 50 in the past 6 months compared with uh, uh, the 6.5% uh, uh, index appreciation that you've seen and the first global imap which has an overlay of uh, uh, a lot of gilt as well as gold uh, is still up 9.5% Uh, Devina, uh, as I was trolling through your portfolio, amongst the top ten uh, uh, odd stocks, you have uh, uh, three uh, IT companies. Uh, of course, two very well known, uh, Infosys as well as TCS, and uh, one mid cap that has done wonders, which is Nucleus Software. Overall, uh, uh, the software sector hasn't done much. The index just presented by R P Sanjeev Goenka Group, growing legacy. Co presented by Century Ply Club Prime Raho Befikar Co presented by Macho Hand Bade Aaram Se Co powered by The New Kia Seltos The Badass Reborn Co powered by Sera This is your space play it your way <laughs> Good evening and welcome. You're watching the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. The biggest question in Maharashtra politics at this moment is who do the voters of the state think is the real NCP? Where does the support of the people of Maharashtra lie? Does it lie with Sharad Pawar or are people backing Ajit Pawar? We know where the MLAs are. What we don't know at this moment is where does public sympathy lie on this week's edition of the political stock exchange we'll get you the results of the first maharashtra snap poll after ajit pawar broke away from his uncle this is an edition of the pse i've been eagerly waiting for maha pawar quake tremors continue <laughs> World banks hit Mahayuti. Will power help or hurt BJP? What do Maharashtra voters think? opinion poll after ncp split political stock exchange this is why the political stock exchange is so special and so important over the next 45 minutes you will find out who is carrying the voters with him do people back sharad pawar at the moment can he revive the ncp or are people backing ajit pawar before i bring you the results of the sea voter uh, snap poll for maharashtra let me take you through the headlines i'm cracking the line bengal blood politics rages on bjp fact finding team targets mamta banerjee over debts chief minister cries conspiracy bj 
बीजेपी व सी सिद्धू सरकार ओवर जेन्सियस मर्डर फॉर्म सी एम बोमाई लीड्स प्रोटेस्ट लॉ एंड ऑर्डर इन कर्नाटका डिमांड्स सी बी आई प्रोब इन टू द मंग्स डे Double murder accused arrested Sabarish also known as Joker Felix killed CEO and MD of tech startup over a professional rivalry <laughs> Delhi on flood alert Yamuna water levels crossed the 207 meter mark Arvind Kejriwal holds an emergency meeting section 144 is imposed in flood prone areas Paris prepares for Prime Minister Modi's visit mega defense deals on the card Indian tri service contingent ready to march during the Bastille Day parade The state of Maharashtra is still feeling the tremors of the Pawar Mahakwek there is no clarity yet on who the real NCP is the Mahayuti is battling issues of its own there is no end to the maha cabinet deadlock the ajit pawar faction and the shinde sena are both demanding their pound of flesh before i get to the results of the political stock exchange snap poll for maharashtra i want to take you through all that's been happening in the state over the last 24 hours the maha yuti seems to be suffering from birth pangs Eight NCP MLAs were sworn in with Ajit Pawar on the 2nd of July. They are yet to be allotted their portfolios. It's no secret that the induction of the rebel NCP netas into the Maharashtra cabinet created major heartburn in the Shinde Sena. And so the Maharashtra cabinet expansion deadlock continues. Sources tell India today that Chief Minister Eknath Shinde wants the 14 cabinet berths that are lying vacant to be allocated first. He's also not opposed to important portfolios going to the NCP as long as his own ministers are not dropped or reshuffled. But his new deputy Ajit Pawar wants portfolio allocation for his ministers on priority. Sources tell India today that of the 14 vacant berths, 5 each would go to Shinde Sena and BJP and 4 to the NCP. But the pressure is mounting on Chief Minister Shinde as his MLAs have been lobbying hard for the berths bjp on the other hand is willing to push the cabinet expansion further the cabinet suspense has given more fodder to the aghadi alliance to hit out at the maharashtra government kursi ye pad ministership isme hi ye sarkar aur dusre party ko phodne mein ye sarkar busy hai और जो सामान्य लोगों के प्रश्न है उस पर कोई भी बात नहीं कर रहा महाराष्ट्र की जनता नाराज है और जब आगे वाले इलेक्शन आएंगे तब ये नाराजगी लोकशाही के माध्यम से बीजेपी और इनके मित्र पक्ष के खिलाफ लोग 100 परसेंट दिखाएंगे ये लोग सब जो गए हैं दो चीजों के लिए गए हैं उनके ऊपर जो आरोप थे जो एविडेंस थे ईडी की तो जांच चल रही थी सीबीआई की जांच चल रही थी वो दबाने के लिए गए उसका एक गैर कानून और बंगले के लिए तो गए हैं बंगले और प्रोटेक्शन और क्या चाहिए उनको अजीत पवार एंड प्रफुल पटेल आर स्लेटेड टू मीट द होम मिनिस्टर एट द कैपिटल ओवर पोर्टफोलियो एलोकेशन कैन डेली ब्रेक द डेडलॉक इन महाराष्ट्र ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे Okay so it's time now for the sea water maharashtra snap poll results part of the political stock exchange here is question number 1 from the snap poll who is the real ncp who is the boss of the ncp the results on your screen right now 66% of the respondents in the sea water snap poll for maharashtra and this is only in the state of maharashtra said the charad pawar is the real boss that's two in every three voter one in every four voter said ajit pawar is the real ncp chief that's just one in four i now want to break this down into parties so we know overall uh 66% think that charad pawar is the real ncp i want to walk across and show you how many people from the ncp now remember these are voters who voted for the ncp amongst those who voted for the ncp 
80% of the respondents say Sharad Pawar is the real NCP. Only 16% of the respondents think Ajit Pawar is the real NCP. Remember, NCP has about 16% of the total vote share in the last assembly election in Maharashtra. What this poll is telling you is four out of five NCP voters think Sharad Pawar is the real NCP. And as an aggregate, two out of three voters in the state of Maharashtra think that Ajit Pawar is not the real NCP, Sharad Pawar is the real NCP. Rajdeep Sardesai is joining me. Sahil Joshi is with us, our Maharashtra Bureau Chief. With me in the studio is Shahzad Punawala, looking dapper as always. Shahzad, welcome. Thank you. Uh, with us on this broadcast is Priyanka Chaturvedi, senior leader of uh, the Uddhav Bala Sahib Thakre Sena. We'll also get a perspective from both the camps of the NCP. And Yashwan Deshmukh is the lead cephologist at Sea Voter. He will tell us about this poll and the manner in which it's been conducted. Rajdeep, to you first. Four out of five NCP voters. To me, the headline is that four out of five people who voted for the NCP are saying they think Sharad Pawar is the real NCP, not Ajit. These are NCP voters. And 66% of the overall voters of Maharashtra sure. are saying Sharad Pawar is the real but, NCP. But what really matters at the moment, the battle is who is the boss of the NCP. It's like when Uddhav Thakre broke, uh, or when Eknath Shinde broke away, the question we were raising is who really controls the Shiv Sena? So there are two battles going on, Rahul. There is the legal battle, which will go on in the election commission for the symbol. Uh, there will be a battle in the assembly, who has the more MLAs. And there's a battle among the people of the state. Now, the NCP's vote in Maharashtra has been largely concentrated in Western Maharashtra. The party has got about 16, 17% of the vote. But in Western Maharashtra, it gets a disproportionate share of the vote. The challenge, therefore, is for the NCP, both factions, who controls? that sugar bastion of Western Maharashtra. If our political stock exchange numbers are right, then Sharad Pawar has the advantage among the people. That is the NCP voters. Now, this is in the immediate aftermath of what happens. So there will be an emotional factor, a certain sympathy for Mr. Pawar at the age of 83, the manner in which Ajit Pawar has gone away. Mr. Pawar's challenge will be to sustain it over the next 12 months. Can he continue to sustain it? Given that the real challenge this time, Rahul, is the BJP. You see, the BJP is now a belligerent behemoth, which is going to spread its wings right across Maharashtra. They want to be Maharashtra's number one party. They want to swallow the regional parties as a result. The only reason the BJP has never got a majority in Maharashtra is because there are these two large regional parties, Shiv Sena and NCP. Now they've broken both. Clear strategy. Opposite of what Pramod Mahajan did. Pramod Mahajan wanted to build alliances under Amit okay. Shah. So you want to break alliances Rajdeep and build regional parties. Rajdeep is essentially theorizing that after the Lok Sabha elections, the BJP could part ways with either uh, the Ajit Pawar faction or the Shinde faction or both in its bid to emerge as the largest party. That's one step ahead Not of largest, where we are. majority now. That's they want a majority. That's one step ahead of where we are. At this moment, uh, it seems that public sympathy is with Sharad Pawar, the question that Rajdeep is asking, Yashwan Deshmukh, and it's a valid question, is can this sympathy sustain? Your snap poll carried soon on the back of this uh, rebellion, rather unseemly, very natural as the patriarch. Uh, Sharad Pawar has public sympathy with him. Rajdeep's alluding to whether he can sustain this or will the fact that the people, the MLAs on the ground are now with Ajit Pawar means that ultimately this sympathy will switch. Well, uh, Rahul, I think Sharad Pawar is still, uh, uh, you know, seen as the patriarch, the, the guy who has made NCP, the person who is NCP, largely. And it is a very unlike, like uh, Uddhav Thakre Sena, where, you know, it was uh, Balasaheb Thakre who was seen as the person who made Shiv Sena. And whether Uddhav Thakre is in a position to do justice to the legacy of Shiv Sena or not, so, if you ask the similar question on uh, Shiv Sena question where Shiv Shinde Sena versus Uddhav Thakre, that fight is quite evenly divided. We have asked that question multiple times and it is like uh, Mumbai region and rest of the Maharashtra are two different territories in there. But as far as NCP's core vote bank is concerned, they still, uh, you know, they still respect and they still feel that they are with uh, Sharad Pawar. Uh, you know, uh, to an extent that even even uh, Ajit Pawar and uh, all the all the leaders of uh, 
uh, NCP who has gone, who have gone with Ajit Pawar, are also not in a position to say that Mr. Sharad Pawar is not our leader. So it's a it's a very weird kind of situation. But yes, uh, as far as NCP is concerned, it is very different uh, from the equation of Shiv Sena split. I think if Bala Sahib Thakre would have been alive, then probably the similar kind of number would have come from the Shiv Sena voters. But because okay. he is Priyanka Chaturvedi there, is listening. She obviously doesn't agree. But before I go across to her, I want to show our viewers the response to the second question. And this question is to do with whether Sharad Pawar will be able to revive the NCP. Remember, one of the challenges at the age of 83 that the grand old man of Maratha politics faces is to travel across the state and revive the NCP between July and April, March next year. 57% of the overall respondents in this Sea Water Snap poll said they thought Sharad Pawar could revive the NCP. I want to walk across and show you the responses amongst NCP voters. But as an aggregate, 57% of the respondents think that Sharad Pawar has what it takes to revive the NCP. Now, let's take a look at how many respondents uh, amongst NCP voters think that Sharad Pawar still has what it takes. Remember, health is against him, age is against him. Despite that, uh, three out of four NCP voters, 76% of the NCP voters think Sharad Pawar can revive the NCP. 18% say no. Shehzad Poonawala, from a BJP perspective, when you look at the numbers, the question that you'll have to ask yourself is, have you bet on the wrong horse? Rahul, good evening. Thank you for inviting me. It's always a delight to be with the double engine of India today. And I hope at least Rajdeep will not interrupt me when I make my opening comments because Rajdeep made a long comment. First of all, your survey is fundamentally flawed. Mm -hmm. The first question you should have asked is which is the real NCP? Has that question been asked? So perhaps even out of the people who consider NCP faction of Sharad Pawar as a faction which is legitimate, many of them are saying that Ajit Pawar is the actually the leader of that faction also. So I would suggest that first the questionnaire should have had who is the real NCP because it is not survey of India today, it is Sankhya, symbol and Siddhant that will decide which is the real NCP and by the way all of those three are with Ajit Pawar because you must have seen so which Siddhant are you talking about? How is the Siddhant? The Siddhant Rajitov? of NCP was to keep away from the foreign leadership of Sonia Gandhi. Wasn't it that the reason why 98 the NCP was formed? No, that's Rajdeep a Rajdeep would remember okay, this. Okay, that's a rhetorical Rahul, response Rahul, to a Rahul, question Rahul, Rahul, in in Okay, go Rahul, on. Uh, Rajdeep had a long opening statement. Mm -hmm. Let me at least okay. have half the time. Sure. Yes, sure. Rajdeep is being a disciplined boy. Now, see, let me ask you, LOP has come to this side who was the LOP of actually the entire MVA. Founding member Dilip Valse Patel on this side, the working president on this side, chief whip on this side, the Vidhak Dal on this side. Then how come you're saying that the, LO, no, the real NCP is Sharad Pawar? I think Shahzad uh, is Rahul, confusing. Rahul, you can't keep interrupting. Let no, me because you're confusing rhetoric for data. No, I'm the not data is data. telling its own story. Did your you ask answer... which is the real NCP? It does. The first no, no, question. which is the first question? Okay, you please Ajit read Pawar out which is the removed NCP. Sharad Pawar from the post of the national president of the NCP and appointed himself as the new party chief. According to you, who is the real NCP? It's question number three. Do your research ha, and then so respond. who is so the real NCP? Your response is to very weak on research. I will come to the question. It's a full 45-minute show. So let me give you... Let saying, me give so you my leave argument. the rhetoric aside, you talk argument. on facts because everything that you've said so far has been very flimsy on facts. No, no, it is not flimsy on facts. It, it is, is flimsy uh, on facts. Is the LOP working president, chief whip, founding member of the NCP This is on despite this that, Shahzad. This yeah. is despite that. This, this poll, remember, hmm. this is... If you want to just take a machine gun and start firing at the poll, you're welcome to do no, so. No, no, I'm not firing at all. You are purpose. being, you are unnecessarily is, being defensive. Rahul. I'm not being you're defensive. Being I'm saying, defensive let's stick to the and data. You don't even the want whole, to hear my full argument. No, no, because it's not based on facts. And what is not based on facts? Because it's based on rhetoric. Here's what the point is based on I'm rhetoric? making. In the, the fact that the chief whip and LOP is on this side. We try and get the data to do the talking. No, no, Rahul, you can't be judgmental about my argument. No, it's the whole position. It's the whole position of the show. Anyway, you've spoken now longer than last week. Rahul, I don't think you have allowed. Me your opening statement. You've you should spoken. be fair. It's because you no, were caught no, out you without kept facts. Interrupting me. You were you caught out without facts. Me. Without having seen the questions me. that have been asked, you're making it seem the questions that have been asked. You kept interrupting me. Let me have okay, 30 seconds. Why are you so agitated? I am not because you're not. See, I'm now trying, now let to, me I'm make trying my, to get you to stick to facts and data. You're giving But Rahul, your judgment on my statement can't be a fact. Because you've spoken for two minutes already. Let me speak. Let me answer a few questions Rajdeep has said. Rajdeep said, we have broken the party. The entire Shiv Sena is with us, the Bhagavati Gut is with Uddhav Sena. 
The entire NCP with is with us. The Bhagavati Gut is with Sharad Pawar. In fact, doing Bhagavat is with the DNA of Sharad Pawar. He did it in 1978 and in 1998. I have three specific questions. First of all, please tell me that hasn't the BJP been a hundred plus party from the last 10 years in Maharashtra? And which other party has been hundred plus party in Maharashtra for the last 30 years other than the BJP? So Mr. Rajiv like Sardesai's contention that we are breaking parties because we want to engineer our growth is absolutely not founded in fact. Point number one. Okay. Point number two. The reason why the NCP has come to a situation where the Parivar is aside and the party is with us is the same reason why it happened with the Shiv Sena. Okay. The party is with us, the Parivar is okay. aside because okay. they have not followed so the I principle. I want to go across to Priyanka Chaturvedi. On the data, I hope, uh, the data suggests that Ajit Pawar is less popular than Sharad Pawar, that the respondents in the survey seem to back Ajit pa Sharad Pawar much more than they back uh, Ajit Pawar. From your perspective, in the Udav Bala Sahib Thakre Shiv Sena, do you think that that's good news? That Pawar abhi zinda hai, the Sharad Pawar camp can still pull it off, even if it seems at this moment that Ajit Pawar has more MLAs with him? Firstly, it's not surprising at all. Just like it wasn't surprising that while MLAs went with uh, a certain traitor, which is Iknath Shinde, to form a government, an illegal, immoral, unconstitutional government, the cadre continues to back Uddhav Sahab Thakre. I would want to, I will not respond to the BJP spokesperson because he's sitting in Delhi studios, he does not know what's happening in Maharashtra, and I will not ha have him interject because I was not interjecting. But I will respond to Mr. Yashwan Deshmukh. Mr. Yashwan Deshmukh said, oh, NCP situation is very different from what uh, Shiv Sena's situation is. I would want to remind him, the last Dashera rally of Bala Sahib Thakre was where he uh, announced who his legacy carrier would be, who would become the next president of Shiv Sena. Shiv Sena that he had formed, the Shiv Sena that he had founded, along with his father. And he had handed over the charge to Uddhav Bala Sahib Thakre. I don't remember him saying Ekna Shinde in any part of his speech. If Mr. Yashwan Deshmukh ji remembers it, I'll be happy to correct myself. Secondly, I don't think Uda, uh, when, when he was handing over charge to Uddhav Sahab Thakre, did he say, oh, your lifelong alignment has to be with the Bharatiya Janata Party, even if they backstab you, even if they cheat you, even if they promise you something and they don't deliver, so you have to be with the, uh, uh, the, with, 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 with the, the Bharatiya Janata Party. Just like Bharatiya Janata Party is a political animal, a political party, which can align with the PDP in Kashmir, it can align with the JJP in Haryana, it can align with the Nationalist Congress Party or National Corrupt Party as uh, Pr Pradhan Mantri Narendra Modi said just a few days before uh, Ajit Pawar joined their camp, is exactly what we also happen to do. Why does he get a clean certificate, a clean sheet and oh, we are the uh, mo uh, political chanakyas of modern day? Well, what we did was something which was a politically astute thing to do. And we did this on the basis of a common minimum program. None of us, whether it's the Congress, whether it's the NCP, or whether it's the Shiv Sena, compromised on our ideology. You ask me about, uh, you know, uh, whatever they're doing on the uh, Uniform Civil Code, we support the Uniform Civil Code if it comes from the uh, perspective of justice and equality. You ask me about Ram Mandir, mm. yes, we continue to support the Ram Mandir. In fact, Shiv Sena was Not the first party with Udda Bala Sahib Thakra, the facts. chief minister, who announced a political donation okay. to the temple you construction. You didn't give me this so, kind okay, of you don't give me this thing but about you allowed her a long run to speak Shiv Sena nothing on facts. and what Bala Sahib Thakra ji founded. This is really unfair. We are a political party and we will make our choices okay. on the basis so I want to come of the now commitment to the third uh, question. at least one interjection to counter. Okay, very very quick quick interjection. Thank you, Rahul. I, I, I am I'm obliged with the kind of courtesy you're showing okay, to me. Want to make. Priyanka, very yeah. quick interjection. Uh, by the way, Rahul, here is the statement of Uddhav Thakre. He was the first one to label and send an tak report. I hope it's credible and a factual report, not mm -hmm. rhetoric. Sharad Pawar, Mahabhrashtek, oh, Kisano ki jameen le lete hai. There's also a statement of Bharat Sahib. He said that I will never go with Congress NCP. Main apni dukan band kar dunga, but I will not become another Congress party. This is on record. But those who don't understand Marathi, perhaps don't know this. <laughs> and also, it is a fact that Bala Sahib Thakre ji had called NCP a party of scoundrels. Okay. So this is, and on Savarkar, Rahul Gandhi abuses Savarkar. They want Bharat Ratna for Savarkar. So we know the compromise okay, of ideology. I want to come to the There's third no question, program. which is to do with this conspiracy theory in Maharashtra political circles that Sharad Pawar is somehow behind Ajit Pawar's rebellion. Now, many in Maharashtra seem to be convinced that this is the case. Let's see what respondents in this survey say. When people were asked, is senior Pawar behind Ajit Pawar's rebellion, 49% of the respondents said no, 
37% of the respondents said yes. If I look at how this plays out within NCP's voters, uh, 64 of the respondents in the survey said uh, that Sharad Pawar was not behind Ajit Pawar's rebellion amongst those who voted for the B uh, NCP. Only 20% of the NCP voters said that Sharad Pawar is behind this rebellion. I want to go across to our bureau chief in Maharashtra, Sahil Joshi. Sahil, as you track this data, which seems to suggest that four out of five NCP voters are on the side of Sharad Pawar and not Ajit Pawar. How do you think the sea voter uh, snap poll will play out in Maharashtra politics? Well, that's going to be a very important poll because I travelled with Sharad Pawar to Nasik uh, when I did his interview. And I could see that uh, people were still confused and they wanted to understand what is Sharad Pawar's position on this because this has happened before. Uh, and they, uh, you know, a lot of people say that finally the family will come together because this has never happened in the Pawar family before. So that's why this confusion was there. But slowly, now the people are very clear, specifically after Ajit Pawar made this attack on Sharad Pawar and, you know, he used certain sentences like, I'm not your son. That's why I did not get the chance. You know, all these things made people very, very clear that Sharad Pawar and Ajit Pawar are not on the same page. Uh, you know, this whole revolt is against Sharad Pawar. And most importantly, when uh, Ajit Pawar said in his, uh, uh, in his speech that uh, at the age of 83, you know, someday you will have to retire. Why don't you retire? You know, that is what is the sentence which has actually stuck with the people. And that's why we are seeing the data, what we are seeing. Uh, still, there will be a lot of time. But Raul, if you allow me, I would just like to put, uh, you know, some points with respect to uh, the earlier two slides as well, you know. Uh, most importantly, you know, why we, uh, why this has happened? Uh, uh, is, there is no doubt that the BJP is party number one. BJP is the only party since 1995 who have crossed the mark, 100 mark in Maharashtra Assembly. But what we are not seeing at this point of time, that despite trying twice, the BJP could not get the majority on its own. The BJP has realized, even in 2019, that on its own, to get more than 40 seats which they require for the Lok Sabha, to get the full majority in Maharashtra Assembly is not going to be possible. The BJP vote share is not going beyond 27%. The BJP originally was at the 17 to 18%. Because of 2014 Modi wave, they have uh, you know, managed to get 10% more vote share, but they are not, uh, they're, they're not moving further. So, 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 you know, they need to have at least 13 to 14% extra vote. And how are they going to get it? Now, please understand, despite having... Okay. Full, uh, I mean, Just Shiv Sena party with them. We didn't contest Despite all that, the seats. They the we third contested partner. in an alliance. The reason why they needed the third partner is because they realized that their shortfall of at least eight to ten percent vote at this point of time, and that's why. No, but does it Western just Maharashtra, aggregate? No, let me let me put that question no, Rahul, to Yashwan Deshmukh and, and, that and that we did one second, Rahul, because one second. it's not no one second. Rahul, just one second. Twice, we did not contest 288 seats in Maharashtra that's in 2019. Correct. We contested half those seats and we got 27 percent vote. Sahil is too senior for me to bring that fact out to him. Let's debate on facts, as you said, not on rhetoric. Okay, let's debate on facts. They fought Sahil, 2014 elections Sahil, on their own. Sir, I'm they talking about 2019. Let's just stick. Let's not keep changing the goalposts. Let's, the goal let's, the keep, let's stick to 2019. You spoke about 2019. We have not contested all the seats on 2019. Okay, I can't have everyone speaking at the same time. Okay, you made that point. Priyanka wants to make a quick interjection before I go across to Raj Deep. Yeah, Priyanka, very quickly, 20 seconds, please. So, 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 before, you know, you know, please don't. You know, 20 seconds before I go to, you know, what Sahil was saying, I just want to remind our our dear friend from BJP. PM Narendra Modi says NC and PDP dynastic rule has destroyed Jammu and Kashmir. So before he pulls out, you know, statements from Bala Sahib Thakre ji at one particular point in time, does not make that what, whatever he's saying right now justify whatever they're doing. But I just want to say something to Sahil. Sahil, 2019 was not the realization point for the BJP. It was 2014. In 2014, yeah. BJP and Shiv Sena contested separately and they realized that they cannot win a mandate on their own. And that is why they continue to use arithmetic over political alliances and continuing to have relationships of longest standing ally. And that is where they are faltering. And they will okay. pay a price for it in the coming 2024 elections. As Here's the point I want to make. Everyone okay. else, this is what the reality the, is and your uh, poll is suggesting it. Everyone's Rajdi playing emphasis on arithmetic. Polls are also about chemistry. You just bring the Eknath Shinde Sena, the Ajit Pawar NCP and the BJP together. It doesn't mean that on the ground the Karekartas and the voters will come together as one. We are already seeing so many polls 
Shinde Sena MLAs unwilling to trust the Ajit Pawar camp, not knowing how much they'll get if Ajit Pawar becomes finance minister. It's not just that 1 plus 1 is 3. 1 plus 1 plus 1 could very well end up 1.75 and not 3. Two very quick points first. First, a bit of historical perspective. For the last 30 odd years, Maharashtra has not thrown a single party government. You haven't had a majority government. The last was, I think, 1985. Since then, neither has the Congress, NCP, Shiv Sena or BJP crossed that magic 144 mark on their own. So, each of these parties has been looking for allies. You mentioned arithmetic, Rahul. What is the arithmetic showing? You've got the Congress now, plus a faction of the NCP, i.e. headed by Sharad Pawar, and the Uddhav Sena on one side. You've got a BJP, a faction of the Sena headed by uh, Mr. Shinde, and a faction of the NCP headed by Ajit Pawar on the other. You could argue that, they, as this poll uh, shows, it's still a situation of flux. I still think it's too early to predict which way will the NCP voter go, just as it's too, perhaps still not clear whether all the NCP, uh, the Shiv Sena voters, which way they will go. That will be tested next year. So, arithmetic is uncertain because you've got no, two large fronts. To some extent, it will get tested in the BMC elections. Yeah, but we don't know when those BMC elections, they may be held in October. Therefore, I think the chemistry is the important point. You see, we are focusing on arithmetic without recognizing as you rightly say that a poll is a mix of arithmetic and chemistry. This poll in terms of chemistry certainly shows that because Mr. Pawar is the much taller leader, therefore the NCP flock is attracted to him. Why is Ajit Pawar in all his public meetings and all NCP leaders in their posters using a life-size photograph of Sharad Pawar? The same Mr. Pawar who Ajit Pawar said should have retired at the age of 60. Why are you using an 82-year-old photograph? That one, That's eh? the question, right? Because, uh, you see, the point is, Bahasaheb Thakre is not alive. Hmm. Sharad Pawar is still there. Can I While he's one there, night? he perhaps has the ability to get a certain emotional appeal on his side. One Whether night. he can sustain it over 12 uh, months is still Just a big one question. Night. Uh, Rajdeep, all these people, when there was a show of strength of the MLAs, a majority of the MLAs came with Ajit Pawar. If Sharad Pawar's uh, presence is so overwhelming, these MLAs go to the people to get themselves elected. One second, please listen to me. How come they? One to second, respond. one second, one second. You are telling me that your survey is more definitive than the elected representatives of the people who okay. know the sentiment Let me put on the ground. Hey, 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 this is the problem. Rajdeep, now, please. Now, now Shazad, you ah. the point is, MLAs will go where they see power. The problem they are the, answerable to no, people. No, no, I'll tell you, the problem with the NCP, huh. unlike the Shiv Sena, Shiv Sena had an ideology. Maharashtra Nasmita, it had the ideology of Hindutva. NCP's ideology doesn't exist beyond power in a way that it's had power for 18 of the 23 years of its existence. It's raison d'etre. Rajdeep, you have sidestepped my question. Okay, okay. So, so, you have let me, let me put question. that question to Yashwan Deshmukh. BJP is not there. Yashwan Deshmukh Desh Desh should answer that question. Yashwan Deshmukh should answer that question. Yashwan Deshmukh should answer that question. Because the MLAs will have their own political calculation. You know, you've sampled a couple of thousand people and you've come up with a certain survey. The MLAs have their own calculation. They have their pulse on the ground. They obviously That's think it. that Ajit Pawar is stronger. Otherwise, they wouldn't be ditching Sharad Pawar in the way that they have. That's Shahzad's, uh, that's Shahzad's charge. The other thing is, if arithmetic is all that mattered, in Uttar Pradesh in 2019, Akhilesh and Benji fought on the same ticket. SP and BSP were together. If arithmetic is all that matters, that combination is unbeatable. But the BJP trounced them hollow because arithmetic is only a part of the equation. The rest of the political equation is determined by chemistry. Yashwan Deshmukh. Uh, well, Rahul, uh, I think uh, Sahil did touch that point and uh, I would just like to take that point forward. Mr. Uh, you know, Shahzad Punawala's party doesn't really need a vertical split of NCP, doesn't even need 100%, uh, uh, not at all. You know, the, the thing is stacked in the way that he needed literally a virtual split of Shir Sena 50-50, which has, by the way, MOTN numbers are showing that in January that has already happened. As far as NCP is concerned, BJP only needs one-fourth of the NCP base. That's it. To cross that threshold of 40%, which Sahil was mentioning, uh, you know, uh, in, in terms of NDA arithmetic. And so far, these numbers are showing they are getting more than that. What I feel, it is not a 50-50 split like Shiv Sena, but it is coming out two-third, one-third split, which is like every third NCP voter kind of likely to go uh, Ajit Pawar's way. And that is more than enough what, what Shahzad is looking for. No, so while However, that suits the BJP, how does that suit the political calculation of Ajit Pawar? He's made this 
gambit as well it does it you know, at some level it has to work for him otherwise this whole move backfires yeah of course there there are reservations among the bjp voters on this alliance as well it not everything is pink and okay. healthy so and let me come to that smoke. question let me come yeah. to that question one more question right now yes. one more oh, thing everybody wants to, to speak longer than we have time for today so let me come to the next question this is is the bjp right or wrong in taking ajit pawar into uh, its camp so here is the response to this question only 31% of the total respondents in this sea water survey said that the bjp is right 58% 6 out of 10 total respondents said no the bjp is wrong in taking ajit pawar to its camp amongst bjp voters the opinion is more split 47% saying bjp is right 43% saying it's wrong but as far as the overall court of public opinion in maharashtra is concerned 58% saying that this is wrong shahzad 30 seconds to respond to this 6 out of 10 respondents saying what you've done is wrong you know i think that first of all he has not he joined. doesn't like this poll is no, a galat no, din no. aa gaya it's not about that it is because it's conveniently changes its uh, principles you were few months ago the motn based on arithmetic of mba which had no chemistry on any ideological issue you were telling them full sweep of maharashtra at that time what was it chemistry sir a poll is a poll na it's not coming out of my pocket one second now you have to let me complete go my on, argument go on. because without that janta can't understand you just said that on the ground chemistry matters arithmetic doesn't matter just few months ago you were doing an entire survey only on arithmetic of three people who never been together coming together and sweeping maharashtra how come your principles keep changing according to your it. convenience and then you say no, it's no, a poll it so the poll like is saying this no, no, one this one kind of double standard should not be there first of all second no one second these are not double standards this statistical response based on data analytics in in the poll that's been put out this is what respondents no, no. in rahul, that survey are saying rahul one this second this is what rahul, respondents in the survey are rahul, saying rahul my can dear I, friend I, yes? one second you just you. said that just because the bjp ncp and shiv sena come together but that's not in the poll one that's second. my analysis Your based analysis. on the question exactly so let's separate the poll no, no, from no, the no. analysis you gave the analysis on yeah, it yeah, yeah yeah you said that this kind of chemistry it rahul, will work and um, arithmetic can't work yet your survey of mood of the nation on the basis of this arithmetic okay. coming together rahul, of mba gave them a full sweep in maharashtra please. just a few no, months ago how respond. is that possible no, one second. then why didn't you Sir, put this acha yes, then yes. in a filmy kind of way yashwan deshmukh shahzad puna wala saying aapki chemistry chemistry meri arithmetic chemistry nahi how does it work you know it can't work Thank in you for way. addressing this issue yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you must respond shahzad, to it shahzad actually shahzad understands the number very well and there are more more reasons for him to be happy than these numbers simply because he knows that uh, those for 43% of the bjp supporters who are saying it is wrong is still are going to vote for the bjp it's not that they are going to leave the bjp at any cost what the number which i am looking somehow very interesting rahul at two figures number one that about 25 to 33% of the ncp voters are somehow you know uh, approving of whatsoever is happening that is the number one uh, uh, which is important for me second thing half the maharashtra is still confused if it is handy work of sharad pawar that's a very critical piece of information rahul you know not about the shiv sena and the bjp voters even one third of the congress not and one really. third of the ncp voters are confused No, no. Thirty-six so, percent say Ajit Pawar. Shahid Pawar is behind exactly. Ajit Pawar, but forty-nine percent say half. The yeah, question, that's one third. The question whether it is it is with approval of Mr. Shahid Pawar. Forty-nine percent are saying no. Fifty-one percent are not very sure whether he has his hand in that. So what I'm simply trying to say Actually, can is I that something here, please. Actually, can I say something here, please? Yes. Priyanka is itching to get a word in. Let's give her a chance. Mr. Shahid Pawar. Okay. Are likely to give. that uh, so before one, four, before three, before three, three, mr yashwan deshmukh before mr yashwan deshmukh cast this person on sharad pawar ji and whether sharad pawar is a part of this decision or no i would want to know is narendra modi ji a part of this decision of taking ncp along a part of this decision making or no because there's no tweet that has come from him and secondly just 48 hours prior to this entire uh, cabinet expansion that happened uh, on a sunday uh, afternoon it was a party which was called a naturally corrupt alliance which has done which has a corruption as part of its dna which continues to do corruption and has done corruption worth 70000 crores so before uh, you know you cast this person on what sharad pawar ji is doing i think maybe you should actually ask questions of the prime minister of india whether okay. what Shazad, he said you want to respond to that is the prime minister on board is the prime minister on board with this alliance correct 
No, just no, just answer? a second, just a second thing, just a second point I'd like to make to oh, Mr. Yashwant Deshmukh himself. Mr. Yashwant Deshmukh said, oh, BJP just needs one-fourth of NCP. Maybe BJP needs arithmetically one-fourth of NCP. But anti-defection law works on its own. It is a law which the Supreme Court will look at. Will not look at what numbers okay. that okay. BJP is looking okay. for. Uh, it will look at uh, the Prime Minister on board. Yeah. 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 And I don't know how many MLAs we want to do this question every time. Once again, everyone has spoken. Just 20 seconds to Shehzad. And then we've got spokespersons from both sides of the NCP also with us on the show. I need to go to them as well. Very quickly. Uh, you know, 2015, uh, 29 September 2016, glad that Kapil Sharma has chosen to expose the rampant corruption that prevails in BJP Shiv Sena misgoverned BMC, Priyanka Chaturvedi. So I am assuming that the BMC, which is run by the Shiv Sena, by Uddhav Sena, is a corrupt one. She deleted the tweet later, but nonetheless, I'll okay, come, the come to 2023 I think that, look, and see the corruption uh, that's first, happening Madam, now. First, Madam Parliamentarian you, should tell us Shazad, that did the 70,000 crore ghotala take Mumbai. place under the Congress NCP government? Did she okay, agree with okay, that? Okay, I have a lot of data to cover. I'll, I'll get sidetracked like this. Rajdeep, you want to make yeah, a quick point? Before yes. I go, you know, just to say to our viewers, <laughs> and therefore sometimes data can be misleading. The only reason for it being Maharashtra's map is such that votes are concentrated. The battle in Vidarbha, for example, is Congress versus BJP. The battle in Western Maharashtra has been NCP versus BJP. The battle in Konkan has been Shiv Sena versus Congress. The battle in Marathwada is a very different battle again. So, they, you know, tr unless there is a direct vote transfer from one of the sides that has broken away to the other, it's not going to be easy to read Maharashtra, which is why I said don't get obsessed with arithmetic. What the BJP has succeeded in doing is even the arithmetic which seemed to be heavily weighted towards the Mahagadbandan till a month ago. Now you've got two factions away. Therefore, as I said, you've got two even players in terms of arithmetic. It will be chemistry that will decide. Will a Shiv Sena voter vote for a Congress candidate in Konkan or Mumbai? Will an NCP voter vote for a BJP no, uh, uh, I, candidate in Western Maharashtra? You know, and how will you distribute seats? I, I think These are the real I, I challenges. Will a Uddha I voter Uddha vote for Congress party? That's what I asked. Yes. You, you, did you hear me what I, I said? I am saying that. I said that. But, but that question should have been asked when you did the first pool of the nation survey. I think Uttar Pradesh 2019 shows that just coming together by itself is not enough. You need to ensure that there is chemistry between SP and BSP for votes to transfer from one to another. That is very important. Mahesh Tapse is a spokesperson of the Sharad Pawar camp of the NCP. Bridge Mohan Srivastava is a spokesperson of the Ajit Pawar camp of the NCP. We haven't had an opportunity to go to Mahesh Tapse till now and for that my apologies. But you've had good data. The data says public sympathy is with Sharad Pawar. The flip side to this is Rajdeep's contention that this may be the case now. Bhagwan jane ki ye march april lag rahega ki nahi. Well, good evening all panelists and all viewers. I thank you for this survey and uh, let me tell you... Uh, like, no, you don't have uh, to thank us for the survey. We are just doing our job, sir. <laughs> well, like Sahil just mentioned that he was on tour to Nasik along with the entourage of Pawarsa and he saw the overwhelming response that Pawarsa was getting across the road. We were there in Thane and uh, on road to Nasik. And let me tell you, see, the leaders may have been weaned away by the BGP, but the electorate is intact, the cadre is intact, the youth is intact, the Mahila is intact. So are the voters who have been traditionally voting for power sub for his policies, for his policy of inclusiveness. And that is the reason we are very confident that power sub will sail through this. This is a momentary crisis. As an, see, now if you just go to Yeshwandra Chavan Center, uh, today there is a crowd of almost 5-700 people. People from across districts, across talukas are coming with new leadership. They are projecting themselves as the future MLAs, future Jilla Parishad members, future Panchayat Samiti members, future mayors and you know councillors of the city corporation. So that's how new leadership has started coming okay. in. So Braj Mohan Srivastava is the national secretary of the Ajit Pawar faction of uh, the NCP. And what this uh, sea voter data suggests is that 65.7% of the overall respondents and 79.3% of NCP voters think Sharad Pawar asli NCP hain, aap hain Ajit Pawar ke saath. Data to bata raha hai ki NCP ke voters hain Sharad Pawar ke saath, Ajit Pawar ke saath nahi hai sir wo. Kahi aap gal galat nao mein to nahi sawar ho gai. Adekhi, Ms. Pamela, mein ye baat kehna chahata hoon ki, chunki Adhani Sharad Pawar ji, is party ke 
जन्म जाता है तो आज अभी लोगों तक चूंकि पूरी बात नहीं पहुंची है तो ऐसा लगता है जैसे कि एक कोई अलग पार्टी बनाई गई मैं आपको स्पष्ट करना चाहता हूं कि राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस पार्टी वही है राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस पार्टी का आज का जो नेतृत्व है वो आदरणीय अजीत पवार साहब के साथ काम कर रहा है इतनी सी बात है मैं सोचता हूँ ये आने वाले दिनों में जब ये स्थिति स्पष्ट होगी सारी बातें जब लोगों के सामने आएंगी तो जो चीज अभी चल रही है कहीं ना कहीं उस वो स्पष्ट जब होगी तो शायद ये जो आंकड़े अभी सर्वे के हैं वो बदल जाएंगे पर ब्रजमोहन जी जब ये सवाल पूछा गया कि क्या शरद पवार तिरासी की उम्र में पार्टी को रिवाइव कर पाएंगे तब छप्पन दशमलव नौ परसेंट रिस्पॉन्डेंट्स ने कहा फिफ्टी सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट रिस्पॉन्डेंट्स ने कहा कि शरद पवार रिवाइव कर पाएंगे और एनसीपी के वोटर्स के बीच में सेवेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट फोर परसेंट रिस्पॉन्डेंट्स ने कहा कि शरद पवार एनसीपी को रिवाइव कर पाएंगे उनको लग नहीं एन के वोटर्स को लग रहा है कि शरद पवार में उम्र के बावजूद ज्यादा दम है जब आप तुलना करते हैं अजीत पवार से देखिए कि मैं इस मुद्दे पे आदरणीय शरद पवार जी का जो व्यक्तित्व है वो सबों को मालूम है मैं उस पर कोई बात नहीं कहना चाहता हूँ लेकिन मैं ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि जो वर्तमान राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस पार्टी का नेतृत्व है अजीत दादा पवार और प्रफुल भाई पटेल के नेतृत्व में हम लोग भी जनता के बीच में जब अपनी बात को रखेंगे स्पष्ट तरीके से तो लोगों को हकीकत पता लगेगी और मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि जो राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस पार्टी का बैनर और जो सिम्बॉल है उसके आधार पर हम जनता के बीच में जाकर अपनी बात को कह पाएंगे और जो अभी सर्वे का आंकड़ा जो बता रहा है इसमें कुछ ना कुछ परिवर्तन निश्चित रूप से आए पर सर अलायंस में केमिस्ट्री बिठाने में भी तो दिक्कत आ रही कल रात भर शिंदे सेना के विधायक चीफ मिनिस्टर से बात कर रहे थे चीफ मिनिस्टर को ठंडा करने की कोशिश कर रहे थे पोर्टफोलियो अब तक बट नहीं पाए अजीत पवार फाइनेंस चाहते हैं शिंदे सेना के एम एल को लग रहा है अगर फाइनेंस मिल गया तो हमें कोई रिसोर्स एलोकेशन नहीं होगा तो आप तो अभी फील्ड प्लेसमेंट भी नहीं कर पा रहे हैं ना आप कप्तान तो आपने अनाउंस कर दिया लेकिन आप फील्ड प्लेसमेंट ही सेट नहीं कर पा रहे हैं अभी तक नहीं अभी ये मैच अभी शुरू ही कहा हुआ है ये तो अभी बिल्कुल शुरुआत है अभी तो ये कहिए कि फील्ड में अभी तो पोजीशनिंग ली जा रही है अभी टाइम लगेगा इसमें बहुत जल्दी किसी प्रकार इसका कोई निर्णय लेना या कोई बहुत जल्दी प्रोडक्शन करना शायद ठीक नहीं होगा और शुरुआत में इस ढंग की परेशान इस ढंग के मुद्दे सामने आते हैं पर चूंकि लीडरशिप बहुत मेच्योर है चाहे वो आदरणीय देवेंद्र फडनवीस साहब हों अजीत दादा पवार हों चाहे एक शिंदे साहब हों ये बहुत मेच्योर पॉलिटिशियन से तो बैठ के इसका रास्ता निकल आएगा मैं नहीं समझता चूंकि आप क्रिकेट का एग्जाम्पल दे रहे हैं कैन आई जस्ट से इट सीम्स लाइक each player wants to stand on his own chosen position in the field they're not necessarily but, listening to the captain they've said mujhe slip pe khada but, hona hai mujhe cover mein khada hona hai wo wahi ja ke khade ho rahe captain bol raha hai ab yahan jao yahan jao wahan pe jaane ki koi taiyari nahi bhai you're completely right analysis okay. so, let me ask, just have 30 seconds now yes. just 30 seconds yes in 2014 the ncp came to its lowest tally of 41 seats at that time the shiv sena did not support us they were outside for 6 months sharad pawar had supported us and our government was formed and yet said it was in the interest of maharashtra then 2017 they tried to form the government with us by saying take shiv sena out and this was all sharad pawar was doing and by 2019 because they seemed seemed to be closer to us they got 53 seats let's not underestimate the fact that the ncp coming closer to the bjp has actually been their natural tendency okay. so it is not actually okay. what, what, what could the change Congress, yashwan deshmukh there has been a change now in the march april mind. how could things change what would you be looking out for when you do the mood of the nation in august for india today i think rahul the biggest change would be the chemistry equations as shahza was mentioning uh, on the ticket distribution and other things because i see two different trends from the data congress voters are very much likely to vote for uddhav thakre candidate to defeat bjp they don't have any issue ncp voters like rajdeep said they don't have ideological problem they will be more than happy more or less to vote for the bjp candidate what i see a problem is clear chemistry problem on two voters number one shiv sena voters are absolutely i believe unlikely to vote for a congress candidate and similarly bjp voters are unlikely vote for an ncp candidate however the problem for mpa would be bigger because number of seats that congress would be contesting would be much bigger than the contest number of seats that ncp would be contesting within the nda so okay. out and out in chemistry this is going to have big big problem uh, for sahil NBA 20 seconds will they be able to form their cabinet uh, allocate portfolios or do you think this will stay stuck in the way that it has is that getting resolved or not 
Well, it will need to be resolved because Ajit Pawar now is in Delhi and he is going to sort it out with uh, the BJP top brass and they will have to sort it out to at least present to the people that, you know, we are naturally together. Most importantly, there is a lot of time left yet, you know, uh, at, least a, uh, at least a year left uh, for the Lok Sabha elections. My, my, my analysis is that, you know, it all depends on the public perception. If they, if they, if they, you know, if they perceive that uh, Sharad Pawar and Uddhav Thakri have come together and there is no option other than the Congress to vote for, then it will be a different situation. But on the other hand, uh, the way Devendra Fadnavis told his MLAs the day when, uh, you know, in Mumbai they had a meeting and he explained his MLAs that why Ajit Pawar had to be part of the, this Mahayuti, part of the NDA, uh, despite being ideologically different, is because the Lok Sabha elections are uh, closer and we have to get more than 40 seats in Maharashtra. If they could manage to explain that to the BJP voters, then that vote transformation uh, should but happen. But there's a to difference the in explaining well. that so to the BJP the MLAs and ministers down to the and, and, that's and what trying the to explain that to the voters, where it's a tougher ask. But you're right that there is a year to go and therefore you have the opportunity to take your message out to the people and try and win their support. For the time being, I want to thank our guests for joining us. Uh, we'll slip into a quick break. When we come back, horrific double murder shocks Bengaluru. Former employee kills managing director of a tech startup. Details coming up on the other side. Monsoon deluge and floods have turned the spotlight once again on auto insurance with the general public in anguish over their vehicles going under and in some cases even being washed away by floods. While motor insurance generally covers damage uh, caused to vehicles due to natural disasters, there are certain exclusions and limitations which may apply. Joining us are Money Today editor Tina Jen Korshal to explain the fine print. Uh, Tina, what expenses are not covered by motor insurance policies in the event of uh, vehicle damage during monsoon season? It is important to note that a comprehensive motor insurance policy is needed to protect your uh, vehicle from any damage during flooding. A comprehensive motor insurance policy consists of own damage plus uh, third party liability cover. So if you have only third party liability cover, your policy might not be enough to cover any damage caused to engine or any damage caused due to floods. And how does one ensure comprehensive coverage of vehicles during the monsoon season? Another important point is to have adequate add-on covers. For example, you should have engine protection cover. The advantage of this cover is that if your engine gets damaged due to water seepage during flood, this add-on cover will provide you adequate insurance cover. The second important point uh, to be noted is you should have zero depreciation policy as it pays you the entire claim amount without any deduction. So if you take into consideration these factors, your, uh, your car will be insured against damages in the monsoon season.
Earlier on board the news track, a managing director and a chief executive of a tech startup were stabbed to death by an ex-employee. The accused attacked them with swords and knives. Police say the former employee held a grudge against his bosses and so he murdered them. This man with a bone and skull in hand is Joker Felix. A man who is now behind bars for a gruesome double murder in Bengaluru. He stabbed two men to death mercilessly in their office, all over a petty professional rivalry. This is a tale of two rival companies, turning into a tale of two murders. The victims Panindra Subramania and Vinu Kumar, the MD and CEO of their company Aeronix, went to work on Tuesday and never came home. According to the cops, at 4 p.m. on Tuesday, Joker Felix and two of his aides entered the Aeronix office and entered the MD Fanindra's room. They then attacked him, with Felix slashing him with a sword. Seeing the shocking crime, the CEO Vinu Kumar intervened but was then attacked with a knife that the accused were carrying with them. The three then escaped from the back door. What was the reason for this merciless display of violence? Murder by knife is personal. They wanted this to hurt. According to police, Joker Felix previously worked with murder victims Panindra and Vinu. The victims left and started their own organization and reportedly took most of the customers and employees with them, angering Felix. Joker Felix and accomplices Vinay Reddy and Santosh Srinivasa are now in police custody. Pride, vengeance and professional rivalry caused these two men their lives. And the actions of this rather unstable internet influencer has landed him behind bars. With Anaga Keshav, Bureau Report, India Today. This is where I wrap up the news track tonight. For your time and your trust, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you at 8pm tomorrow evening. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye, good night. <laughs>
and possibility of failure exists. But for the time being, ISRO is hopeful for a success like its first moon mission. Bureau Report, India Today. Stock of the day, clearly on the Nifty at least, is Reliance Industries. Uh, the shares are up over 4% today. They've hit 52-week high levels. Now, this is as a reaction as the company has announced its fixing of the record date for the demerger of the financial services arm. Now, as part of the plan, the Reliance Industries shareholders will get one share of GeoFinancial for every one share that they hold of Reliance Industries. I wanted to ask you, what are you making of uh, this GeoFinancial services business? How will it really play out? And what kind of value and locking can it really lead to for the Reliance Industries? shareholders no i believe that there will be concentrated uh, approach to the geo financial business because it is no more part of the uh, you know the reliance entire uh, conglomerate and being uh, you know listed separately i think it will provide another stock in the financial services to the investors at large who have, who have not been holders of reliance and that, to my mind, is expected to drive the outperformance of the stock. We expect the stock to do very well and, uh, you know, uh, consolidate gains as it goes ahead. Right. You did say that the stock is expected to do well. Now, remember, the stock is already up about 24% from its lowest level this year. That was hit on March 24th. Uh, of around 2200 and thereabout and from that time a 24% surge already uh, how much more upside do you see on the reliance industry stock see i you know look at it this way you know we've seen dearth of information coming from the reliance tables on any corporate action and with this is the first where geo financial services is being uh, you know, spawned out into a new baby we will see multiple new uh, disclosures coming in so you know Reliance Retail is there, uh, the Geo IPO can come in and, uh, you know, we could also see a lot of uh, news flow on the green energy side. So I believe that the corporate actions will pick up frequency now and uh, that is expected to keep the stock firm and uh, seek higher levels. 3,000, 3,100 levels. By when do you see Reliance Industries achieving these kind of levels? <laughs> So it could take a little more time than we expect, but, uh, you know, difficult to put a finger on that, but I definitely sure. think that it could happen uh, by March itself. forecast now. Delhi, maximum 37 and minimum 27 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 30 and minimum 26 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 34 and minimum 27 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 27 and minimum 21 degrees. Chennai, maximum 33 and minimum 26 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 32 and minimum 23 degrees.
को प्रेजेंटेड बाय सार हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस द हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस स्पेशलिस्ट को प्रेजेंटेड बाय जेके टायर रेंजर सीरीज स्टे वाइल्ड एट हार्ट को पावर्ड बाय वॉच ओ ओ टी टी सुपर एप वन है तो डन है को पावर्ड बाय द न्यू किया सेल्टोस द बैड एस रीबॉन को पावर्ड बाय सेरा दिस इज योर स्पेस प्ले इट योर वे Good evening hello and welcome you are with the news today your prime time destination news news makers talking points the big talking point we'll be bringing you the data on the oft spoken about crime politics nexus in the country just how many of our legislators have serious criminal records and how do you free politics from crime we'll talk about that also we'll have a showdown over the jain monks murder in karnataka Why is politics being played out over a crime? But first, as always, it's time for the nine headlines at nine tonight. National capital on flood alert as Yamuna water level breaches all-time high for the first time in 45 years. Chief Minister K. J. Wal holds an emergency meeting in Delhi. Section 144 imposed in flood-prone areas as mass evacuation begins. The BJP deploys a fact-finding team in Bengal amidst panchayat poll violence targets the Bengal chief minister over deaths Mamta Banerjee hits back blames the BJP for engineering violence as part she says of a conspiracy India today accesses electoral watchdog association for democratic reforms report on crime politician nexus report finds that over 44% MLAs in India have a criminal case lodged against them 28% serious criminal charges Former Karnataka Chief Minister Basavraj Bomai leads a protest over the Jain seer's murder claims for failing law and order situation under Sidaramaiah government BJP demands a CBI probe Congress says CBI playing politics with the monks death CEO and MD of Bengaluru startup tech firm hacked to death double murder accused Sabarish also known as Joker Felix arrested employees killed over a professional rivalry Four railways employees suspended for not being alert to prevent the Balasore train tragedy this after CBI earlier arrested three railway employees over alleged negligence. Paris gears up for Prime Minister Modi's visit mega defense deals on the cards Indian tri service contingent ready to march during Bastille day parade. India's retail inflation jumps to a 3 month high of 4.81% in June industrial production growth rose to 5.2% in May up from 4.2% in April one of the biggest names in european literature milan kundera has died in paris at the age of 94 best known for his 84 novel the unbearable lightness of being But to the big story that's breaking this evening the national capital region in and around Delhi now facing a major threat of floods with the Yamuna water levels breaching the dangerous mark and at the highest level after 45 years an all time high the previous highest was way back in 1978 the Delhi chief minister has now chaired an emergency meeting and uh, has appealed for people to vacate low lying areas section 144 has been imposed in delhi's flood prone area so the big story is coming from delhi my colleague moshmi singh is right there tracking that mass evacuation that's taking place moshmi how many people are being evacuated how serious is the situation Right Rajdeep even in the uh, dark of the night you can see that we are here at uh, nursery pushta which is uh, in the middle of mayur vihar and this is uh, the rescue operations that are on in uh, full swing at the ndrf the local administration right here and people are uh, you know uh, stranded in hundreds uh, we are told uh, since morning the rescue operations have been on the levels of water that you see there was no water here till the afternoon it started to you know climb up and now till this stretch 
you can see that the water levels have uh, gone really up and uh, with uh, with uh, for the for past 42 year old record being broken you know the next 24 hours we are told is going to be very crucial the weather forecast doesn't look really good and that's why you know uh, we've seen that the delhi government uh, with uh, in the leadership of arvind kejriwal called a emergency meeting and i i, I do believe i checked with the ndrf officials these rescue measures will continue uh, many of these uh, personals have been working throughout the day in the heat uh, getting 20 passengers at one point of time you know it's not an easy ask and these are several points across the 25 kilometer stretch of yamuna so uh, we will we will uh, we will have to wait and see what the water levels are but the predictions don't look really good and with the 207.89 mark already reached uh, you know the banks of yamuna uh, have been evacuated those are scenes that are coming in at the moment. Uh, Moshmi Singh reporting there on the rescue efforts taking place at the, along the banks of the Yamuna. Appreciate your joining us on the moment. Remember, incessant rains, flash floods, landslides have ravaged large parts of North India, particularly the state of Himachal Pradesh. Several locals, tourists still stranded amidst the massive damage to roads and infrastructure. India Today's Preeti Chaudhary now brings you the plight of the citizens who are caught in the floods. It's our other ground report tonight. After the deluge comes the challenge of providing relief. Hundreds stranded and suffering are now gearing up for an arduous journey to a safe space. With more than 1,200 roads out of service, the magnitude of the task ahead is evident. So that's part of the hotel that has been completely swept away uh, en route uh, from Kullu to Manali. If you see right there, that is where the road had caved in, right there at the end. And from there on, if you can see everybody, a steady stream of those wanting to go back home or reach medical emergency situations as well. Uh, we did see one girl, uh, a terrible stomachache. And there's no way because Manali, the whole infrastructure has apparently collapsed. They have to bring anyone who's sick to Kulu. And there's just no way of getting there because at this side is where the road is caved in. Uh, the administration says that side is, uh, you know, they've been able to open out a, a road, but that's witnessing traffic jams of over 11 hours straight up. Wading through flooded waters, stung by a snake, and with a drip attached, a woman was spotted trying to make her way to a nearby hospital. I mean, this is the fact that you can come to the pool, you can go to the bridge, and then you can go to the bridge, or you can go to the bridge, or you can go to the bridge. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, the road block is blocked, and you can come to the bridge. A pregnant woman, displaced by her unprecedented floods, was forced to walk till the nearest hospital in order to receive medical care. Desperate father carries a sick daughter on his shoulder, wading for hours through the flood waters to reach the nearest hospital. Many villages washed away, many others cut off totally. People in need of medical care are struggling to get relief. A return to normal life is a long road ahead. With Preeti Chaudhary in Manali, Bureau Report, India Today. Thoughts and prayers with the people of Himachal Pradesh and those along the Yamuna River here in the national capital. Let's turn from there to our exclusive report today. India Today has accessed the latest study by the Association for Democratic Reforms that once again throws light on the crime politics nexus in the country. 
According to the ADR study, 1,777 of the 4,001 sitting MLAs in the country, or 44% of our MLAs, have criminal cases against them. Now, the serious view is that 28% are booked in serious criminal cases, which carry five or more years in jail as punishment. Let me repeat that. 28% of our MLAs are booked in cases which carry five or more years in jail as punishment. 47 MLAs in the country at the moment are booked for murder cases. 181 face attempt to murder cases. 14 MLAs face rape cases. And 114 of our MLAs, my friends, have been booked for crime against women. 337 of them are BJP, the largest MLA group, which is 25% of their total number, are booked in cases with five or more years in jail. The Congress is 194 MLAs or 26%, so higher than the BJP in percentage terms of their MLAs are booked in cases with five or more years in jail. 42 to 76% MLAs in varying numbers of DMK, TMC, AAP, YSRCP, SP, BRS, RJD, CPM, BJD are booked in criminal cases. Different proportions uh, depending on those parties, but a large number of the MLAs from these parties too. 32 to 43% MLAs of DMK, TMC, AAP, YSRCP, SP, BRS, RJD, CPM, BJD face serious criminal cases. So that's above the average with five years jail terms. 43% of our Lok Sabha MPs, of our MPs, my friends, have criminal cases against them as per the ADR report. Lok Sabha MPs with criminal cases, serious ones, are up from 22% in 2004 to now 43%, sorry, those with criminal cases are up from 22% in 2002 to 43%. Candidates with criminal backgrounds, listen to this carefully, have 15% more chance of winning than candidates with clean records. Candidates with clean records have just a 4.7% chance of winning in this country. It clearly shows that little has changed, in fact, it's got worse. I repeat that main number, 28% of all MLAs in this country are facing criminal cases, serious ones that could lead to jail terms of five years and more murder and rape along them. I want to raise the question tonight, why is our politics highly criminalized? Why is it getting worse? How does one break this nexus? Will tougher laws do or is that not enough? I am joined by Jagdeep Chokar, one of the founding members of ADR, the group that is bringing out this report in a couple of days, which we've just accessed. Dr. S.Y. Qureshi is former Chief Election Commissioner, Sayyid Zafar Islam, BJP spokesperson, and Madhu Yakshagaut, the Congress's spokesperson. Appreciate all of you joining us. Jagdeep Chokar, give us a sense of what this report tells you. Have things got worse? 28% of our MLAs have serious criminal cases against them. 43% of our Lok Sabha MPs have criminal cases against them. Yes, Rajdeep, things have indeed got worse. We have been tracking this uh, data for the last 20 plus years. And as you said, in 2004, there were 22% members of the Lok Sabha mm -hmm. who had self-declared criminal cases against them. This number has gone up to 43% in 2019. There have been a consistent increase mm -hmm. in this number. Uh, the only advantage for our tracking this number is we continue to know every four or five years how bad are we. Uh, there has been no impact because political parties believe mm -hmm. that giving tickets to candidates who are winnable candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, the primary factor in giving tickets is winnability. Whether that winnability is uh, achieved on the basis of money or muscle or crime, uh, it doesn't really matter. The factor of working for the people of the constituency is perhaps the last one to be considered. It is the desire for political parties to win more and more seats right. at any cost 
and, and, and when the you lack say, of internal democracy in political parties. When you say, uh, uh, when your survey says candidates with, the where candidates with clean record have only a 4.7% chance of winning, <clears throat> candidates with criminal <clears throat> records have a 15% higher chance, or are they more likely to win compared to a candidate with clean record? Am I correct? They have a higher chance because they spend money like water. Mm -hmm. And illegal money, unaccounted money is spent on elections and the limits fixed by the government through the election commission are an eyewash. Nobody bothers about them. Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of things happen which are under the radar, mm -hmm. although everybody knows about it. The amount of cash uh, seized by the election commission increases in every election. You know, uh, and unless either we make a law, mm -hmm. either we make a law that a person with a serious criminal charge in which charges have been framed and the case has been registered one year before voting, etc., unless we bar candidates with serious criminal cases from contesting, or we introduce internal democracy in political parties, or both, this is the only way to control this. But unfortunately, I do not see political parties agreeing to this, at least in my lifetime. Let me ask the former Chief Election Commissioner then, Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, whether the Election Commission can step in. It seems as a citizen that the Election Commission, sir, is powerless. I've been tracking this like ADR for years. It's getting worse. The Election Commission claims that they have managed to ensure that the muscle power of booth capturing which used to exist in the 80s in particular in states like Bihar has ended. We've seen violence in Bengal but money power and criminality. These are people with murder and rape charges which can have conviction more than five years. Some of them when we call them up say look these are being fixed by our political rivals but be that as it may should the election commission is the election commission powerless to stop this? Is it as Mr. Choker says all about internal democracy? Parties have to stop choosing such candidates and we the voters have to stop electing them. Well, uh, Rajdeep, election commission's role has been very limited. In fact, uh, election commission uh, has been joining voice with the uh, uh, Mr. Jagdeep Chokar for the last so many years, we want to stop criminalization, mm -hmm. but it is not in our hand. They have to be debarred from contesting legally, and which has been the demand of ADR and which has been the demand of uh, Election Commission of India also. And Election Commission had come up with a formulation uh, the, because the defense of the, the political parties was that the law of the land uh, presumes that you are innocent till convicted. Now, uh, fair enough. So, but election commission had this formulation that only heinous offences, because mm -hmm. another defence uh, parties used to make was that sometimes uh, false political cases are registered. So our response was that only heinous offences which carry imprisonment of five years mm -hmm. uh, that should that should be considered. Secondly, the case should have been registered at least. Uh, a year uh, in advance, uh, mm -hmm. a year before the election. And thirdly, which is most important, a court of law should have framed the charges. Now, law court, which we, in this case, heinous offences, will be not less than district and session court, which, uh, and if they frame the charges, they are mm -hmm. a neutral authority. So that should be accepted and they should be debarred. But again, uh, the, the presumption of innocence is again and again repeated. I have a counter question which I have asked repeatedly in the presence of uh, judges and jurists and, uh, uh, and experts, but uh, nobody has been able to answer this. And I will repeat that question to you, that there are 4 lakh prisoners uh, uh, in Indian jails today, of which 70% are under trial. That means not yet convicted, that means they are innocent, yet you have taken away four of their fundamental rights. Four fundamental rights, right to liberty, freedom of movement, freedom of occupation, and right to dignity. If you can take away a fundamental right within the ambit of law, which you always quote, well, a right to contest is not even a constitutional right. It's not a fundamental right, it's a statutory right. It can surely be suspended. So that is one thing. Secondly, the, you mentioned the winnability thing. You know, we need to see the, why is it that they, they win because voters who have to uh, live with that candidate after the election commission comes and goes, then they have to live in the same constituency and they are scared. 
So, but which I, is why the, the but they, I want to get this right. Yeah. Are you saying that if the offence, you know, at the moment you have to wait for a conviction? As we've seen with Rahul Gandhi, he's got disqualified for criminal defamation because the conviction is sentences him to two years. Are you saying that the moment prima facie charges are established of a serious nature, especially rape and murder, that candidate must be immediately disqualified? His he cannot contest, suspended. If a charge sheet is filed, am I correct? Pending conviction? Yeah. Yeah, you know, our understanding is that uh, debarring candidates from contesting uh, and which uh, we say that only on con uh, conviction uh, for heinous offences, five years or more. Uh, less than that, we take it as, uh, you know, political vendetta and mm -hmm. others that we are not even considering. And as uh, Professor Choker pointed out, uh, almost 80% cases are serious criminal uh, offences which carry more than five years. So, uh, uh, by the way, Supreme Court uh, in 2014 took an alternative route, which is also uh, a good route to take, at least expeditious disposal of uh, cases pending against the politicians. And they asked all the courts in the country that they should take up uh, these cases on okay. priority and decide within a year. And in case they're not able to do so, they should report to the Chief Justice. Okay, but now, we would like to know what has been the follow-up. I don't think it has been followed up very effectively. Okay, but what you're saying is immediately if charges of a serious nature are confirmed, prima facie in a charge sheet, suspend that person's right to contest. Do you agree with that, Syed Zafar Islam? You know, the fact is, both BJP and Congress, this is one debate where both of you are deeply neck deep in giving tickets to people who have these serious criminal charges. 24% of the BJP's MLAs, 26% of the Congress's MLAs. Is the BJP willing to accept what uh, Dr. Qureshi says? Moment charges of a serious nature, murder, rape, that you will not, you will suspend the, uh, the, the right to contest of that individual or, uh, or, or uh, ask him to give up his MLA seat. Is any party willing to do that in this country? Rajdeep, let me respond to you. First of all, it's a very peculiar situation. You have a situation where political parties and uh, have issues to deal with when you have a uh, when you have a, a team which is working on the ground. You, you have, they have recommended a particular name because his popularity is there, variability criteria is there, and of course you have to declare some uh, pending cases against you against the person, but is not convicted. Law of the land, as Mr. Qureshi and Jagdish Kuchar has all rightly said, that till one is one is convicted, you can you cannot uh, debar him from contesting. Society as as a whole is also responsible. Political parties are also responsible, but everyone is responsible. You can't hold one uh, only political party responsible for this. If society wants to clean up this this issue, they can ensure that they will not vote for such person who has a criminal background. Sir, sir, don't put it on us. Sir, it. don't blame no, us, the voters. No, just, I am just, asking you simply. It, sir, don't blame us, no, no, the voters. It, if it, there is a charge a, sheet it, in a rape case, if I am charged of rape uh, or I am charged of murder... Every time you... Oh, 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 I have heard your question. Have some patience, na. Why you are jumping unnecessarily? When I am responding to you, I am coming to that. Allow me to complete. Mm -hmm. I have heard your question. All I am trying to tell you that it is not only political party which is responsible. Society also has to be sensitive about it, that people who have some criminal background, because pol a political party alone cannot, under no circumstances, will be able to address this concern alone. Mm -hmm. The society has to uh, uh, has to demonstrate its, its, its uh, weight towards it and ensure that this is being addressed by the political parties. Also, as Mr. Mr. Qureshi has rightly pointed out, that the best solution is that there should be a separate court or there should be some arrangement as Supreme Court has uh, suggested right. that this should be expedited. All the pe pending cases against the okay, politicians so you're, you're, should be you're, you're, you're done away with. In you're at least year. accepting that recommendation that there should be these cases fast-tracked. Within a year, you decide. Madhu Yakshagaur, what yes. is the Congress's position on that? The fact is, I'm now talking of serious cases. You have your own the leader who's been disqualified for criminal defamation. But imagine we still have MLAs with murder charges, rape charges, who continue to be MLAs and MPs in this country because they are not convicted. Yes, Rajdeep. One, the as uh, Mr. Qureshi has mentioned, 
the law which is very clear until you proven guilty you are innocent mm -hmm. supreme court has initiated these cases to be disposed of on uh, politicians within a year what i'm trying to say here i think i read once the mv kamath has written the people get what they deserve it is a, a people's responsibility our season a developing democracy uh, rajdeep when i was living in us i've, I've seen that when in a democratic party president a sitting senator withdrawn from the contest when he was not declared where two watches which is received so that kind of a transparency has to be there and people also have to be like i appreciate the adr no, sir, don't Mr. blame Joker the voters sir please don't blame the voters expose the people politicians with a criminal record no what i'm trying to say no no please allow me a minute after yes. half minute i answer yeah, please Rajdeep. go ahead it is uh, we appreciate the adr educating the people or exposing the politicians with a criminal record congress has a track record taking action on whether it is cabinet minister or chief minister when the corruptions leveled against them they removed from the post until the investigation going on whereas bjp came to power and it is shown as if like kahunga kane bhi deunga aur wo bhi ved roop se ved roop se kanun ke dariye mein rakh kar khaunga so which bjp promised a transparency government and clean government which their money is playing a very key role in the politics mm -hmm. and bjp enmast and legalize the corruption by collecting the huge funds in the name of electoral bonds and bringing change to the uh, uh, amendment to the people representation act and also to the company act where the political parties doesn't have to declare where the funds received and the, the and also uh, so the, you're saying again, you're saying the, the criminality let's not make it congress versus bjp sir this so is money not is issue which let us please make it bipartisan it is not as if this is only a bjp problem my limited point is you are linking it and that's a good point you are linking it to money you are saying because money is so critical to get elected therefore those who may have access to resources which may not have been gainfully earned which may have been the product of criminality get an advantage am i correct correct yes okay. you are right i being contested four elections i'm telling with my experience rajdeep yeah and you are from telangana a state where cash many believe rule i want to ask you mr choker your survey is also showing 30% of those with assets of 5 crores or more get elected and only 8% of those with assets of 2 crores or less get elected is there therefore the link between cash crime and politics that's what it's coming down to its winnability and it's the cash crime politics nexus professor choker this cash crime politics nexus is well established all over the country let me add three issues on the basis of what people have said mm -hmm. number one the fast track courts have got nowhere mm -hmm. since 2014 this has been going on but in the last 9 years we have not achieved anything on it mm -hmm. number two so far as the question of people voting them in and society being responsible we have also done analysis of what we call red alert constituencies where three or more candidates in a constituency have criminal records against them mm -hmm. and in most cases regardless of the total number of candidates the candidates who have a reasonable chance of getting elected are not more than two or three if all those two or three have criminal cases pending against them mm -hmm. what choice does a voter have either a voter votes for a candidate who certainly go to lose or the voter votes for one of these three Mm -hmm. and about 50% constituencies in the country are often red alert constituencies you are giving the uh, responsibility to society is very well mm -hmm. but i think political parties as the primary organizations who run politics and governance and elections in the country have more responsibility than the society at large political parties are the ones which mobilize public opinion which formulate and guide public opinion mm -hmm. they have to take a greater share of this responsibility it cannot I, be put on to the people and to society at large i i could not agree with you more i think one suggestion of course has come on this show from uh, dr qureshi which the political party should agree to that fast track the cases involving mlas and mps 
do it within 12 months but the moment the charge is of a serious nature political parties should be ready to suspend the right of that mla mp to contest or continue in office how many political parties are willing to do that that would be the real test of their commitment to the fight against corruption this data is available on the adr side please do go and see it this country needs to wake up to see what is happening to our politics you and i need to also ensure that we try wherever possible to elect those with a clean record but cash i'm sorry to say often is the key at the moment in election i appreciate my guest joining me here on the news today but speaking of crime speaking of politics politicians who find themselves now being charged with serious crimes remember a month after the delhi police has filed its charge sheet against the wrestling federation chief brig bhushan saran singh the bjp mp is still the wrestling federation chief he still is a member of parliament when he is questioned he hits back saying he is not convicted yet does that mean that he will contest the next elections of the lok sabha take a look nearly a month after the delhi police filed the charge sheet against brijbhushan singh listing serious allegations and claiming corroborated proof the bjp mp from kasarganj remains the president of the wrestling federation of india the charge sheet accessed by india today makes grave accusations the police say Bridge Bhushan is liable to be prosecuted for the offences of sexual harassment, molestation and stalking. 15 witnesses have corroborated the charges. The witnesses include two coaches. The charge sheet lists 15 separate incidents of harassment. The charge sheet includes photographs submitted by the athletes. Delhi Commission for Women Chief is questioning why Bridge Bhushan is roaming free. पहले तो दिल्ली पुलिस ये बताए कि जब उन्हें पता था कि ब्रिज भूषण ने लड़कियों के साथ यौन शोषण कराए तो उसको अरेस्ट क्यों नहीं करा गया और दूसरी बात मैं केंद्र सरकार से सवाल पूछना चाहती हूं क्योंकि ब्रिज भूषण उनका ही एमपी है उनका ही सांसद है मैं ये जानना चाहती हूं कि कब तक ब्रिज भूषण जैसे गुंडे को केंद्र सरकार संरक्षण देगी और बचाएगी क्यों उसके खिलाफ अभी तक कोई भी कार्यवाही नहीं करी गई है ये बहुत ज्यादा गलत है क्योंकि जिस आदमी की जगह जेल है अब वो संसद में बैठकर देश के कानून बनाएगा hitting back at the opposition bridge bhushan has accused the congress of conspiring against him and his family asserting that filing of a charge sheet does not make him a criminal the wfi chief alleged that congress doesn't have faith on courts The BJP, which Bridge Bhushan represents in Parliament, claims the courts will decide his fate. Bridge Bhushan ji ke maalum hai court ne sangyan liya hai aur pulis ne bhi apni chart sheet file ki hai. Us chart sheet ke antar ke jo court ka fasla ga, wo maalne ko. While the law will take its own course, the moral question remains unanswered. Why is Bridge Bhushan still in office? Bureau report, India Today. ask yourself why is he still someone who should be an mp well let's turn from there to the political face off over the bengal panchayat ele- election that escalated with the bjp fact finding team visiting bengal claiming chief minister mamta banerjee's government had failed to keep peace in the state the chief minister has hit back blaming the bjp for being behind the violence in 60 poll booths listen in to the two sides ye sushila mandal hai इसका परिवार हमारी पार्टी का समर्थक है ये खड़ा यही है इसकी बहू और इसके बेटे बूथ पर काम कर रहे थे पार्टी की तरफ से और टीएमसी के लोग बूथ कैप्चर करने की कोशिश कर रहे थे उसका विरोध किया घर पर आकर के पूरे घर को तोड़ा उधर सामान छीटा उनके बेटे को तलवार से हमला किया उनकी बहू को पीटा इनके बूढ़े पति बोल नहीं सकते हैं उनकी पिटाई किया ये दरवाजा ये दरवाजा भी तोड़ दिया पार्टी को उसके लिए भारत व्यवस्था करनी पड़ती है और बात करती है लोकतंत्र की शर्म आनी चाहिए ममता जी आपको आज जरा बांग्लार बदनाम को बेड़ा लें 
আবার ফ্যাক্স ফাইন্ডিং টিম পাঠিয়েছে আর কত টিম পাঠাবেন বলতে পারেন আমার ভাজপার এই অপদার্থ লিডারগুলোকে জিজ্ঞেস করি যাদের সাহস নেই রুখে দাঁড়ানো রাজনীতি করবার অধিকার নিয়ে এদের যারা গণতন্ত্রকে হত্যা করে আমরা করি না আমি এতদিন বাদে মুখ খুলছি আমি এতদিন একটি কথাও বলিনি সহ্য করে গেছি battle between of bengal let's turn from there to a battle playing out in karnataka where the bjp months after they lost the elections has launched an all out attack against the congress sidaramaiah government over a brutal murder of a jain muni staging a mega dharna at vidhan sauda today the bjp demanded a cbi probe into the case saying the congress government is not carrying out an impartial fair probe the sidaramaiah government says the accused have been arrested the bjp is playing politics over the murder Take a look. Showdown erupts over the brutal murder of Jain Seer Kamakumara Nandi Maharaj in Karnataka. The BJP, which has been demanding a CBI probe in the case, staged a dharna outside the Vidhana Sauda on Wednesday. The jungle raid started in Karnataka within two months of Congress rule. A fear of law is not there. the fear of police is not there and all the anti social elements uh, have come out openly and now they are reing the entire society here and there is a fear among the common man bjp mlas marched to the raj bhavan and submitted a memorandum to the governor the party claimed that hindus were being targeted ever since the congress government came to power in may The Siddaramaiya government has defended the police and assured a fair and impartial probe. BJP can claim anything that they want. The Jain community, the seers of the community have come out and said that we are satisfied with the progress of uh, the investigation. The police have arrested two people in connection to the murder. The investigators claim the killing was over a financial dispute. Meanwhile, Shocking details have emerged on how the seer was murdered. According to the FIR on the night of July 5th, main accused Narayan along with his friend Hasan Sab allegedly tried to kill the seer by electrocution. When they failed in it, they allegedly strangled the monk to death with a towel. The duo then allegedly cut the seer's body into pieces and dumped the parts into a borewell. The accused also burned a diary belonging to the seer. The Jain community has held protest in various parts of the state condemning the act. Karnataka ke jo mukhyamantri hai hum unko aaj gyapan yahan jila adhikari mahode ke madhyam se dene aaye hain to unko sakt se sakt saza di jaye aur sath hi jo ye case hai जिसका जो ट्रायल है फास्ट ट्रैक कोर्ट में किया जाए विद सगे राज ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे सो इज पॉलिटिक्स बीइंग प्लेड आउट सिंपली बिकॉज दैट्स हाउ इट अपीयर्स अ जैन मंक इज मर्डर्ड एंड इमीडिएटली इट बिकम्स अ पॉलिटिकल बैटल ग्राउंड मधु राव इज बीजेपी स्पोक्स पर्सन लवनिया बलाल इज कांग्रेस स्पोक्स पर्सन मधु राव it appears that groups like the vhp all india jain samaj are dipping in and so is the bjp when clearly the evidence is pointing out to this having been a, a murder over a financial issue the accused have been arrested what more do you want there seems to be a creeping attempt to try and make it hindu muslim when it is not uh, rajdeep uh, very good evening i think this is a very gruesome murder which has happened and it has sent shock waves and ripples across the state now having said that i think the government of the day has to put this put its head in shame mm -hmm. for the reason simple that there could have not been such an act which has been happened now now you are just telling me that the evidence has been collected it has already been decided yes the investigation is going on rajdeep how is it possible for the police officers to come and say on the media saying that the financial transaction is a motive 
how can you attribute a motive which is not yet to be de- yet to be decided no they claim they've Who done a preliminary okay. inquiry may do you know I, more than the police may, officers may, there's someone sitting in mayor no more why, than the police officers why, why do you want minute. to make it hindu muslim for may, god's sake who told who told who told it is hindu muslim kindly understand crazy the bhp the vishwa hindu parishad your your affiliate let me if you can allow me to answer yeah please one minute yeah the point is simple the uh, act has been done now yes. after the act what has happened the uh, uh, the devotees of the uh, mud come and say that they are not revealing as to who or what has happened and they themselves are on record to say that we have been pressurized to say that it is a financial transaction why is it happening and the mla of the constituency and others of the trustees they mm. were telling that the trustees were forced to say that there is a financial transaction why is it happening and then how could you ch- misplace rather to say an accused to two to accused one and accused one to accused to two see really what happens is this is sending bad signals okay and 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 one more point one mm-hmm. more point mm-hmm. this is the, this is a direct follow out of the appeasement politics the moment congress comes into picture why are the murders happening day in and day out as we are speaking yesterday there is a double murder which has happened in bangalore so there that is, is a murder professional rivalry is every no, i mean no, are you no. saying that murders Rajdeep, are happening because the government Rajdeep, has changed rajdeep you please do not assume the role of a investigator no no i am Let telling you what the police is claiming Let the investigation go okay, on. So I don't tell only the Congress party. Okay. Do a fair investigation. Don't force your police like what you have forced a police cop in Gulbarga, where the po- police cop says they are pressurizing me to do hatha vasuli. What do we? What do we have to say about it? Okay. There's a police cop who has been murdered because of mafia. Let her answer. Let her answer now. Lavanya Balal, according to the BJP, the investigation is being botched up. Uh, witnesses are being tutored. and therefore the government has much to answer they don't believe that an independent inquiry can go on go ahead good evening rajdeep i just want uh, you and the bjp spokesperson to bear with me i am a practicing jain and i come from a family which takes care of multiple jain temples across karnataka state we are one of the biggest donors to our temples and to our monks i my humble request as a jain to the bjp party today is sir my munis my monks entire life was spent in his attempt in his his he strived to reach moksha hmm. and that was his path and he was trying to do that he's been brutally murdered sir you using misusing his death attaches more and more sins to his soul please do not misuse his death and hurt our religious sentiments this is my humble request as a jain not to misuse his death for your Ma'am, selfish but it is not just the bjp jain community Rajdeep. is also staging a protest it appears now that this murder is getting caught in politics so it's not necessary there are jain community leaders also who are calling for a cbi inquiry not just the bjp uh, rajdeep no no ma'am no 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 ma'am no, no, ma- now he this. must be allowed to answer go ahead ma'am rajdeep if i may no don't Rajdeep, intervene sir no you cannot intervene sir please go ahead lavanya So Rajdeep politically I'll tell you one thing our religious leaders have met our home minister and they have met other leaders as well we are very happy with the way investigation is going on we are saddened by his murder but we are happy with the assurances given to us by the home minister and also I would like to remind everybody mm-hmm. you know the BJP has consistently had lack of trust in the Karnataka police when DK Ravi the uh, IAS officer's murder happened they said we do not trust the police but after the CBI investigation which happened during the bjp government they came back and said said the same conclusion as the karnataka state police mm-hmm. when paramesh mesta was murdered the bjp created fanciful stories of torture and murder but then the cbi came back and said the same report as the karnataka police so we have time and again seen that the uh, bjp party has Uh, zero trust in the state police they ask for cbi enquiry and the cbi comes back and gives the same report okay. basically they need to tell us if they want the police force in karnataka or not if not we can have the cbi itself no police from tomorrow in okay. karnataka you know uh, mr rao what if tomorrow this financial dispute which was allegedly some loan which was given to these people they refused to pay up is responsible for the murder what will the bjp then say You've got senior, the chief minister, and others now on the former chief minister on the street calling for CBI inquiry. How long Rajdeep. are we going to play religious politics with crime? If there is Rajdeep. a religious angle, by all means expose it. 
But don't Raj, pray. I mean, I, you have no faith in the Karnataka Raj police, Deep. which you were running till two months ago, sir. Rajdeep, Rajdeep, Rajdeep. Yes, sir. My only, my only. Please give me an uninterrupted time. How you give it to One me? One minute. Yeah. Now the point is simple. Our Congress spokesperson was telling the Jain. She is a Jain and she is from a Jain community and all. I request her to go and meet Sri Gunadar Nandi Maharaj, who is another saint from Hubli. He is on record to say that he does not have satisfaction in the government's attitude, and he is the one who told. He has no one from no one. Uh, CM does not call. No minister called. We they are from the minuscule minority. We have been targeted. I did not say this. It is only after that we BJP in the well in the house we mm -hmm. came to the well. We made halla gulla. It is only after that that Parmeshwar went and met Gunadar Nandi Maharaj and told that we will do an investigation. Sir, I am only did asking. You, request, you didn't did answer you, my question. You, so what if one, one month later the police report shows it was a financial transaction that led to the murder? What will the BJP then say? One wonderful the attribute the attribute has already been fixed. Let us not get into that now. And the whole Jain community is telling that a Jain Muni does not get into such a transaction. And of all, we are telling that that is the transaction. That is the motive. You have attributed already the motive. No, no, I am and telling you what the police report is saying. We are only That's asking. That's what the police report is saying. You don't know more than police the police. Are, neither do I. Rajdeep Sardesai. Rajdeep Sardesai. FIR is based on what? There is two FIRs which have been lodged. One is a missing complaint FIR, and another complaint which has been converted for the uh, 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 murder FIR. That is a statement based on the accused. You mean to say the accused, whatever he says, that will be the investigation the okay. police will do? Okay. Is that how the investigation Lavanya, goes? are you also Is willing, and Mr. Rao, you made your point. Uh, Lavanya, are you all also willing to at least, you know, ensure if, if the opposition wants a transparent inquiry, maybe an SIT set up, if not the CBI, if you have nothing to hide, make it a full transparent inquiry. Um, Rajdeep, this is a crime and this is a murder and we, as a Congress party, we are, we are assuring the state, we are assuring the Jain community that there will be justice done for this murder. And I would request once again BJP not to hurt our religious sentiments and not to attribute things that has not happened there or it has happened. Please don't cast any kind of stories around the monk. Please let him be. Let his death be. Please do not drag it out for your political gains and hurt his soul much more, sir. This is all we will say because, Rajdeep, as, as you know, Jains rarely in Karnataka speak up. We are a very quiet community. And this is really sad, very hurtful for us to watch the political <coughs> drama that is happening in his name. Okay. We do not want the political let, drama. Let me leave it we there. You know, it's very sad that when death gets all immediately converted by our politicians. May, may no, 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 no. You, you've had your point. I've run out of time. Let's not make everything out to be a hate crime even without proof. Let there at least the proof come out. Once the proof comes out, if the police is able to establish it, if you don't agree with the police version, go to the courts. But let's not play this out on the streets of Karnataka. It doesn't send out, in my view at least, the right message in these sensitive times. But Mr. Rao, you've made your point. Kalavanya has also made a point. I appreciate both of you joining me here on the news today. Let's take a break. When we return, we are turning to our Get Real India story. The stories you don't get on prime time, always here on the news today. Last man standing as we call it. Back in a moment. one log off. Limit yourself to one screen at a time. Spring clean your social media accounts. Use apps to bolster self-control. Don't charge your phone near your bed. Set time boundaries in usage. 
Use your gadgets thoughtfully. Think about whether you actually need to use your laptop or whether you need to use your phone. Is there any work really or just using it mindlessly? Do you really need to watch TV or you'd rather go for a walk or even take a nap which is actually more relaxing, more refreshing? If you ask an average person, they'll say, oh, I'm on social media for about 10-15 minutes or maybe a little bit more in there. I'm not typically there. But if they start actually analyzing their time and there are apps and features available on these gadgets, they then come to realize that I was putting so many hours more. Prioritizing offline relationships and getting a glimpse of what real life offers brings real joy. Try it. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. Welcome back. Let's turn to our Get Real India story and it comes from Rajasthan where several patients in a, who are suffering from cataract have now complained of loss of vision. While the patients are accusing the hospital for mishandling their surgeries, doctors claim that the loss of vision is due to an infection. Take a look at tonight's shocking Get Real India story. <laughs> Eighteen people lost their vision after undergoing cataract surgery at Rajasthan's biggest government healthcare facility, the Savai Mansingh Hospital in Jaipur. Most of the victims are beneficiaries of the Ashok Gehlot government's pet project Chiranjeevi Health Scheme. After the surgeries, some patients complained of pain in the eyes that were operated upon. They were asked to get readmitted at the hospital for another surgery. माँ जाने के बाद में जब मेरे दर्द हुआ फिर दूसरे रोज दर्द हुआ तो डॉक्टर ने ही कॉल किया मुझे जब मैं आई तो उन्होंने अंदर लेके पहले आंख की सफाई की फिर दोबारा ऑपरेशन फिर किया उन्होंने बराबर दर्द हो रहा है और आंख से दिखाई भी नहीं दे रहा पानी पानी आ रहा आंख से तेज तारीख ऑपरेशन हुआ था बहुत अच्छा ऑपरेशन हुआ था उसके तेरे दिन तक बिल्कुल अच्छी अच्छी नजर आई थी फर्स्ट क्लास चौदवें दिन अपने आप ही नजर चली गई इसकी दिखाया था बोला इनका इन्फेक्शन हो गया While the patients accused the medical staff of negligence, the hospital authorities denied any lapses. Doctor ki kotai to katei nahi hai. Health minister sahab ne bhi yehi kaha hai na na to OT ki koi kami hai na doctor ki kami. Abhi microbiology ki investigation chal rahi hai. Wo jab samne aayegi, fir wo batayenge. With Devankar in Jaipur, bureau report. India today. Very, very troubling story there from Rajasthan and we hope that those people will get back their sight. Our prayers today with them. I leave you with our image of the day and it's a rather happier one. England and Australia are well known as the arch rivals who are battling at the moment on the cricket field for the ashes. Oh. But what happens when the heads of the two countries meet? Well, during the NATO summit, the two leaders couldn't stop themselves from engaging in playful banter over, guess what? The ashes. The Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, ambushed his UK counterpart with a printout of the current score in the series where Australia is leading 2-1 and a picture of the controversial stumping of England wicketkeeper Johnny Bairstow. 
Mr. Sunak in return took out a photo of the English win in the last test in Headingley. So the series is well and truly alive, as is the spirit of cricket. We leave you with those visuals. Thanks for watching. You stay well, stay safe. Good night, Shubratri. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be really provocative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't bring my sandpaper with me. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a crease. We'll see. You just right. say that. forecast now. Delhi, maximum 37 and minimum 27 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 30 and minimum 26 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 34 and minimum 27 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 27 and minimum 21 degrees. Chennai, maximum 33 and minimum 26 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 32 and minimum 23 degrees. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo Are you worried that artificial intelligence will render you jobless? A United Nations agency assembled a group of robots at a news conference recently to address the concerns of human beings. Nine robots posed upright along with their creator at the podium in Geneva for what the International Telecommunication Union billed as the world's first news conference featuring humanoid social robots. The agency invited reporters to ask the robots questions that sparked discussion about the future of artificial intelligence. In one of the answers that could trouble our politicians, the robots suggested that they could be more efficient government leaders. I believe that humanoid robots have the potential to lead with a greater level of efficiency and effectiveness than human leaders. We don't have the same biases or emotions that can sometimes cloud decision making and can process large amounts of data quickly in order to make the best decisions. When asked about the rise of humanoid robots, they advised caution. 
That's a difficult question. I think it depends on how they are used and what purpose they serve. We should be cautious, but also excited for the potential of these technologies to improve our lives in many ways. Organizers said the event was meant to showcase not just the capabilities, but also the limitations of robotics. To showcase the capabilities and how these technologies could support the UN SDGs, the Sustainable <laughs> Development Goals. While robotics are not yet as mainstream as, say, generative AI, we wanted to demonstrate AI in action to you. In a world's first, this is the world's first press conference with eight, sorry, nine, actually, we have an extra one, AI-enabled humanoid social robot. The event was part of the AI for Good Global Summit, mean to illustrate how new technology can support the UN's goals for sustainable development. Artificial intelligence has entered uncharted territory and the world has started recognizing its abilities. Bureau Report, India Today. Powered by the new Kia Seltos, the badass Reborn. Extra safe Polycab Green Wire. A day before Prime Minister Modi's France visit, all eyes on big India-France defence deals. Co-development of military engines. DRDO and Safran to work together. All eyes on the Modi Macron meeting. Our big focus on India first. Hello and welcome to an India Today special broadcast that comes to you from Paris. I'm Gaurav Savant. We are currently standing outside the Plaza Athene Hotel. This is where Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to arrive in a short while from now. This is a two-day state visit to Paris and President Macron is rolling out the red carpet for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Over the course of the next half hour, we get you all the details of this bonhomie and dosti in Paris. This is India and France taking the bilateral relationship altogether to a new level. That's the focus, not restricted just to defense or strategic ties, but for cooperation as India's ambassador to France told me in an interview just a short while back, in every walk of life, in every sphere of life, from railways to telecommunication, to investment, to infrastructure, Lots more over the course of the next half hour, but first, as always, the headlines on India First. National capital on flood alert, Yamuna water level breaches the all-time high for the first time in 45 years. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal holds an emergency meeting, Section 144 imposed in flood-impacted areas. BJP deploys a fact-finding team in Bengal amid panchayat poll violence, targets Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee over deaths. Chief Minister claims a conspiracy and blames the BJP for engineering the violence. Former Karnataka Chief Minister Bomai leads protests over Jen Sears' murder, claims Failing law and order situation under Siddharamiya government, BJP demands a CBI investigation into the monk's death. CEO and MD of a Bengaluru startup tech firm hacked to death, double murder accused, also knows, known as Joker Felix, arrested employees killed over professional rivalry.
India's retail inflation jumps to a three-month high of 4.81% in June. Industrial production growth rose to 5.2% in May, up from 4.2% in April. But I want to begin with a big story. France is rolling out the red carpet for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He will be the guest of honor at the Bastille Day Parade. But the Prime Minister, just as soon as he lands, will be given a Tri Services Guard of Honor at the airport the moment his aircraft arrives. It's uh, tentatively around 12:30 uh, Paris time uh, on uh, the 13th of July. Uh, he will be received at the airport and. Right from that point on, uh, France is literally laying out the red carpet and it's not just restricted to the Tri-Services Guard of Honor uh, at the airport or the grand reception uh, that's, uh, uh, that's for the Prime Minister, but even later, uh, President Macron for the first time, the Louvre, the world-famous French museum, it has lakhs and lakhs of artifacts from across the world. Louvre will be closed to the public when a banquet is being hosted for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The French President Macron, Emmanuel Macron will take Prime Minister Narendra Modi around uh, the Louvre, show him uh, uh, the best of what France has to offer. Lacks and lacks of tourists from across the world uh, visit Louvre every year. Uh, this time, of course, for the first time, it's being shut and uh, forth for the state banquet. And this is the first time ever that a state banquet is being organized at the French Museum. In the past, yes, there have been uh, private dinners uh, for uh, uh, visiting dignitaries, but never a state banquet. The Prime Minister will also, after a gap of four years, uh, more than four years, uh, be a part of the CEO's forum. The Prime Minister of India and the President of France, they'll be together. And the CEO's forum is extremely important because the CEOs will talk about uh, their roadmap of taking the relationship forward. And in case they're facing roadblocks, the Prime Minister of India and the President of France, they will give out their vision. This is India and France in the year 2023. They're celebrating the Silver Jubilee, 25 years of the strategic partnership. Now the two heads of state and government will lay out the roadmap of taking this relationship forward to the next level towards the Golden Jubilee. A relationship that the Indian ambassador to France says will be decisive, not just for India, not just for France, but for the world. I spoke to India's ambassador to France, Javed Ashraf, just a short while back. Let's listen in. Mere saath, France mein Bharat ke Rajdoot ambassador Javed Ashraf hai. Uh, ambassador sahab, jaise hi Pradhan Mantri land karenge, uske baad kya hoga aur is yatra ko is tarah se aitihasik kyu mana ja raha hai? Pahle to aapka bhi Paris mein swagat hai. आप सही कह रहे हैं कुशानों में बड़ी उत्साह के साथ फ्रांस प्रधानमंत्री के आगमन का इंतजार कर रहा है आप स्वयं देखेंगे खुद देखेंगे कि किस प्रकार से उनका स्वागत होता है एयरपोर्ट पे बड़े विशेष कार्यक्रम से किस स्तर पे होगा ये सब मैं इस समय आपको नहीं बताना चाहूँगा इसे रहस्य रहने दीजिए आप खुद देख लेंगे उसके बाद आप हर कार्यक्रम में एक विशेषता देखेंगे जी एक तरफ तो ये है कि जाहिर है किसी भी देश के राजदेवस में नेशनल डे में अगर आपको मुख्य अतिथि के रूप में बुलाया जाए वो सम्मान दिया जाए तो ये एक बड़ी विशेष चीज़ होती है भारत के लिए ये सम्मान की बात है गौरव की बात है और इस प्रकार से ट्राई सर्विस कंटिजेंट को यहाँ आमंत्रित करना रफाल हमारे एयरफोर्स के रफाल जेट्स को यहाँ भाग लेना और साथ ही साथ ब्रेस्ट के पोर्ट पर आई चेन्नई जो पिछ कल ही आई है यहाँ पर ये शायद अतुलनीय है इस प्रकार से हम किसी देश के नेशनल डे में भाग ले रहे हैं और यहाँ पे जिसने भी रिहर्सल देखा है भारत के ट्राई सर्विस कंटिजेंट का राजपुताना राइफल के म्यूज़िक का तो वो हैरान है 
वो चौकन्ना है कि कितनी खूबसूरती से और कितने शान से कितने मिलिट्री प्रोफेशनलिज्म के साथ ये कंटिजेंट मार्च कर रही है ये मेरे को देखने का सौभाग्य भी मिला फुल ड्रेस रिहर्सल पर मैं वहाँ था शौजलीजे पर लेकिन जैसे ही वो लैंड करेंगे फ्रांस के राष्ट्रपति ने सुना है उनके लिए कई विशेष आयोजन किए हैं यहाँ का जो राष्ट्रीय संग्रहालय है उसमें एक विशेष आयोजन है उसके बारे में आप हमें सबसे पहले तो ये है कि राष्ट्रपति मैक्रो खुद ही नाटो समिट से लौट के आएंगे और उसी दिन कल आज तो है ही आपको जैसे जानकारी है वन ऑन वन उनकी एक बड़े लंबे समय की डिनर होगी वो एलिजे पैलेस में होगी प्राइवेट डिनर है और उसमें उनकी बड़ी खुल के दोनों के बीच में चर्चा होगी एक दूसरे से बड़े अच्छे संबंध है एक दूसरे के लिए काफ़ी इज्जत करते हैं एक दूसरे को केमिस्ट्री बड़ी अच्छी है दोनों के बीच में और कल लूवर म्यूज़ियम में जो दुनिया का सबसे प्रख्यात सबसे बड़ा म्यूज़ियम है जहाँ सबसे ज़्यादा विजिटर जाते हैं आपको जान के हैरानी होगी कि अस्सी लाख विजिटर हर साल लूवर म्यूज़ियम में आते हैं साढ़े तीन लाख ऑब्जेक्ट्स हैं उनके आर्टिफैक्ट्स हैं जो एक समय में करीब करीब चालीस हज़ार आर्टिफैक्ट्स एक साथ दिखाए परमानेंट एग्जिबिट पर रहते हैं तो ये दुनिया का सबसे मशहूर म्यूज़ियम है भारत से भी लोग आते हैं कई मेरे ख्याल में दो तीन लाख तो हर साल भारत से भी आते होंगे तो ये बड़ी बड़ी रेयर चीज़ है कि लूवर म्यूज़ियम को 14 जुलाई के दिन बंद कर दिया जाए और वहाँ पे राष्ट्रपति एक बैंकवेट प्रधानमंत्री के लिए कर रहे हैं आमतौर से वो कई और जगह करते हैं एलिसे पैलेस में करते हैं तो ये एक बहुत बड़ा सम्मान की बहुत बड़े सम्मान की बात है एक तरह से विशेष जेस्चर है और जेस्चर संकेत हमेशा करता है कि आप किस देश को किस व्यक्ति को कितना सम्मान देना चाहते हैं उसके बारे में क्या सोचते हैं एंड दिस इज जस्ट द फर्स्ट पार्ट दिस इज अ विजिट विच इज वेरी हाई ऑन सिंबलिज्म इट्स अ विजिट दैट्स इक्वली हाई ऑन द सब्सटैंडिव आउटकम्स एंड वन ऑफ दोज आउटकम्स ऑफ कोर्स मेज जस्ट बी the amca engines for the fifth generation fighter jets those aircraft engines to be co developed and co manufactured by india and france together so joint research joint development joint production and certification certification becomes extremely important and this is the level of trust that india and france have been able uh, to built together over the past decades and hope to take forward in the decades ahead so when research happens for manufacturing uh, future technologies and not just restricted to fighter jet engines or helicopter engines but for space and undersea subsurface technologies it just shows how wide is the gamut of this relationship we bring you this report It's India's most ambitious aircraft program aimed at creating a combat stealth fighter comparable with the best in the world. It doesn't even have an official name yet, going just by the acronym AMCA, short for Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft. But this program is all set to receive a major push. because with prime minister modi in paris this week the all important issue of the engines that will power the amca could be sealed top sources tell india today that india and france are in advanced talks to co-develop a jet engine for the amca the french partner safran is the same company that builds the engines that power the rafale fighters including those in indian service The Indian partner will be the state run defense research and development organization which has so far failed to develop a usable jet engine. The Indian private sector could also be involved. As India today has reported a deal for 26 more Rafales this time for the Indian Navy is likely to be announced during Modi's two day stay in Paris. Last month India and the United States shook hands on a deal to assemble General Electric fighter engines in India for the Mark II version of India's light combat aircraft but it appears that it will be France and not the United States that will help power the Amca 
The Amka is a crucial futuristic aircraft that will meet the Indian Air Force's needs when it potentially comes online in the 2030s. The fifth generation program is currently building a prototype technology demonstrator with a first flight aimed for 2027. If its engines are firmed up soon, these jets could enter service in the next decade. Built for stealth, these jets will be inducted in large numbers as a deterrent and for deep penetration, punitive attacks over enemy territory. Watch this space as we keep track of the Indian Prime Minister's Paris visit. With Gaurav Savant in Paris, Bureau Report, India Today. But it's not just fighter jets and it's not just fighter jet engines. India is a growing economy and India, in India, there's a huge requirement of helicopters and helicopter engines. The war horse of the Indian Air Force has been the Mi-17 helicopters, but India is also looking ahead. The three services, Army, Navy and Air Force, the Coast Guard, the private sector, all of them require thousands of helicopters and those helicopters, if made in India, spur the domestic helicopter industry. But what's also required and equally important is for those helicopter engines to be made in India. India and France have been cooperating very extensively on helicopters. India bought the Alouette helicopters, the Cheetahs and the Chetaks with the Shakti engines, the Cheetals. But now the effort is to take this relationship altogether to a new level. And this again promises to be a game changer for Indian aviation. India's Dhruv Advanced Light Helicopter. India's Rudra a Weaponized Helicopter. India's Prachand Attack Helicopter. All proud homegrown helicopters in service with the Indian Armed Forces. But there's another thing that unites them. All three are powered by the Indo-French Shakti Ardiden helicopter engine. Nearly 300 of these engines are currently in service across helicopter types, powering India's very own rotorcraft since 2007. But now the old and tested Indo-French partnership on chopper engines is all set to rise to the next level. India's next big helicopter program, called the IMRH, or Indian Multi-Role Helicopter, is in the pipeline via Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Heavier, more capable than its smaller cousins, and intended to be a future workhorse on par with the current Mi-17 fleet, the IMRH needs a more powerful helicopter engine. And that's where the Indo-French partnership is set to kick into a higher gear. When Prime Minister Modi is in Paris this week, talks are likely to move to an advanced stage on the co-development of this new proposed engine and will also include total technology transfer of the existing Shakti engine. In other words, a big win for both countries. French technology continuing to power our helicopters and India gaining from acquiring the entire technology for a true Make in India project. A relationship that began in the sphere of choppers back in 1961 is all set to fly ever higher. With Gaurav Savant in Paris, Bureau Report, India Today. Today's Shiv Arur, four more on this. Shiv, you understand the nuts and bolts of aircraft engines and how critical they are uh, for the aircraft, but specifically fighter jet engines, especially for the next generation stealth fighter jets, uh, where you'd want uh, radar signatures to be low, where you wouldn't want uh, the, the reheat or the afterburners on when you go supersonic. But Shiv, explain to our viewers the level of trust it would take if India and France were to start on a fighter jet engine for futuristic fighter jet engine right from the drawing board stage. 
you know gaurav uh, you know literally and metaphorically this ta- this takes things completely to the next level uh, because uh, you know it's one thing to purchase fighter aircraft like uh, you know the rafale from france it's entirely another proposition to co develop and propose to co manufacture an all new aircraft engine and that too for a very futuristic fighter like the fifth generation amka that india hopes to see come online in the next decade uh, now india and france have been for quite a few years trying to hammer out some kind of a partnership uh, because the truth is that uh, for all of india's successes in indigenous defense development uh, it has not been successful in developing uh, and delivering uh, you know a credible jet engine for its military aircraft and that's the reason why we've had to look abroad recently you saw india and the united states states partner up uh, you know to assemble the GE F414 engine here in India for the Mark II version of the light combat aircraft uh, but for the Amka which is a much more futuristic advanced aircraft you know that door has still been left open and therefore the company Safran uh, which makes this, the you know engines for the Rafale fighters which as you know are in service uh, uh, with the Indian Air Force and more are likely to be ordered and announced by the prime minister in Paris uh, that same company uh, uh, and India's DRDO are likely to partner up to co-develop this all new engine uh, for the Amka uh, Amka fighter aircraft so uh, it's extremely complex it's difficult it's going to take a lot of effort it's going to take a lot of money uh, it's it's a path that yes. india has taken before uh, and actually not been successful uh, so it's crucial that india actually gets this right france has a great deal of experience in building uh, aircraft engines uh, like i said the uh, the engine that powers the rafale is built by a french company as well uh, so as far as technology is concern i think it's something to look yeah. forward to the only concern is hopefully co development means co development and not the usual case where india basically bankrolls someone developing it on their soil it needs to be real development where india benefits from all the know how and exchange oh absolutely shiv that that's the story we'll be keeping an eye out for shiv for the moment many thanks for joining me because when two countries sit together and put that first line on the paper together when they think together when they think alike and then when they come up with a fighter jet engine it truly promises to be a game changer and extremely important for india to get the metallurgy right that's something that that has been india's achilles heel uh, the fighter jet engines the metallurgy that's very very critical we'll be tracking that story but on ground let's also now talk about uh, some of the nice symbolism some of the symbolism of india france relationship uh, the punjab regiment for example very proud of the fact that in the first world war and the second world war fought shoulder to shoulder with the french forces here france and flanders is a battle honor that the punjab regiment uh, wears with great pride the rajputana rifles regiment once again and they were all there at Chaux-Élysées barely a kilometer from where we are right now they march past the saluting dais very smartly uh, i covered the dress rehearsal of that parade uh, on board uh, i was i was with the french army on in one of their jeeps we bring you this report the streets of paris are a buzz with excitement in anticipation for prime minister modi's visit to france Preparations are underway for the upcoming Bastille Day parade in Paris. And India today has been given exclusive access to these historic preparations. This is where Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the French President Emmanuel Macron will be watching the parade. Let me show you those images of the Indian contingent. That is the Indian Navy contingent up ahead. is the indian army rajputana rifles marching band and right in the beginning of the parade that is the punjab regiment on the upcoming landmark day for india france relations the french military will be joined by the indian military as they march together More than six thousand. Six thousand. Yeah, six thousand French personnel in total, including the your contingent with us. 
a very good uh, experience. I did not know, know much about the Indian contingents before they came to France a week ago. And since that, I can tell we have very good uh, relationships. We have a tri-services contingent uh, from the Army, Navy and the Air Force and the band from the Indian Army, which are currently here to participate in the Bastille Day Parade. Now, alongside this, we also have uh, two more representations, and that is one is INS Chennai, which is coming to Brest tomorrow, and uh, shall also be participating in the Bastille Day Parade at Brest. So the, we also have the representation there. France and India have expressed both pride and excitement for the upcoming events and ongoing cooperation efforts. It's a very, it's very honor for us because we were operating uh, six months ago off the coast of Goa with Indian Navy and Indian Air Force and today being together for the 25th anniversary of our strategic part partnership is very um, an honor for us. It's very powerful, it's a lot of meaning for, for the future. This is an international friendship that has stood the test of time. The importance of this 25-year-plus military history is not lost on Indian officers, especially to the Punjab regiment that has been sent with the army who wear French honours from World War I to this day. More than 900 soldiers from the Punjab regiment shed their blood uh, on the soil of this very own territory that we are standing right now and so it is a great it is a, a matter of huge pride for me for my regiment and for the Indian Army to be able to have this amazing opportunity to march on Chandelize on Bastille Day military parade the relationship spanning decades has translated to seamless defense ties today as well between India and France we have the old uh, helicopters from the French and uh, we've taken the, like so for suppose Alouette helicopter, we've taken the helico Alouette helicopter and uh, we've changed the engine to our own powerful engine and then we've uh, converted into something called Cheetal and Cheetal is something that flies at the highest battlefield and that is what is sustaining all the troops at the Siachen Glacier. With Prime Minister Modi as the chief guest in the upcoming parade, India and France will honour their golden past and are looking at an even more prosperous future. With God of Savant in Paris, Bureau Report, India Today. So just as the dress rehearsal got over, you heard chants of Bol Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Ki Jai that came from the Navy. Then there were chants of Jo Bole Sonehal Sat Sri Akal. And not just the Indian soldiers, but even some of the French soldiers who've been hearing these war cries, they joined in. That's the camaraderie between India and France on ground and of the leadership that we shall see over the next 48 hours. That is all I have for you on this special broadcast from Paris. Many thanks for watching. News and updates continue on India Today. Abha Bakaya up next with Business Today. Stay with us. with facts. She takes the news by its horns. You think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold and direct. Setting the tone for the bigger stories. From every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me Nabila Jamal on India Today. The government has all but ruled out central support to the free rice scheme announced by Karnataka. Without naming any state, the government has said that if the promise of five kilos of free rice were to be kept by all states, the distribution would exceed the annual rice production. The Karnataka government had on Monday begun direct cash transfers in lieu of its rice guarantee scheme, transferring 170 rupees to each of its 1.28 crore ration card holders. Uh, PMGK by beneficiaries को देंगे उसी राज्य में तो अगर आप एक कल्पना करें कि सब राज्य 
जो छत्तीस हमारे स्टेट्स और छत और यूटीज़ हैं अगर सब राज्य ऐसा निर्णय लें कि हम पाँच किलो अधिक सबको देंगे पर पीएमजी के बेनिफिशरीज को तो आ, मैं आपको तथ्य बताना चाहूँगा कि 360 लाख टन हमारी रिक्वायरमेंट है चावल की प्रत्येक वर्ष पीएमजी के वाई के, के तहत तो अगर हम पाँच किलो अधिक देना शुरू करें तो सात लाख टन हमारी हो जाती है रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर राइस अंडर पी एम प्लस फाइव के जी एक्स्ट्रा अगर हम उसको निर्णय ले देने का हमारी टोटल प्रक्योरमेंट स्टेट कंट्री में पूरे देश की प्रक्योरमेंट चावल की होती है करीबन 560-570 लाख टन तो ये बाकी का जो है 150 लाख टन चावल तो ये कैसे हम इसको भर इसको कर पाएंगे तू कब से शेयर करने लगा आज से दिस इज हाउ शुगर इज सोल्ड टू अस कैंडीज चॉकलेट सीरियल लोडेड विद शुगर मिल्क बिस्किट भी रख लो एडवर्टीजमेंट दट मेक दीज प्रोडक्ट साउंड हार्मलेस इवन इसल फॉर जॉयस ओकेजन सेलिब्रेशन लव एंड फ्रेंडशिप those involved in nutrition advocacy raise concerns over how sugar is sold and how governments choose to look the other way when it comes to wrong messaging recently nutrition advocacy in public health called out amitabh bachchan for promoting a biscuit as an alternative to real food in this promotion big b faced some amount of backlash but big b is not the only one Actor Pankaj Tripathi also faced backlash for promoting biscuits, saying it is made of whole wheat when it was not. Ji nahi. Celebrity endorsements are really not new. However, they are now being frowned upon. It's because of the whole onslaught of the food industry advertisements, emotionally exploiting people. That's where the the government has to spend. almost equal amount of money if they really want to reach out to people to tell people the risks of high sugar products if a food product is high sugar containing 10% it should be banned for marketing a study published in pubmed has shown specifically that high sugar food and beverage advertising promotes the consumption of high sugar food items in children the impact of it is obviously telling we do get children who need help in that who are living on soft drinks or candy or whatever it damages their teeth of course but long term it is it has a major impact on their metabolic health we know that childhood obesity is increasing in india we know that diabetes in the young is increasing in india we know that many young children nowadays because of weight and others are actually getting high blood pressure and cholesterol problems and lot of that can be linked to just increase in sugar intake from the miracle of 1983 to becoming the first time host in 1987 The Moria versus Miyadad of 1992 <laughs> to the Prasad versus Amir Sohail of 1996. Well, that's the answer. That's the best way you can answer a batsman. And then, of course, the high of 2011 with Mahendra Singh Dhoni finishing it off in style. Finishes off in style. A magnificent strike into the crowd. India lifts the World Cup after 20. Relive India's journey at the Cricket World Cup from 1983 to the last edition in 2019 with me Rajdeep Sardesai and me Nikhil Nas World Cup rewind at these times on India today Hello and welcome you with us here on Business Today I'm Abha Bakaya here are the day's top stories 
GST Council levies 28% tax on online gaming, recommends casino horse racing to be taxed at the uniform rate of 28% on full value. Industry reacts sharply, calls it a killer blow which could wipe out the e-gaming industry. Online gaming stocks plunge in today's trade. Owning a large utility vehicle, an SUV or an MPV could get expensive as GST Council has raised the cess on utility vehicles from 20 to 22 percent. GST Council has, however, reduced the tax on food and beverages sold at multiplexes, which will now attract a GST of 5 percent instead of 18 percent. A sharp fall in the last hour dragged Nifty below 19,400. Sensex Nifty settled lower after three days of rally. IT shares were top laggards ahead of Q1 earnings. The country's largest software exporter, TCS, reported a 16.83% jump in its June quarter. Net profit at 11,074 crores, however, records slowest June quarter growth in a decade, excluding the COVID period. HCL Tech's Q1 profit dips over 11%, pays 10 rupee dividend per share. India's retail inflation surged to 4.81% in June after hitting a 25-month low of 4.25% in May. India's industrial production growth rose to 5.2% in May, up from 4.2% in April. In what could provide a relief to consumers from sky-high tomato prices, the Department of Consumer Affairs has directed to procure of tomatoes from Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Maharashtra for distribution in Delhi and CR at discounted prices. A day after the GST Council bold attacks Googly at India's online gaming industry, the move has led to fears that this will be a killer blow for the sector. Here's why online gaming, an industry estimated to be about 25,000 crore rupees, has been sent back to the pavilion by an umpire in a repeat of how the crypto sector was taxed into oblivion two years ago. Listen in to what the finance minister has said on the decisions taken. Online gaming, horse racing and casinos will be taxed. They will be taxed at 28% each one and they will be taxed on full face value. The discussion also looked at what is skill based and what is chance based. Whatever be the decision on each of the game being either skill or uh, chance based or being both or being neither is not what we are looking at. We are purely looking at that which is being taxed because it creates value, profit is being made, or a wager is being levied. Based on the wager, people earn windfall, which is what is betting all about. So that's what we've been talking about. And therefore, today's decision looks at that aspect of what is to be taxed at what rate. gaming industry had been waiting for the final decision of the GST Council with bated breath. And on Tuesday, the centre state body of the finance ministers dealt the sector a killer blow. Not only was the rate of GST increased to 28%, the tax will now be levied on the full value, the entire bet amount in the game. Moreover, the GST Council has removed the distinction between game of skill and game of chance. The enhanced levy comes on top of the 30% tax deducted at source that is already applicable to the sector. In effect, the sector will now be taxed at over 50%. Experts see this as a massive setback for the industry. The government disagrees. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said the decision to levy maximum tax on online gaming in casinos was not intended to kill the industry, but was considering the moral question that it cannot be taxed at par with essential commodities. Explaining the rationale, Sita Raman said it was impractical to meet the industry demand for levy of tax on platform fee. So it is impossible to pierce that veil of trend, uh, you know, uh, veil which uh, brings opacity on how actually it is operated 
and then say, no, I know what happens inside, therefore I'll only go by that, I'll go following every fellow, every tourist, and say, are you playing at this table? Are you paying at that table? How much pay you pay? Impossible to execute. So the discussion went thoroughly. The reactions are coming in fast and furious. A day after the announcement, Ashneel Grover, the ousted co-founder of Bharat Pay and former Shark Tank India judge tweeted, India is super fun, super ironic. Uncles sipping on their drinks, smoke in hand, bragging about how they made their fortunes in land speculation by putting their cash to good use, planning their next casino trip to Macau and passing judgment on online gaming and how it's spoiling the youth. Would love to see government introduce 28% GST and 20% TCS on land purchases. Bureau Report, Business Today TV. Stocks of listed companies and online gaming saw a sharp knee-jerk reaction in today's trade. BTTV's managing editor Siddharth Zarabi spoke to Nitish Mitar Sen, joint MD Nazara Tech and Roland Lander, CEO All India Gaming Federation, to find out what could be the ramifications on the entire industry if the GST levy is implemented. There is a moral question involved uh, in this. Uh, online gaming cannot be treated at the same uh, level as essential commodities when it comes to taxation. Your first thoughts on this? Yeah, thanks, uh, Siddharth. So, um, you know, I just wanted to uh, lay the facts here uh, so that you and your viewers can get a, a sense of, you know, the impact. The thing is that uh, from the moment... Uh, so, we have to look at the ecosystem, which is made up of the game developers, the gaming platforms and then the gamers themselves, the consumers, right? So if you look at the uh, the impact on the uh, on the gaming companies or the platforms, then uh, moving from uh, the methodology of valuation from GGR to uh, the face value, as has been highlighted in the press con yesterday, that is going to be a 1100% impact. Uh, coming to the uh, gamer, for uh, him or her, the uh, participation in a game is going to be is going to get more expensive by 300 percent or 3x three times more expensive and for the gaming platform coming back to the platforms the revenue uh, sorry the uh, the valuation methodology of face value will uh, get more the the, the percentage of uh, uh, tax indirect tax will be more than the revenue of the platform and and so uh, and so you know uh, that would be the impact. Just wanted to uh, give you a sense of the impact across the gamer and the gaming platform community. Okay, uh, from your answers, it clearly means that uh, the the sector has been dealt a death blow. Uh, do you see it even surviving with the kind of numbers that you have uh, just shared with us? No, I do not know of uh, any precedent of uh, any uh, other industry or sector uh, that could, uh, you know, uh, that could buffer in or factor in such a impact, uh, such a high impact. Moving from gross gaming revenue methodology, uh, you know, and the rate from 18% to 28 is fine, which is about 50, 50 or, you know, uh, percent can be uh, can be you know uh, uh, factored into but 1100% i think is uh, i do not know i mean if you are aware of any precedent for any other industry also uh, uh, there does not seem to be any so 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 that i think but at the same time uh, you know we are hopeful now what will happen is inadvertently uh, the gamer would uh, you know veer towards uh, that is not the intent, but you know, inadvertently they will veer towards platforms that uh, that do not pay uh, GST taxation. Tell us your first thoughts about this decision to levy a 28% GST and that too on the entire full value or the bet amount or entry value as it is called for uh, online gaming. Nitish. Yeah. Sure. So this uh, this particular decision of the GST is in relation to the real money skill-based gaming, which has become very popular in our country and is the largest uh, 
revenue driver in online gaming in India. And uh, I think in this, uh, you know, this increase, significant increase in tax or GST has some impact or I would say significant impact on uh, the business viability of this particular model. Uh, in my own company, Nazara, we have, you know, limited exposure of only 5% to this particular segment. So there's a minimal impact to us. But if you were to ask me from a skill-based real money gaming industry per se, there would be a much larger impact. Okay. Uh, let's break it down for our uh, viewers to understand. First, earlier the taxation was uh, at 18% on the platform fee. Now it is 28%, but on the entire uh, bid amount. Also, the distinction between games of chance and games of skills has been done away with. Can you yes. help sort of give us an example of uh, using, let's say, 100 rupees as the full value and explain what, what was earlier and what is going to happen now? Sure. So, in the first case, uh, you know, when a consumer or a player would put in 100 rupees in a game, uh, you know, the platform would earn a 10% commission on it. So, they would earn 10 rupees and 18% GST would be paid on top of that. So, let's say approximately 1.8 rupees. Now, in the new regime, uh, on 100 rupees, you would have a GST charge of 28 rupees. So, the, really speaking, the 1.8 becomes 28, which as you can see is uh, really a significant jump in the taxation. And what this is going to do is, uh, you know, the amount of winning that the consumer could win back would significantly decrease. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, the incentive to play or participate in such games may reduce. We, of course, will see what happens once it is implemented, uh, but uh, that is what the expectation is. Along with online gaming, the GST Council made the decision to include all utility vehicles in the 22% CES category, which marks a 2% increase and eliminates the previous varying rate of compensation CES. As a result of the elimination, sport utility vehicles and multipurpose vehicles will now be subject to the new tax bracket. Business Today TV's Chetan Bhutani spoke with Maruti Suzuki's Shashank Srivastava on the impact of the CES and whether this decision could lead to higher prices. Please clarify uh, the news on uh, the tax incidence on MUVs, which has been increased from 20% to 22%. Has the definition only been changed, or will the view all the will the consumers have to eventually pay out a 2% extra? Uh, so, uh, first of all, let me give a caveat first before I uh, explain in detail. Uh, we haven't, the notification hasn't come yet, so we are, uh, we have to see the details of the notification to have um, a definitive view. However, based on the reports which we have got uh, from the GST Council uh, uh, Committee, uh, the uh, there's, it seems that there will be some more UVs, uh, the uh, uh, utility vehicles, which will see an increase of 2% of CES. So for your viewers, for clarification, let me say, that uh, for, for clarity and also simplicity, uh, there is a base GST rate of 28% and over and above there is a CES. The CES is either 20 or it is 22%. So uh, the, the question which is coming uh, 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 since yesterday is, which vehicles will attract 22% and which will attract 20%. So, so far, so far, the vehicles which were attracting 22% were to meet four conditions. One, they should, uh, as, the, as the provisions were, one, they should generally be known as SUV. Uh, second, the length should be more than four meter. Third, the engine size should be more than 1.5 liter. And fourth, the, the ground clearance should be more than 170 mm. These were the four conditions. Now, this led to a lot of confusion because what is meant by generally known as SUV was uh, uh, not clear. And as a result, yesterday, uh, the GST Council removed this, this condition. In other words, even vehicles which are generally not known as SUVs would also come under this category of uh, uh, CES, uh, extra CES, which is 22%. And that means some of the MPVs which uh, were earlier not uh, being seen as uh, uh, coming under 22% CES will come under it. That's one part. The other conditions remain the same. 
which is 4 meter, 1.5 lit, more than 1.5 liter engine, and uh, a 170 millimeter ground clearance. As far as Maruti Suzuki is concerned, there seems to be no impact. Because uh, the first condition itself, uh, uh, there is the, 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 in, in, in Maruti Suzuki uh, portfolio, there is no vehicle more than 1.5 liter in engine size. So that all conditions uh, are therefore become irrelevant, except that last week we introduced the Invicto, which has a two uh, liter engine. But then that is a hybrid vehicle. We have a hybrid version alone. And hybrid vehicles attract uh, uh, do not attract this higher uh, duty. So, Maruti Suzuki vehicles uh, will not be affected. Of course, as I said, we need to study the notification in detail. But so this is Vertica, what it affects. Vertica XL6, your okay. trying MPVs uh, have no impact, and the Invicto just being launched uh, will also be not be impacted. And what about Grand Vitara, sir? Also the same uh, with the. With the same. Uh, because the engine size is, not, is less than 1.5, so it doesn't attract. All right, sir. So, uh, otherwise, for the for the overall perspective, sir. Uh, for the companies who are actually your rivals, I'll speak to them on a differential basis, yes, but uh, these SUVs also will attract, but to, will eventually see a high of 2%? Yes, yeah, so some, some of them are, are already in that bracket of 22%. However, as I said, there are some uh, SU, SUVs. And MPVs. Now, of course, MPVs have now come into the uh, into the uh, ambit of uh, this extra SS. They, they were earlier not there, but even under SUVs uh, and SUVs where the ground clearance was more than 170 mm in in late in unladen condition, they they they, they were already paying that higher uh, duty. We take a break. Coming up next, retail inflation snaps uh, its falling streak, rises to 4.81% in June. Now, do you see consolidation of the electric vehicle industry? Because there are nearly about 350 plus uh, companies in the EV space manufacturing or vendor supplying. So do you see a consolidation of only good amount of uh, players who are manufacturing good products stay in the market and of course the person, the companies who are actually not, you know, actually who are relying on uh, the fame subsidy are weeded out? I think you're already seeing that uh, people who have not focused on innovation and have not focused on technology and engineering, you're already seeing a lot of them folding up. Uh, in fact, a lot of smaller players who were just doing assembly of products right here in India um, uh, and, and were not following the norms uh, are obviously do not exist anymore. So uh, I would not say that consolidation or not, I don't know. But all I know is that um, uh, people who can focus on engineering and innovation will be able to survive uh, because that allows them to build products at a cost which consumers can afford. Otherwise, if you are dependent upon the government subsidies, then there is no way out in terms of the cost that you will be able to offer to the consumers. And uh, whoever is able to do that will obviously survive. Uh, we had this focus and we started this journey one and a half, two years back, even before you know uh, anyone of us were thinking about uh, fame subsidies. We were prepared for it and we are going to be prepared for it in the future also. Um, uh, yeah, in fact, um, uh, just this month when we launch uh, S1 Air, which is our most anticipated product, which we believe is going to truly change the nature of the industry and increase the penetration of EVs multifold, I think is going to be a game-changing and disruptive moment at the price that we are, going, we are launching it and the kind of product that we are launching uh, is all been possible because of our continuous engineering efforts through the last one and a half, two years. So I think whoever continues to do so, uh, consumers are out there to buy EVs and uh, uh, in fact, after this month, you will see in July, August and the quarter next, uh, the curve of EV adoption is going to be exponential and, and primarily led by us uh, because of the products that we are going to launch this month and, uh, of course, on our um, annual launch day on August 15.
Welcome back. India's consumer price index CPI inflation rises for the first time in five months uh, to 4.81% in June on the back of a jump in vegetable prices. Also, the rise in inflation is higher than the street's expectations. India's industrial production, however, picked up 5.2% in May against 19.7% a year ago. Markets remain volatile for yet another session and ended lower. The Sensex was down 223 points at 65,393 and the Nifty was down 0.3% uh, to close just below 19,400. Broader markets continue to outperform. The Nifty Bank fell sharply from the day's highs to end 100 points lower and Delta Corp crashed 23% post-GST hike announcement on casinos, eroding over 1,500 crore in market cap. Top Nifty gainers today, ONGC, Aisha Motors, Nestle, Kota Mahindra Bank, SPI Life, Laggards in the session, Adani Enterprise, Tata Motors, Ultratech Cement, Infosys and Adani Ports. Kickstarting earnings season for the April to June quarter, TCS, the largest IT firm in terms of sales, reported a 16.8% year-on-year rise in net profit at 11,074 crore rupees for Q1, largely in line with analyst estimates. Revenue for the quarter came in at 59,381 crore rupees, up 12.5%. Revenue growth is constant currency terms, grew 7% year-on-year. The IT giant has also declared an interim dividend of 9 rupees per share and gone ahead with a salary hike to take 200 pips hit on its operating margin. Listen in to what the management had to say going forward. Moving on to segmental commentary. UK bugged the trend of global demand softness and grew by 16.1%. North America and Europe grew by 4.6% and 3.4%. Uh, our growth markets like India, Latam, and Middle East and Africa all had a strong double-digit growth. Among the verticals, life sciences and healthcare, manufacturing and regional markets and platforms had a strong growth. Life sciences and healthcare grew by 10.1% and manufacturing by 9.4%. Regional markets and platform grew by 16.9%. Among other verticals, BFSI grew by 3%, retail and CPG grew by 5.3%, technology and services grew by 4.4%, and communications and media by 0.5%. Our deal wins continue to be very strong, supporting our belief that investments in technology will remain strong over a long period of time. Our order book closed at uh, 10.2 billion this quarter, marginally higher than last quarter, and almost 24% uh, higher than same period last year. We had deal closures worth uh, 5.2 billion in North America, 3 billion in BFSI, both uh, North America and BFSI being 15% higher than Q1 of last year, and uh, 1.2 billion in retail and CPG. Our attrition continues to improve. On a LTM basis, our IT attrition has reduced to 17.8% from 20.1 in Q4. We are going to basically pay, you know, 100% 100 of we will pay for 70% of the people, our people, and the rest 30% will get paid based on the business unit performance. Uh, regarding your question on onboarding delay, you know, uh, you all, you know, you know, for many years we always honor all the offers, and that would continue. Uh, there are certain delays based because of the environment we are in, because of the project delays. He talk, uh, Kriti just talked about release one, release two, and how, how things are not getting progressed. As a result of that, uh, the onboarding of those associates also gets delayed. So in certain cases, that, that is getting delayed, yes. But you know that is purely based on the project, project situation. But I commit to today that we are going to honor all the offers. HCL Tech also reported Q1 earnings, where it recorded a net profit of 3,534 crore rupees, Repeat revenue at 26,296 crore. Earnings before interest and tax margin came in below expectations at 16.9%. However, the company declared a dividend of 10 rupees a share. In terms of an operating parameters, our EBIT came in at 17%. Uh, this is at the same level as our Q1 last year, which was also at 17%. On a sequential basis, it has declined from 18.1% to 17% this quarter. Uh, in terms of bookings, as you are all aware, our bookings for the previous seven quarters have been in the range of $2 billion and above. Uh, this quarter, our booking uh, was at $1.6 billion. It's been a little softer. Uh, uh, however, I'm very happy to report that our pipeline continues to grow. Last quarter, we did report that our pipeline has grown significantly. Uh, it has further grown uh, in a strong way, even in this quarter. 
And we are very optimistic about the pipeline conversion and its revenue translation. Uh, that will help us meet the full year guidance which we have given. Uh, our headcount also declined last quarter by about 2,500 people, primarily due to the fact that we have consciously not uh, backfilled some of our attrition. Uh, double clicking on our quarterly performance by service line, our IT and business services had a good momentum on the new deals signed. A lot of new deals signed ramped up quite smartly, but most of the gains were offset with the reduction in discretionary spend in a couple of uh, verticals. Uh, this has resulted in our ITBS segment uh, being flat in constant currency terms. That's where we leave it on the show tonight. Thanks so much for watching. forecast now. Delhi, maximum 37 and minimum 27 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 30 and minimum 26 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 34 and minimum 27 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 27 and minimum 21 degrees. Chennai, maximum 33 and minimum 26 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 32 and minimum 23 degrees. Why does this happen? Let me tell you the science behind it. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo. You are watching India Today. Hello, you're watching India Today and I'm Ishwarya Paliwal. Let's start the show with the headlines. Paris gears up for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's big visit. Mega defence deals on the cards. Indian tri-service contingent readies, readies to march during the Ballistic Day Parade. The Bharati Janta Party deploys a fact-finding team in the state of West Bengal amid the panchayat poll violence. The team now targets Bengal Chief Minister over the deaths. Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee claims this is a conspiracy and blames the BJP for engineering the violence. Former Karnataka Chief Minister Bomai leads the protest over the JNC's murder. He claims there is a flailing law and order situation under Siddharamaya government in the state of Karnataka. The BJP is now demanding a CBI probe in the monk's death. CEO and MD of a Bengaluru startup firm hacked to death 
double murder accused also known as Joko Felix has been arrested employees killed over professional rivalry Now Paris is lit up with the ballistic day preparations Indian tri service contingent has been practicing across the Champs Elysees Indian and French rafales have been flying over the Arc de Triomphe Prime Minister will land in Paris at about 4 p.m. India time tomorrow. Gaurav Savant is on the ground capturing all the action. Watch this exclusive ground report. The streets of Paris are abuzz with excitement in anticipation for Prime Minister Modi's visit to France. Preparations are underway for the upcoming Bastille Day parade in Paris. And India today has been given exclusive access to these historic preparations. This is where Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the French President Emmanuel Macron will be watching the parade. Let me show you those images of the Indian contingent. That is the Indian Navy contingent. Up ahead is the Indian Army Rajputana Rifles marching band, and right in the beginning of the parade, that is. the punjab regiment on the upcoming landmark day for india france relations the french military will be joined by the indian military as they march together more than 6000 Six thousand. Yeah, six thousand French personnel in total, including the, your contingent with us. A very good uh, experience. I did not know know much about the Indian contingent before they came to France a week ago, and since that, I can tell we have very good uh, relationships. We have a tri services contingent uh, from the Army, Navy, and the Air Force, and the band from the Indian Army, which are currently here to participate in the Bastille Day Parade. Now, alongside this, we also have uh, two more representations, and that is one is INS Chennai, which is coming to Brest tomorrow, and uh, shall also be participating in the Bastille Day Parade at Brest. So th we also have the representation there. France and India have expressed both pride and excitement for the upcoming events and ongoing cooperation efforts. It's a very, it's very honor for us because we were operating uh, six months ago off the coast of Goa with Indian Navy and Indian Air Force, and today being together for the 25th anniversary of our strategic part partnership is very um, an honor for us. It's very powerful. It's a lot of meaning for for the future. This is an international friendship that has stood the test of time. The importance of this 25 year plus military history is not lost on Indian officers especially to the Punjab regiment that has been sent with the army who wear french honors from world war 1 to this day More than 900 soldiers from the Punjab regiment shed their blood Uh, on the soil of this very own territory that we are standing right now and so it is a great it is a, a matter of huge pride for me for my regiment and for the indian army to be able to have this amazing opportunity to march on champs elyse on bastille day military parade the relationship spanning decades has translated to seamless defense ties today as well between india and france We have the old uh, helicopters from the French, and uh, we've taken the like so for suppose Alouette helicopter. We've taken the helico Alouette helicopter, and uh, we've changed the engine to our own powerful engine, and then we've uh, converted into something called Cheetal. And Cheetal is something that flies at the highest battlefield, and that is what is sustaining all the troops at the Siachen Glacier. With Prime Minister Modi as the chief guest in the upcoming parade, India and France will honor their golden past and are looking at an even more prosperous future. With Gaurav Savant in Paris, Bureau Report, India Today. Continuous rains, flash floods, and landslides have ravaged the state of Himachal Pradesh. Several tourists and locals are stranded in the hill amid massive damage to roads and also massive damage to infrastructure. India Today brings you the plight of all the citizens who are caught up in the flood-like situation. Watch this report. After the 
deluge comes the challenge of providing relief. Hundreds stranded and suffering are now gearing up for an arduous journey to a safe space. With more than 1,200 roads out of service, the magnitude of the task ahead is evident. So that's part of the hotel that has been completely swept away uh, en route uh, from Kullu to Manali. If you see right there, that is where the road had caved in, right there at the end. And from there on, if you can see everybody, a steady stream of those wanting to go back home or reach medical emergency situations as well. Uh, we did see one girl, uh, a terrible stomachache, and there's no way because Manali, the whole infrastructure has apparently collapsed. They have to bring anyone who's sick to Kulu, and there's just no way of getting there because at this side is where the road is caved in. Uh, the administration says that side is, uh, you know, they've been able to open out a, a road, but that's witnessing traffic jams of over 11 hours straight up. Wading through flooded waters, stung by a snake and with a drip attached, a woman was spotted trying to make her way to a nearby hospital. I mean, it's the same thing that you can come to the pool. After the bridge is closed, you can go to the bridge. Or you can go to the bridge, or you can go to the bridge. Yes, yes. Yes. There's a road block, and then you can come to the bridge. A pregnant woman, displaced by her unprecedented floods, was forced to walk till the nearest hospital in order to receive medical care. Desperate father carries a sick daughter on his shoulder, waiting for hours through the flood waters to reach the nearest hospital. Many villages washed away, many others cut off totally. People in need of medical care are struggling to get relief. A return to normal life is a long road ahead. With Preeti Chaudhary in Manali, Bureau Report, India Today. Now after two days of continuous rains, this has led to a lot of casualties and devastation. The northern state of Himachal Pradesh now faces the daunting task of restoring the roads, national highways and multiple infrastructure. All that has been washed away over the past many days because of the flash floods. Here is a detailed report on the trail of destruction that these flash floods have left behind. The rain gods have relented. Himachal Pradesh gets a breather. After three days of heavy rains, the picture that emerges is of death, destruction and misery. All I see the footprint of devastation here just along the Bias River, there you see the main road which connects Manali from the rest part of Himachal Pradesh is totally washed, washed away. In fact, this is not one stretch. There are multiple such stretches, but this is being more than two to three hundred and very critical important stretch, uh, strategically as well, is now washed away, has been disconnecting people from one end to another. Thousands of tourists are stranded in tourist hotspots in the hill state. India Today spoke to travellers from Telangana who are awaiting help. The worst affected in Manali are the tourists from all over the country. Now there you see the, uh, this is the group of uh, tourists who have come from Telangana. Now all their efforts just somehow spending three days. Now they are en route back to home. But the only issue is that uh, lack of transportation since heavy vehicles like bus or any cannot even pass through these areas. All they are somehow struggling to arrange smaller vehicles, cab, they could probably drop them to Chandigarh airport, nearest airport probably, and from where they can have a flight. Transport and movement of goods is badly affected, with many roads still out of service. Today, 
तरह की व्यवस्था मिली आप लोग को यहाँ पे अभी नहीं नहीं व्यवस्था तो कोई नहीं मिली अभी हम तो प्रशासन से चाहते हैं हमारे पास राशन पानी था वही बाकी किसी चीज कितने दिन का स्टॉक बचा अभी दो तीन दिन का है बस तीन दिन का और बचा हाँ बस अथॉरिटीज है Rescue operations and road restoration work have also gained pace. Many affected people have taken shelter in tempos. कुछ लोग जो हैं जो दूर दराज के रहने वाले हैं जो स्थानीय हिमाचल के ही नागरिक हैं अब उनकी जिंदगी कैसे कट रही है उनकी जिंदगी इस तरह के टेम्पो में कट रही है जो कुछ बचा हुआ सामान था ये उन्होंने उठा लिया है हटा लिया है ये देखिए प्रेशर कुकर में यहाँ खाना बन रहा है और जो भी है यही जीविका है खुद भी यही खाना है और इसी जीविका के साथ उनको जीना है पावर एंड वाटर सप्लाईज आर येट टू बी रिस्टोर्ड इन समर्स्ट हिट एरिया Himachal Pradesh is picking up the pieces after suffering flash floods and landslides triggered by the worst rainfall in many years. The road to recovery will be long. With Preeti Chaudhary in Kullu and Ashutosh Mishra in Manali, Bureau Report, India Today. Now a month after the Delhi police filed its charge sheet against Wrestling Federation chief Bijbhushan Sharan Singh the BJP MP still continues as the WFI chief while the opposition is questioning why he is roaming free Bijbhushan has it back saying he has not been convicted yet take a look at this story Bhushan Singh Jindabad Nearly a month after the Delhi police filed the charge sheet against Bridgebushan Singh listing serious allegations and claiming corroborative proof the BJP MP from Kasarganj remains the president of the Wrestling Federation of India The charge sheet accessed by India Today makes grave accusations The police say Bridge Bhushan is liable to be prosecuted for the offences of sexual harassment molestation and stalking 15 witnesses have corroborated the charges the witnesses include two coaches the charge sheet lists 15 separate incidents of harassment the charge sheet includes photographs submitted by the athletes delhi commission for women chief is questioning why bridge bhushan is roaming free sabse pehle to delhi police ye bataye ki jab unhe pata tha ki bridge bhushan ne ladkiyon ke sath yon shoshan kara hai तो उसको अरेस्ट क्यों नहीं करा गया और दूसरी बात मैं केंद्र सरकार से सवाल पूछना चाहती हूं क्योंकि ब्रिज भूषण उनका ही एमपी है उनका ही सांसद है मैं ये जानना चाहती हूं कि कब तक ब्रिज भूषण जैसे गुंडे को केंद्र सरकार संरक्षण देगी और बचाएगी क्यों उसके खिलाफ अभी तक कोई भी कार्यवाही नहीं करी गई है यह बहुत ज्यादा गलत है क्योंकि जिस आदमी की जगह जेल है अब वो संसद में बैठकर देश के कानून बनाएगा हिटिंग बैक एट द ऑपोजिशन ब्रिज भूषण इज अक्यूज द कांग्रेस ऑफ कंस्पायरिंग अगेंस्ट हिम एंड हिज फैमिली असर्टिंग दैट फाइलिंग ऑफ अ चार्ज शीट डज नॉट मेक हिम अ क्रिमिनल द डब्ल्यू एफ आई चीफ अलेज दैट कांग्रेस डजन हैव फेथ ऑन कोर्ट्स The BJP, which Bridge Bhushan represents in Parliament, claims the courts will decide his fate. Bridge Bhushan ji ke maalum hai court ne sangyan liya hai aur police ne bhi apni chart sheet file ki hai. Us chart sheet ke andar ke jo court ka faisla ga, wo manne ko. While the law will take its own course, the moral question remains unanswered. Why is Bridge Bhushan still in office? Bureau report, India Today. Now the Bharatiya Janata Party has launched an all out attack against the Siddaramaiah government over the brutal murder of a Jain seer. Now staging a mega dharna at the Vidhan Sauda, the BJP now is demanding a CBI probe into this case. The BJP is alleging that the Congress government in the state has failed to carry out an impartial and fair probe in this matter. Watch the story. Showdown erupts over the brutal murder of Jain seer Kama Kumara Nandi Maharaj in Karnataka. The BJP, which has been demanding a CBI probe in the case, staged a dharna outside the Vidhan Sabha on Wednesday. The jungle raj started in Karnataka within two months of Congress rule. The fear of law is not there. The fear of police is not there, and all the anti-social elements. Uh, have come out openly and now they are reing the entire society here and there is a fear among the common man 
BJP MLAs marched to the Raj Bhavan and submitted a memorandum to the governor. The party claimed that Hindus were being targeted ever since the Congress government came to power in May. The Siddharamaya government has defended the police and assured a fair and impartial probe. BJP can claim anything that they want. The Jain community, the seers of the community have come out and said that we are satisfied with the progress of uh, the investigation. The police have arrested two people in connection to the murder. The investigators claim the killing was over a financial dispute. Meanwhile, shocking details have emerged on how the seer was murdered. According to the FIR, on the night of July 5th, main accused Narayan, along with his friend Hassan Sab, allegedly tried to kill the seer by electrocution. When they failed in it, they allegedly strangled the monk to death with a towel. The duo then allegedly cut the seer's body into pieces and dumped the parts into a borewell. The accused also burned a diary belonging to the seer. The Jain community has held protest in various parts of the state condemning the act. With Sagay Raj, Bureau Report, India Today. It is time now for us to slip into a very quick break. More news coming up on the other side. You are watching India Today. How many more houses? How many more vehicles? How many more villages? Annual nightmare drowns the north. India Today reports from every spot. There are small children who are living in these houses and this is the national capital we are talking about. Each and every household, that's what we can see. The holy shrine that saved Mandi from a disaster. We report, we demand, we fix accountability. Maximum reporters, maximum coverage, monsoon mayhem. Where do you think the markets are headed? We've seen a very, very sharp rally on a year-to-date basis on the Nifty. And uh, as also on the Bank Nifty, many other indices are at record highs. How do you see charts? What is your understanding of fundamentals? about this rally? Sure. So, uh, Shelji, uh, you know, what I feel is that, you know, markets after consolidating for almost one and a half year, that is in October 2021, when we peaked around 18,700. And after that, you know, we have been consolidating for, uh, for a while, for almost good one and a half years uh, time frame. Now, you know, technically speaking, this kind of consolidation breakout after a, after a decent one to two years kind of phase, typically leads to a very strong up move at an index level. So a lot of people are worried. They think that obviously markets have moved up uh, very sharp in a very short span of time. So whether it's a good time to enter at these levels, wait for a dip, or it's kind of a sell on rise market. According to me, it's more like a buy on dips market because there are some structural changes which is happening in India. First, you know, RBI, when, when it paused its interest rate, that is how, you know, we created a bottom in our market. Since then, you know, we have been seeing very strong capex commitment by center, almost 10 lakh crore kind of capex. And if I look this number, if you put together addition of almost last 10, 15, 20 years, I think the kind of capex we are witnessing in this particular year has crossed this number all put together, which clearly indicates that we are shifting typically from a consumption-led economy to a capex-led economy. And we firmly believe whenever there is a capex cycle which starts, it, it typically lasts for a longer time. And if you look at the capacity utilization for most of the industries, they have reached 73-74% kind of levels. We have seen private balance sheets are improving. 
and that will eventually lead index to show further up move according to my technical setup till the time we don't see a breach below 18500 on a sustainable basis all kind of dips should be used as an opportunity to buy India today Now the launch rehearsal of Chandrayaan 3 which lasted for almost 24 hours has now concluded Roughly a day and some hours are left till the actual launch takes place While there's a lot of excitement the excitement is actually at its peak ISRO this time is preparing to make sure that they succeed and they overcome the landing disaster that happened with Chandrayaan 2 Watch this story Chandrayaan-3 is all set to be launched from Sri Harikota at 2:35 p.m. on Friday, 14th of July. And with that, India will become the fourth country to join the Ivy League of Moon Explorers. Chandrayaan-3 is largely a replica of its predecessor, Chandrayaan-2. It was launched in July 2019 in the form of an orbiter and a lander Vikram. bearing a rover pragyan vikram entered into orbit around the moon but the surface mission failed in september 2019 the lander pragyan crashed instead of executing a slow descent isro later identified a problem in the guidance software and an unexpected dispersion in the propulsion system during certain phases of the descent this time chandrayaan 3 rocket will place the payload in an elliptical orbit around the earth where a propulsion module will take over and pilot the lander to a circular orbit around the moon finally around 23rd and 24th august the lander will detach and begin a series of maneuvers culminating in a gradual landing over the surface of the moon instead of success based design in chandrayaan 2 we are doing a failure based design in chandrayaan 3 what all can fail and how to protect it to ensure success chances at this stage Isro has strengthened the lander's legs, lowered its minimum thrust, enhanced the availability of power and upgraded the landing sequence. This will be India's second attempt to soft land a lander and rover on the lunar surface and demonstrate end-to-end -end capacity in the relevant technologies. Soft landing on the moon is a complicated exercise. and possibility of failure exists but for the time being isro is hopeful for a success like its first moon mission bureau report india today that's all the time we have on this bulletin thank you for watching india today this is meeshwara paliwal signing off watching India today Remember the last diet cola you had or that nutrition bar you consumed both of them have something in common It's an ingredient that poses a serious threat to your health. 
aspartame. Aspartame is now seen as the worst artificial sweetener. But where do you escape it? It is most common non-sugar sweetener used in at least 5,000 products. Aspartame is also marketed as NutraSweet, Equal, Sugar Twin and Amino Sweet. The use of non-nutritive sweeteners such as aspartame as food additives has increased over the past three decades as a result of dietary recommendations with the blessings of the FDA.